Also, your stream's not up now. <laughs> well, apparently he was streaming some goofball one that I didn't ask for. Some uh, goofball one? <laughs> well, I, I ain't gonna be on no goofball. <laughs> this is a serious, this is some serious business we're doing. Wait, this is an official of uh, uh, production. Serious this business. Is professional. All right, whoops. None but, of us are yeah. hopped up on goofballs. Uh, Speak for yourself. I love okay. me some goofballs. So that's right. There you go. And oh, I can... oh, the, oh, things are happening, man. This is uh... new stream, oh, everybody. Gosh, no. New cool place to hang out now. Yeah, go away from the old place. Oh, all of your friends. It's an open secret. Uh, done, 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 done. And it says two sixteen, I believe. Oh, there we go. We should begin. And the chat's coming in on the actual screen now. Hallelujah! Whoa. It's a Christmas miracle, everyone. Oh, Crumbus. Yeah. Because whenever a good thing happens during December, it's a Christmas miracle. You know what I'm doing for for Krimbus Day? I don't know. Go do you have to, to a say? bar and get drunk. It's going to be great. Yeah. What are you going to do two days after that? Oh, I don't know. Visit some weird person. Yeah. Poop in their house. Doesn't that require going outside? Yeah, for a long time, actually. I have to go above the ground for a couple of hours. Even. Whoa. Shit's, shit's crazy. Like, I go spend up, most down. of my time above the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy you're missing Subterranean out. Christmas. <laughs> you're missing out. I just picture of I celebrate the ground basement. Some old people. I'm like Thumbelina. Yeah. There probably is some really nice, hyper expensive designer, like under the ground places to buy in the world, right? As not like secret bases or anything, but like actual houses. <laughs> like a real estate. Yeah. Uh, agent some. who's sold I mean, exclusively you can... like caves and hobbit holes. Well, I guess we can Maybe? buy basement flats, right? So. Yeah, but That's I meant a place that maybe isn't as... Because uh, those places always come across as like, listen, okay, times are hard. You haven't got a huge <laughs> amount of money. We have some under-the-ground stuff. <laughs> we got a hole over here if you want to rent her out. We got a... Um, well, here in, uh, here in Arkansas, because we're in, we're in Tornado Alley, ah. we, have, uh, we have plenty of houses, especially out in the country, who have little rooms underground that they can go to well, the classic the thing is to have like a little here. uh doorway at the back right of your house that yeah leads it's into like your cellar the, or yeah something. yeah it leads into some kind of storm cellar Ooh. but yeah i'm sure there's some met plenty of americans actually that were like fuck this let's just build the whole thing underground i, I don't want to put keep... it around and you're it's immune to tornadoes to, yeah that's right if everything's underground you get a bigger yard and then project with hologram technology what the house would have looked like had it been above ground to let people know it's a pretty cool house that's the whole reason you get the hologram sure. technology and pay for it. There's nothing but a a mailbox, a doormat, and just a ladder that leads down, and that's it. Well, um, I think that pretty well good sort of leads into talking about God of War Ragnarok, right? Yeah, because oh, it's Fimble Winter. Ah, I save. Storm you can shelter. use your storm cellar to yeah escape Fimble Winter. Yeah. They uh that Fimble Winter that was super useful for them to justify lots of things throughout the whole game in terms of things that changed for obvious gaming reasons, but yeah, they could use then to be like they even make I guess self aware joke about it, right? Because Brock and Mimir keep explaining things with Fimble Winter, and then people get angry at them for saying it at all. Like yeah, I know, <laughs> and they're just like, all right, fine, jeez. The, uh, isn't it? <clears throat> there's this one thing when you're uh I don't know upgrading your stuff. And then Sinri asks, hey, what happened to all the other armor we made for you? And then Kratos just goes like, I used it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this, you get the magic doesn't transfer from, from mythology to mythology. That's something they say in mm -hmm. the game. Um, relics get worn down through Fimble Winter and your armor was used. The best they could do, okay? Because sometimes... Yeah. <laughs> well, as a salesman, he should probably say pre-owned, but... <laughs> I'm not I, a I, always, I always appreciate some narrative justification to none at all. Like, yeah, no, I, I appreciate fun. it. Like, I thought, oh, it was, I thought it was kind of cute that they threw that in there. I was like, oh, good for you. You didn't have to. A lot of games sort of just trying to be like, look, guys, you know why you're here. We know why you're here. Yeah. Let's do the we thing. Can't we can't just let you start on level 30, okay? You know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. New game plus, please. <laughs> Which is it still not in the game, correct? That's going to be on its way. Uh, I, I heard yes. February is, they, is when... I have no idea. They just put out a big old patch of Rooney with stuff. I saw some people getting mad mode. at that, by the way. Like, wow, releasing the game incomplete. It's like, new game plus? Like, 
after like two months, I think that's okay. All right, the game yeah. is enormous. It's probably gonna have more armor again, like the like twenty eighteen, I imagine. So there's even some new content in there. I I I, I think. Yeah. And they now just they put out f photo mode now, which I would have gladly had from the get go to make thumbnails, but that wasn't allowed. Oh yeah, so the photo sad. mode. Yeah, I saw some remember. cool photos already with that. Could yeah, you because take, uh, could you take photos in 2018? Yeah, they're photo mode in there. Oh, it must have been Fimble Winter then. Yes. How <laughs> <laughs> does it make sense? They have it now. What do you I mean? remember when you could take selfies whenever you wanted, brother. Look Fimble at Winter's photos. Fimble Winter's <laughs> drained the phone's oh, yeah, cool. face. When you make things <laughs> blurry in really the background, cool. the photos look real good. Yeah. Photo mode is just a cool feature. There's always cool yeah. stuff that comes from that. Because it's like, oh. hey, finally I have a use for this photo mode. I can use it for thumbnails because I it's YouTube, yay! And it's like, no, it's not in. It's like, oh, oh man. <laughs> them focus changes makes them look real cool. Mm -hmm. Dude, the the first one kind of looks like a figurine. Really high detail one. Let me see the first one. Um. The winter ruined everyone's credit hmm. score. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I can't get a loan? <laughs> the thimble winner. Thimble ruined winner. everyone's credit scores. <laughs> so anyway, you guys want to talk about a little bit about uh, this game. We talked about it for about a five minutes or so. I figured... Yeah, this game just won't leave us alone. <laughs> I've managed to <laughs> edit it. it got it everything finished. Obama. So we, uh, <laughs> we'll be fine. We can use the thing as intended now. The... This will take us right through to the end. And, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, it's gonna, how long is this going to take? It's like, well, we got through, like, more than half. So, we'll be fine. That's impressive for us. Yes. Be proud. Yeah. yeah. And I saw, it, I saw plenty of people say they, they liked... Almost half the story of the game. I saw plenty of people say they liked the format, uh, despite being incredibly long form. This is possibly one of the longest form, especially considering, like... The equivalent. I saw some people fight over like they've done this before with movies, and I, I see. I tend to agree with the people refusing that. It's like no, we we don't do this. This is we don't like play chunks of the movie. We can't. <laughs> it doesn't let yeah. us. And I saw some people saying like, well, this is EFAP unleashed in an ideal world. <laughs> this might be what you would just get. I saw people saying like how much they they realize that we're missing by not being able to play full scenes sometimes like true uh, the the tone the delivery of a scene is often damaged when you can only play it in like five second clips at most um but hey we do what we can and uh i i i'm i'm plenty excited to talk a bit more about this boy so um without further ado we will catch up to where we were though i rolled it back a little bit What did that wall ever do to you? I'm building focus. Something my father taught me. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> what a feel like, no, seriously, what, what did it do to you? <laughs> so, Tell me. what you focusing on anyway? Controlling my emotions. Heimdall keeps trying to make me lose my cool. The interesting thing about that line is that that implies to me, at least, that Atreus has been getting up to all kinds of things while we've been away from him. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. We only met Heimdall the one time, but apparently he keeps trying to make him lose his cool, so he's uh I think the the what's happening here is just letting us know he's gotten to some level of familiarity now with a couple of the people. Yeah, here, yeah. Including <clears throat> what's his name? Skildir? Skildir? Skildir. He's, uh, who's who's the local fun Midgardian. Yeah. I can't give in to it. Three. Cool. Training without me? It's um Hugen and Mugen, right? Are the two yeah. boobs and they've got red and blue, I think, are the eyes to sort of make them different from crows. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, just just check in. <laughs> that a that a good idea? Training? I mean, I, I think it's a great idea, but uh won't your mom be mad if she finds out? Good point. But did you consider <laughs> No. 
I didn't. I didn't. Hurt you, that, you could punch him. I almost want to reassure people. It's like she's a god. Okay. You're allowed <laughs> to see women punch men. God ass. <laughs> They're all gods, all right. We don't need a god ass. Psh, what is that? Do, we, do we, how many how many words are we gonna make to make it all complicated? Gosh, Godge. Godge. Anyway, to see you. Oh. Oh, sorry. I should have mentioned. Yeah, Theo could not make it. Was uh, unavailable after all. I'm afraid. Or uh, well, it's because I mean this this format isn't exactly the uh, easiest to run into. So. It could be. I I don't think there was a specificity on tiredness or scheduling, but um, this did get moved around as well, unfortunately. But I will say, it might be better to have one less person because then we can maybe finish this before Fringy has to leave, which would be yeah. Kind of the we're idea. glad <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> oh no! And if anyone else wishes to leave Metal, then that would be fine. Oh, thank fuck! <laughs> Grandfather, right? Okay. Uh, here, then take this, and uh. Send my regards to Sif, Lady Sif, and Atreus. See you later, Thrude. Bye, Thrude. <laughs> the Midgardian boys are so weird. You Very look weird. Weirder than I imagined. This is for a reason. And weird can be good. Weird can be good. <laughs> look at that! They called back, and they didn't yeah. have to. And it's mostly something that yeah, you wouldn't even notice. Just, I noticed that. I'm very smart. Just yeah, another example of the, the little <laughs> things they do, which is kind of neat. And I don't think they give a shit if you remember yeah. it or not, and they don't really need to, right? It doesn't change much. He's picking up game from one. <laughs> exactly. I swear. I understand. It's a lot more complicated than you think. You don't need to know why things are... But I'm old enough. This isn't about your age. Then what is it about? Because by this point, Magni and Modi were set on the path that led to their death. I don't understand. You never try to. Then help me. Why are you so intent to walk the same path? And with that boy, no less. What are you going on about? I just don't get it. It's kind of interesting you'd lock something like that behind... Uh... Yeah, L literally a door that you have to eavesdrop on, and most people, I imagine, will probably walk past it. But uh, that's one of, I think, like three times you eavesdrop with like incredibly important um, details about family dynamics happening. But yeah, uh, Magni and Modi's deaths and lives are quite important to this game for people's visions. The mask bringing the giant that killed my sons here. Why? <laughs> I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it. Oh, you. Odin, you're such a prick. Stop letting your wife think for you. She's clouding whatever's left of your brain. This isn't about her. No, it's about your limitations. Accept them and move on. Now go smash something, will you? Honestly, I liked you better as a drunk. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. Yeah, just more of Odin thrashing on Thor, as we've already seen before. But Even this time, a bit more, a bit more direct, not just like uh, hush, hush, or just little gestures. Like he straight up says, "Like man, I like you better as a drunk." You might remember in the beginning, he just tries to puts the cups of meat when we first meet uh, meet him, like in front of uh, Thor. It's like, oh, come on, don't you want to have a little sip, a little sipperuni? Yeah. yeah, which is incredibly fucked up. up. Your and son is trying to quit his alcoholism, and you're like, drink Odin, more. Like, Oh, Odin kind of gets up in the middle of that. He's like, and you're no fun anymore. And you kind of don't know exactly what he's talking about, but it's what about uh, the drinking. You're going to imply that's like, yeah. And he wants his wants his son dependent and an addict. <laughs> and remember, this came after the um that that quote, well, that that uh, comment Thord made saying that just like you and Balder, which is the when they yeah you know, made it. I imagine Odin's probably even especially pissed at him, which just uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty horrible relationship. Finally figured it out. This is where you killed Amir, isn't it? First giant. Tell me, can you murder a landslide, smother a storm? He was more a force of nature, a vessel of power. I was young, foolish, 
So an opportunity to create something more. I know you think it's cruel, but I did what I had to, to protect my own. Never ever heard that about um, Emir's death before. They, yeah. Uh, he's like the dad of everything, right? Um, Frost Giant and Emir. I keep tempt uh... I keep wanting to say Mimir, but Emir with a Y. <laughs> The only what I know him as is the guy in Smite. If anyone's played that in chat, yes, here. that's every time I heard that name. Big old ice go, boy. Smite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it's, it's also the name of the first Titan in the Attack on Titan, a popular anime. Oh, okay. I didn't cartoon. even know that, and I watched it. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we were told. I think in 2018, Mamiya's story about it is really harsh. That like Odin backstabbed his own father because he wanted the power of whatever blah, blah blah what odin just said i really liked that he asked like can you smother a storm obviously referring to emir being not quite a being that is just a guy who's having fun walking around more so as he said a vessel of power and that it could be used for greater purposes and he said he was only trying to protect his own which to be honest with you at this point the story is kind of hard to interpret any other way than probably true it's um Odin's been pretty uh, overtly tr tr honest from what we can tell, and the problem is like, hey man, maybe we don't have the full story on some of these things. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Odin's interpretation versus others are going to be obviously far more favorable to him, but possibly understandable from our perspective. So, I don't know, just another one on top of some others where it's just like, huh. Why build your house here? What's in there? Realist. I'm going to trust you. I'm trying to tell you. In the wake of Amir's death, I saw something, the rift, possibly the birthplace of reality. I looked inside and something was there looking back at me. It whispered to me things I couldn't possibly comprehend, but I knew they were true. When it blinded me, I thought it was over that I'd never see inside again. And then I found this and I knew that it would finally let me see the answers. You see, son, I don't know where I go when I go. There's no Valhalla for me. Ragnarok cannot be the end. I need to know there's something more than this. I need to know what happens to me. That what an interesting... <laughs> Yep, that is what an interesting yeah. motivation to provide. To you need to know what happens father. next. Yep, yeah. and really uh, cool. Old father in charge of everything, but like he just he needs to know things. He needs to be certain about the future. He does not like the uncertainty of his life. And what was the thrust of Atreus's journey in this game? I need to know where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, who Loki yeah. is. Yes. Remember, remember the line. I don't want to hurt anybody. I just want answers. Yeah. Isn't that interesting. I think this not uh, like a, an accident that so much of this game is about <clears throat> people wanting to understand and then subvert destiny mm. or fate. But uh, yeah, this is this is what makes Odin such a strong character. This is all the foundations have been built now already, but we got more. I mean, uh, yes, excellent work. And that's the truth, I swear, on my last good eye. And that's the thing about Odin with the truth. Uh, you just gotta be careful. Take it with a great assault is understated. Like, it's like, yeah. Uh, how much of this is what you're saying is actually true, and what are you trying to gain from having said it? That's the truth. The writing on here it talks about a cold breath. Breath. Wind. It's gotta be Helheim. Helheim, you say? I'll take it. And I know just the person to accompany you. I'm trusting. You two can handle this responsibility. How'd she get there? You can count I on mean, us. I mean, like, how'd they arrange they, that? It seems to me that every time, like, it was it was the bird, right? But there was no sound. 
It should yeah. have been a flap, 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 and then we turn to see it. I wonder if they just didn't put the sound in, because if they did, that would have made a lot more sense. Unless she was walking the whole time toward this area really quietly. So I guess yeah. she either coincidentally was just on her way down here, or he knew that she would be... I guess... He could have called no for No matter him. where... Does in like come in was he, soon? She I guess it wasn't him. dependent on going to Helheim specifically. That oh, she I think that's why he, he whispered to the crow, right? Was to grab her. Oh, but then again, someone else is about to arrive. Uh, so I assume the crow's going for yeah. them. Actually, oh, maybe he's that going happens, for both. Go for that was both. a bunch of times in this game. To be silent honest. crows. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> silent crows. Oh, oh silent. I forgot to mention, Heimdall will be joining you. What a privilege. For all of us. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. You don't want to walk into the blistering cold of Helheim without this. He gives Every him, like, some love. Should keep you nice and toasty. You're welcome. I genuinely think that's because in 2018, I'm pretty sure it was said, like, no one can survive Helheim's cold. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> We're sending Let's everyone there. something. But then yeah. again, we go... There's other Helheim sections where we don't have something like this, so they kind of acknowledged it. Well, I guess this part, is permanent but... for Atreus now, right? Uh, maybe? And then I Kratos so. is just a god. I don't exactly know Kratos. how it works. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say they could probably ah, just explain it with the gods. Even Odin can survive the cold in Helheim. You believe everything that old goat says? And that's another way they're trying to <laughs> seal this. Like, hey man, maybe Mamiya wasn't to be relied upon entirely. Yeah. Rude. Too bad your first time outside Asgard has to be to hell hunt. Nah, we're gonna make the most of this. <sighs> now, as much as I would love to babysit, I have something else to do for the Allfather. I believe you fought the Valkyries. I just don't believe it was Grandfather who corrupted them, or that he caused the desolation in Midgard, or that he had all the giants killed. Am I missing anything? Uh, lots, actually. What other heinous crimes has my grandfather committed? Let's see. He decimated Vanaheim, tortured Tyr, murdered Groa, murdered Amir. It goes on and on. Interesting. And where'd you hear all this? Freya and Amir told me. Oh, so his traitorous ex-wife and a bitter former advisor. Got it. Look, you don't believe me, but... No, I don't. Either you're full of crap or you're a hypocrite for helping him. Can we just focus on the mission? That's actually something it I appreciated, just... the second half of that. Yeah. Like... Even if you're telling the truth, what the fuck are you doing then? Yeah, it's uh, some good points from her perspective. It's like, why, 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 why should I believe you? Oh, well, like I, you had that I, one perspective, and I had this one my whole life. So I don't know, just kind of. I'm sure Odin is the kindly grandpa to her, uh, so probably yeah. she wouldn't have much. Re and besides, obviously, Atreus is not to be trusted really right now, especially yeah. like. He's not got great stock here. It's like, didn't you and your dad kill my brothers and my uncle? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they were dicks. <laughs> Which you kind of agreed <laughs> with. Wasn't always the person he is now. But he changed. Maybe Odin can too. I know how hard it is to hear this stuff, but you should know the truth. What you choose to do with it, that's up to you. We're okay, right? I guess... <laughs> Maybe our families are just meant to be enemies. Well, not us. I don't believe that. What I do believe is that you'll make a great Valkyrie. I'll tell your mom the same thing. Even if she scares the life out of me. That means a lot. <laughs> so, I talk about my mom a lot. What's your dad like? He's intense. Like he's trying to force me into this mold. But I'm not sure that's true. Oof. Well, I know exactly what that's like. Thing is... I don't know what I want. I love that you do. You'll figure it out. So, how'd you know you wanted to be a Valkyrie? I didn't always. After a bad fight with Mom, I snuck out and found them training. Somehow, every movement they made had such purpose. Like, they knew exactly where they needed to be. And in that moment, so did I. As I was saying, seeing the Valkyries fight, all the strength and style it gave me clarity. For the first time, I saw my path forward, clear as day. Too bad giants have to follow prophecy. Who cares? Make your own path, just like we've been doing here. Oh, and look at that. That's like, just sneaked in Rude's perspective on fate. Talking about that. I've been doing the whole prophecy. game. Like, 
basically every character has been afforded an opportunity to explain what they think about fate prophecy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, of course, feminism. having these two, basically, she, she's like, we've already seen her parents, well, everybody's like, don't be a Valkyrie. And she's like, but I'd really like to be a Valkyrie. And so she's just going to keep, <laughs> and we saw her training and she's got that shit in her room. It's like, basically, she's going for it. And uh, you're going to yeah. have to... Um, I mean, it's kind of referencing Mamiya, right? It's like, walk with her, or you won't be walking with her at all. Um, Not a bad way to plant the seed to steal Angraboda's man, either. Be like, oh yeah, you're destined to be with her? Well, why don't we make our own destiny, Atreus? <laughs> I can fly once I get those wings, buddy. <laughs> don't you want to hang yeah. out at that point? <laughs> uh, but yeah, and him talking about his, you know, the whole... Having a character who really doesn't actually know much of anything about what they want to do. Like Heimdall pointed that out already. Atreus seems to be pretty aware of it himself. Um, it can be difficult to give them um, sort of a narrative through line. But I think what makes Atreus especially interesting with the fact that he's not entirely sure what he's got to do is being surrounded by characters who do know. And so mm -hmm. you've got all these people he can align with. But, uh, you know, he'll align with them for as long as he feels like this is the road he should be traveling. But sometimes you'll be pushed onto a road as a result of one of the others being too aggressive in trying to uh, tell him what he should be doing, what he should want. Jacko boy! <laughs> so we gotta get out of here. The mask. We're so close. Besides, I don't think it's dangerous. Are we looking at the same thing? Maybe. He's locked up for a good reason. I can feel what he's feeling. It's a giant thing. Look, he just wants to be free. Now that, I think, is everything you need to answer a question of why we're here, which you'll find out, well, will be a question you'll ask in a moment, but when you got this mask, and I did check, someone told me this, and I was like, oh, was it? It's it's described as it is attuned to uh, Atreus's goals. So, like, ah. <laughs> the mask glows based on what Atreus wants, and Atreus, as we know from as mm. early as Alfheim, possibly earlier, he can detect from great distance, like, great creatures' pain. Um... So yeah. I think the implication here is that he misread. I mean, I'm kind of the mass piece is not here. Is my point? All right, we're about to find that out, so don't worry. But um, he misread the interpretation to go to Helheim, and while in Helheim, felt this thing's experiences, and so the mask guided it, him to this. That's that's a question people have about the nature of the mask. Um, okay. I don't know if that's my take. I, I haven't got like I don't know if there's an entry that maybe explains it better or not. Piece must like the mask maybe me. isn't specifically uh, linked to him. It's just kind of whoever has it. Or... It seems to me that it doesn't glow when Odin holds it, but it does when Atreus does. And I don't know if it's, it's a giant something thing. to do with giants, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. All right. Let's start with the lock not near its teeth. Look out! You're welcome, Mangy Mutt. Let's look in the chamber he was guarding. A dead end? Please tell me it's down in the water or something. There's... How? It's not responding anymore. This has never happened. But you said trust you. And we let that thing loose. Grandfather's gonna kill me. We gotta get out of here. Come on. You absolute, unqualified moron. You know that thing tears holes between realms, right? Well, that's not good. It's really bad. Well, I suppose I should expect nothing less from half-breeds. Don't call me a half-breed. <laughs> I will call you whatever I like, Junior. Leave him alone. It was a mistake. No! The mistake no. was allowing you yeah. to think that you were ready. <laughs> You helped him, didn't you? What side are you on anyway, Guppy? Try me and find out. You know what's super interesting? Something I've noticed in film, right? And it's hard not to notice it when you notice it sometimes on particular moments. But when two actors are very close together and one of the actors can't focus on one of the eyes, they keep switching back and <laughs> yeah. forth and back and yeah. forth and back and forth. Yeah. So cool. I'm going to roll it back. Through changing which eye she's focusing on. So obviously it's taken oh, directly really? from... I guess the performances and stuff. It's just, it's just neat to be reminded that's how far it goes. You helped him, didn't you? What side are you on anyway, 
Yeah, it's very subtle, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool as fuck. Oh. <laughs> and what are you going to do exactly? <sighs> you see, everyone takes it easy on you because they are afraid of your father. I am not. How much more interesting is this Heimdall than MCU Heimdall? Holy shit. Like, I don't even, re I don't even remember MCU Heimdall. <laughs> I was going to say, I was actually going to ask <laughs> you, like, tell me some characteristics of Heimdall from the MCU. He was in the three Thor films, but it's like, I mean, he was... I he just was... can't remember. He was certainly Idris Elba. Yeah, he was Idris Elba. Yeah. I know that. Um, I'm actually Thor. trying to remember, because there's scenes where uh, he, he talks he to a Thor. Sword. Had a sword. He had, yeah. had a sword. That was, yeah, it was a cool armor. sword. He I died, he he died saving people. the Hulk. He was protective. Uh, he died? Yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he died in Infinity <laughs> War. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, I guess at the He's beginning. One of the few people who died and didn't get brought back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. He's he clearly all starting to purge the MCU. He never got brought back. That's hilarious. We got the good movie. After the whole love and thunder, we just gave him there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the door is kind of open again. Yeah, you died the before the snap, forgot, so... You, then you forgot that he even died. You, I, uh, that's priceless. He died? <laughs> that's cool. That's what the Avengers would say if someone mentioned him. <laughs> well, didn't you bring yeah, Heimdall back? No, They're seriously. like, wait, Heimdall died? <laughs> <laughs> Who? 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 Yeah. Who um, he was he was a guy. He was he was like a bro. I was, that's probably a good way to put it. Yeah, he's a good. He was bro. a real one, yeah. but I can't remember what exactly that means or. Intends. But uh, uh, Heimdall being the sightseer to the point where no one can harm him because he's too fast and too quick-witted and then simultaneously pointing this shit out about people all the time because he can read them. Man, what a choice. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it's, um, he, he isn't, he is a jerk. Um, but it, it's no surprise considering the nature of his abilities. It was after, I think, this scene that I was just like, I'm so ready to kill you. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> gonna be like, it's, you it's little shit. Situation is just like being incredibly blunt about like his perspectives on everybody because nobody else is as, as yeah. far as he's concerned. Right? And he's well, he get, he's exposed to them all the time. Motivations. Exactly. It's almost like he's no different than anyone else, but not to them. As in, like he's he's constantly getting access to what everyone thinks honestly about him. So mm -hmm. fuck it. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting dynamics. That fat. Drunken, utter piece of trash! Hey! Again! Yes, yes, the dumb does not fall far from the tree. Very well, then. That's such a Give la me lazy me. insult. The dumb does not fall far from the tree. He has a couple lazy insults, but they yeah. come across as funny, I guess, because he's a lot so confident. Learn, little girl. Yeah. Starting with who your family is and who it is not just wait until i'm a valkyrie <laughs> oh you really believed the all father would allow that to happen <sighs> please do not let this little weasel feed your delusions any longer Enough! So close. Stop! He just wants to make you mad. Yeah? Well, it worked. <sighs> well, uh, you toddlers are boring. If you are finished throwing your little tantrum, we should go now. Because I cannot wait to watch you explain this mess to the author. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Hoogan! Being able to see through people like windows would probably make you a jerk. It's it's the thing that... I, was it Rags, did you mention this? I know someone did last time, but... Uh, Atreus and Heimdall almost being mirrors to each other when both of them mm -hmm. have so much access to the feelings and motives of a person. Atreus seems to go in the direction of assuming the best about them and trying to bring the best out of them. Heimdall just assumes yep. the worst. He's the yeah. super cynical, yeah, yeah. Really cool. We 
have a lot to discuss. Loki, I'll meet you in your room when I'm finished here. Shouldn't be long. You can't keep undermining me like that. Training her behind my back? She's gonna do what she wants. Wouldn't you rather I at least help? Know where she's going, keep her safe. No, I'd rather us be a team. I'd like you to back me up for once. You're ruining what little relationship I have left with her. I'm doing the best I can to keep this family together. If that were true, you'd stand up to your father for once in your life. You're right. Honey. No. You're right. A lot of people don't see this, uh, hear this one. And this one mm -hmm. in informs a scene to come very, very hard. What kind of example am I setting? Seems the only thing I can do right these days is destroy everything around me. We just... We need you here. I need you. I can't do this by myself. May I come in? I heard what Heimdall had to say. I'd like to hear it from you. What happened? It wasn't there. I was wrong. Well, we all make mistakes, son. But freeing Garm, <laughs> that was a big one. Chaos is already spilling out into the other realms. We're safe here in Asgard, but everywhere else. I think I want to go home now. Okay, if that's what you want. I meant it when I said you're not a prisoner here. It's your choice, go, clear your mind. I know you'll be back. But before you go, I'll need the mask back. It's not that I don't trust you, you understand. It's the company you keep. It's so tempting to talk more about this knowing something else, but I can't. <laughs> it's just, um, <laughs> oh, Odin is special. Oh, and yeah. Ingrid? Please, I need to go. Yeah, the theme in the background is the Asgard one. It's uh, uh, sort of mixed again for Thor's fights Thor, the, 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 and uh, some other bits as well. And Loki, when you do decide you're ready to continue our work here, Hugin will be waiting for you in your old home. You screwed up. Doesn't change the fact that you're welcome here. Oh, and say hi to Mimir for me. No, no, no. It's you. Wait, it's you. Protect. Is that line not great? <laughs> yeah. It's you. Wait, it's you. Because the problem of him arriving like this is just a little bit like, what's, what's, you know, what is going on? I don't even know. What's, are you, are you good? Are you evil? Because the last yeah. thing he did was fucking hit him, right? Yep. No. Father! Off your back! Help Freya. I will draw them to me. Transition again. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. And uh, it's good intro for that third rage mode, which, by the way, I think I ended up committing to for this playthrough because obviously it was in story mode, so everything was pretty easy. I yeah. think I should have ended up trying to use that more in, in hard. I was just so committed with the uh, normal rage that this, but pretty neat yeah. in terms of just adding on to a combo sort of thing. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, sorry. Down to the editing, I could see how you might make that mistake. Where the birds take Atreus is back to the house, and he goes from the house to the teleporty thing, and then to here. Right. He yeah. doesn't go straight from the birds. It's not from the birds. Is it over? No thanks to you. Where is Atreus? Tia coming out with a shield. Mm -hmm. Has the runaway returned and brought all this with him? Has the runaway returned and brought all of this with him? A little bit accusatory when you have no idea what's happening. Hey, fuck you, Tia, okay? Wow. Hold still. I told you I'm fine. Oh, you're bleeding. Quit your blubbering. Once again, though, really yeah, line. it's pretty respectful of mm -hmm. Kratos yeah. to be like, listen, if you really want to go by Loki, I guess, because yeah. he explained that um, that's the name his mum wanted for him, but that Kratos went with Atreus because of how much the name meant to him. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, if, if he wants to go by Loki, you know, it's just that um, after everything that's just happened as well, him asking that. It's oh. just like, are you enemy or, uh, or it, it, friend? That's the like, subtextual part of it. Yeah, like, what are we doing here? What's going on? That sort of thing. There's like zero fat on that sentence. <laughs> it's it's yeah. to the point. I don't know. Kratos' dialogue is always pretty top notch. He doesn't speak a huge amount. You know what happened there? He Kratos finished the hug. Yeah. But Atreus kept mm -hmm. still there, so he's like, oh, this isn't just oh. a you know, hi, I'm back hug. This is a I've fucked up huge hug. Oh yeah. Atreus. What has happened? Fucked up man. It's all my fault. May have done something apocalyptic -y. The Hell yeah. Walkers yeah, released an interdimensional wolf. They're everywhere. The one thing we didn't eat before everywhere. the apocalypse is an apocalypse. It's not your fault. Yes, it is. There was a wolf in hell. It was in chains and... And I set him free. I, I thought that if... Garm! Great bleeding fuck lad, you see Garm! <laughs> <laughs> the fucking expression on him he's like jeez <laughs> like, the Mir will often let them just have their conversation then have his input afterward but this is so shocking to him he's like what yeah. the fuck Dude. It, it immediately underlines the severity of it too yes yeah. that our super yeah. smart character is terrified the stoic guy what? immediately was oh like oh God. this is no That's joke it's madness. Surely not you, young one. If the Hound of Hell it's is sure loose, not you, he'll chew one. through the fabric of the realms. Hellwalkers are just the Dude, beginning. What were you thinking? Aye, this is a fuck-up of not insignificant proportions. What would drive you to such mischief? Is this Loki's doing? Enough. Leave him. Atreus has made a mistake. One that we will fix together. Yay. Grand. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, I'd rather stay here. I've... Is Kratos realizing this, this, this how you're supposed to do it? You're not supposed to just go, what fuck you, you that? suck. What are you doing? He's yeah. like, the step forward is solving it. I had my fill of visits do the to thing. Helheim. And they needed an excuse because we need some father-son stuff. We, we gotta, we're gonna remove Mamiya for now. But I still appreciate the fact that he's like, I fucking hate Helheim. <laughs> Why would I want to go yeah. there? I've had enough Helheim. Freya's expressions as well. He's like, ugh. <laughs> Fine.
What happened to your head? Are you kidding? You did this. I did? Yes, with your uh, bear claws. I, I didn't know. Hey, don't you two start up again. Can't you see my head pounding? Well, I see that whole stop something bad from happening plan worked just like magic. Enough. Don't bother. Tears gone right back to isolation. Aren't you gonna so sod. <laughs> no. reprimand me? <laughs> no. I am relieved. You are safe. Okay. Wow. Maybe I should run away more often. Atreus. Kidding. Sorry. So where'd the new spear come from? Brock made it. From Dropnir. What's that? A ring. But what's its story? I do not know. You were not there to ask. <sighs> right. Which probably would have happened and we probably would have had a more extensive description. Yeah. Of drop near, but oh well. Thanks, Atreus. Yeah, you little yeah. shit. Grounded. <laughs> oh, Lord. Atreus. He's probably just scared. He was chained up for a really long time. We can't hurt him, okay? A desperate creature can be the most dangerous. Wind powers? Cool! Come on, we gotta get across before he opens up more realm tears. Did Odin ask you to free that creature? What? No. Why? Are you not working with him? It's not what you think. Whatever he promised, he cannot be trusted. I don't. But he has something I need. It's hard to explain. If anyone isn't following, what he's referring to is access to hyper knowledge will be really useful in subverting the prophecy of Kratos' death. Mm -hmm. So if he can fix up that mask and get access to it, yeah, I mean, you know, be careful about that Odin guy, but he'll be able to save Kratos then. And that's also something he doesn't want to let him know about, because it's kind of awkward. Odin, you say Well, not to mention it's Ironwood, too. It's hard to explain. Why? I just need you to trust me. I know I have no right to ask. Can you anyway? What does he have that you need? Why can you not tell me? It's complicated. What about you? Why do you have a new weapon? I thought you didn't want war. I do not. But... It's complicated. Everyone keeps secrets. Sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love. And don't worry about Odin. I'm not going back there. That is good to hear. Thanks for coming back. You didn't have to. I am your father. I will always help, as long as I am able. Well, that's good to hear, too. Tell me, what were you doing in Asgard? I was translating things for Odin. There's this mask he found and a magical rift that's connected to it. It's all sort of... Complicated. Yeah. You cannot trust those loyal to Odin. It's not always bad to trust people. It compromises your judgment. Maybe. I'm tired of feeling alone. So there's a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> the, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the things mainly being like, yeah, of course he's, uh, Atreus reaches the fuck out to loads of different people because he's very tired of being in the woods, hunting for deer, training, and that's it every day. Remember, they didn't even stay in contact with uh, Brock or Sindri, did they? No, so apparently not. That was pretty At least not damn isolated. Not officially. Um, the kid just wants to have friends uh, is part of some of the fundamental motivations and Curtis is just like, yeah, but they could all backstab you. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, maybe. Why don't you just have all right. wolves, boy? The wolves will backstab you. Except yeah, maybe this giant wolf. evil one. <laughs> <He doesn't laughs> this one is um, an exception. Let's just figure out how the skate works. Okay? Tell us. I do not want you to feel alone, but your decision to go to Asgard helped me understand. Odin doesn't want Ragnarok. I know I can't trust him, but I needed his help. I can't let Ragnarok happen either. I would have helped you. I know. Wait, he's right here. If Odin truly wishes to avoid Ragnarok, then we are in agreement. Yeah? Then what's that spear for? To protect you. 
you have other weapons for that? Mind the spear. I share. It's your turn. We are not the same. I am the parent. You're ducking the question. Close. <laughs> That was, that was parent uh, card. He's trying to play that trump card, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't have to. It's like, oh, okay. Promise me you won't kill him, okay? I make no promises, but I will try not to kill the beast. Okay, I'll distract Garm. You freeze his chains with your axe and we can't run him. Latch him onto something. No, too dangerous. It's a good plan. Let's move. Ugh. Wait. <laughs> What's interesting there too is he's never even seen Atreus turn into a wolf, I don't think. But uh, uh no, he he mentions that la uh, later. In yeah, this, uh, in the scene, Just, he's um, seen the bear though. He said, well, so he knows that Atreus has the capability of turn shape shifting, so to speak. But uh, as he certainly didn't know he had it under control. Just uh, yeah. that's going to come up, yeah. Did Odin teach you to control it? No. We will not rely on what he taught you. Next time, we do it my way. Yes, sir. Why didn't that work? You didn't mess up on purpose, did you? That does not trust. Sorry, that wasn't fair. I just, I thought it would work. Patience. We will find a way. Through these boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is always a way. Do you see? Oh, why didn't I think of that? The solution is not always obvious. I think I hear him up ahead. You do this my way now. Yes, your way. It means what you think it means. The problem doesn't have to reach our doorstep for it to be our responsibility. If we have the power to limit the harm it could cause, we should act. Can't we try and... We have the power to limit the harm this creature can cause. We will use it. That first flashback coming back, baby. Yep. Uh, this is the thing. They had limited time with those three and they spent it deliberately. It was neat to get a spectacle, boss. Get a bunch of yeah, I like that boss. series. I was uh, I was quite impressed just with what was happening visually, <laughs> let alone like the mechanical aspect of it. Big doggo, and and it's confusing in terms of how you, you feel at this point. Cause you're like, yeah. so it was it was <laughs> slaved up, and then you released it only to kill it. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> like <it's, laughs> we saved. Really, it. some kind of anticlimax. It's just like, oh, he's man, dead now. Yeah. yeah. Are we the Damn daddies? Up, a little bit. Same kind of feeling when you fight Sif and Dark Souls. Like it's like, oh, it's sad. Yeah. I, I beat I beat the big doggo, but did I want to? Did I want to? 
XP. <laughs> yes. It was worth it. Let's yep, go. Wish it didn't have to end that. Got one. another one. That's not for all XP. He got loose. I am the parent. But he's dead. Sometimes I'm there the is no other way. I know. I work on. I sought the Norns. They told me Heimdall intended to kill you in Asgard. Heimdall? The Norns? I thought you didn't believe in that. Throwing oh! chains. What the hell? How? Oh my God! The dead will keep flooding the realms. The realms will collapse. You must learn to calm your mind. Maybe I've learned I run better on chaos. What else did you learn? We work better when we trust each other. Ah! Ah! Please work, please work, please work! I'm sorry! Well, I guess he came this way. Let's find another way up. What did you do? At the house. The spell you saw me do in Fenrir died. I didn't know it then. But I accidentally put his soul into my knife. Those are powerful, so I thought maybe Fenrir's could change its nature. Oh, the achievement yeah, swatch so quickly. A, um, uh, yeah. If you remember what the Norns said, it was basically prophecy is only possible when you fully understand somebody, and that somebody stays on course of you know the current traits and aspirations and motivations they have. You can then predict pretty much where they're going to do, what they'll do, where they'll end up. Um, they kept saying, I think, in that scene, it's your nature. Your nature, yeah. So basically, the only way to subvert and change prophecy is to change the nature of the person. Not like, to you miss the point if you're trying to subvert the event itself. You need to change the people right. involved and the decisions they make. Because, mm -hmm. Exactly, because if the person changes, they make different choices. It's, um, <clears throat> oh, it's so good. Like, the, the, the aspect as well of you do... Atreus's plan without really going through it and sort of just just it, you know the what was the what was the plan even anyway attach it to one chain it's like yeah I mean this is it's not exactly gonna be not great Kratos is just standard let's just kill it it's getting in the fucking way it's destroying things killing it is you know not an unwise plan it's just like fine it's just like oh shit it's an undead dog so it doesn't even uh okay so what what else we got? And it's like we we combine the efforts of these two. Kratos trusts that Atreus's plan has validity to it, and we, we get an actual result. It feeds him with this. And uh as as was has been mentioned by a couple people in chat, it ties in with everything Brock was telling Kratos before we got the spear. Mm-hmm. The nature of the says, thing. He also says that it was Brock made the spear. Um, well, he doesn't say that like the mermaid and the thing is that he was like, yeah, Brock made it. And this is a spear. Brock made it. So well, what's interesting about Brock it is that, that he picks up the wind on their way there. And that's like a huge part of what the spear does. You know, it's like it's yeah. the primary element and stuff. And, uh, you, you, well, what do you, what do you think about the, uh, that rags? Do you think that's unfair? You should be mentioning mermaid lady or do you think it's, I don't addictive? think it's, un I don't think it's unfair. I think it's just, he, he values Brock's input to such a high degree when it comes to the, the spear and his time with Brock that he, uh, that's says, what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah. His, his Brock made it. Yeah. So. And yeah, as someone just pointed out, the Holder brothers signature is on the, um, the spear when she completes it, almost like she applied it. Or that it was a part of the spearhead when she they provided. I don't know. Either way. When I found you in Midgard, before Freya attacked, you said you needed to protect me. Why? I saw a prophecy. You were in my arms. Dead. I saw it too. In Jotunheim. What? You knew? That's why you've been training me so hard. One day. You will have to survive without me. Not gonna happen. I won't let it. I won't. All journeys come to an end. Not ours. Not like that. And yeah, right after they cooperate and trust to get the solution to this big old problem, they finally tell each other the, the information they have on each other. Yeah. 
but they both had it at the same time. It's like, you fools. You're okay. Sorry I hurt you. It's over now. I promise. Oh my god, how did you get so small? Then? <laughs> Why is everything so small? How come everything got smaller? Oh! Big doggo! At least cleaning you is way faster. Good boy! Yeah. I missed you too. Didn't know if that would work. We did it! Turn <laughs> of the camera going, whoa! <laughs> oh shit! How is this possible? It's giant magic. I've been learning things. In Asgard. I suppose it might be that. worth, uh, I'm not sure if it's been mentioned yet, but in the opening, um, there's the little four little soul-like soul parts, mm -hmm. and one of them kind of goes into the blade as the other three. Yeah, very much Why done on? on purpose to hopefully have most people not realize something happened there, but when they look back, they'll see something did indeed happen. Yep. Also, yep. This is a really great <laughs> scene incoming. Yes. More secrets. I promise. When that someone's trusting me to keep, like you kept your promise to mom. Dog's like I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See what I can do when you trust me. A lot of this game is the phase of parenting where the the kids become old enough that you have to allow them to make their decisions and go through with their plans instead of cultivating and understanding them first. The crossing that line is difficult for parents. Mm. All parents. Look at the doggo guy. <laughs> yeah. Please do this now. Look at him go. It is done. We should inform the others. Decide our next move. So, when the Nords told you Heimdall was going to try and kill me, that's what your spear's for, isn't it? It is. Heimdall's a jerk, but that's not who you are anymore, right? A god killer? You don't want war. No, but I will do what it takes to keep you safe. I have been falling back into my old ways. Angry, distrustful. With you, now and before. I... I chased you away. Without you? I got reckless. Overconfident. Made stupid mistakes. I don't know why I thought I could do this alone. You were right. No. On our journey together, you have grown into a warrior worthy of your namesake. the one who was not ready. You don't have to be who you were just because I'm not there. Let's make a promise. I'll listen for your voice in my head when you're not there. To guide me. And you do the same. All right? I 
I need to know you'll be okay without me. Atreus. I am sorry. Don't be sorry, father. Be better. Let's go home. So that's one of the best scenes in the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's really fucking good. Good God, where do you begin? Um, yeah, there's a lot to go through. What separates Kratos now from Kratos' original trilogy? It's the pieces that he's grabbed along the way and how they've gone from seeds to like full on blooming in his own mind about how he operates. But a lot of them are based on and sort of thrive alongside Faye and Atreus, the two people in his life that have made him much more capable of not just ripping into people's skulls as soon as bad things happen. And the second that Atreus was gone, the second he knew Atreus was in Asgard and then that Heimdall wanted to kill him, it, there was only one mode of operation. I'm going to kill everything. That's what's yep. happening now. I'm killing everything. And it's just like, uh... Okay, and then angry with everyone he talks to, and very ill on patience. Just like, nah, nah, nah. I don't. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And unlike in a lot of situations where that may have been the case before, Atreus was there as a grounding element to sort of counteract those uh those thoughts and actions. But because he's not there, that's what's enabling him to just continue to be like that. And. Mm -hmm. He had a moment of understanding it himself in like a meta view of, of what what has his journey been? And is it as simple as if Atreus is not around, then he's just done? He goes back to being the guy he just doesn't want to be anymore? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, and then Atreus says, which is true, that without Kratos, he's saying some, he did some things that are kind of retarded and it resulted in really bad stuff because uh, Kratos will often be a voice of reason instead of, like, emotion-driven, which is kind of funny, right? Because that's, again, without Atreus, he becomes much less uh, sort of reason-focused and much more emotion-focused. Um, and so, yeah, they have this reconciliation and they've made this deal of it shouldn't be that the second one of them is out of frame that those influences of that person are gone. It should be that they maintain. And The impact yeah. of that individual should carry through in your actions and guide you because yeah just because they're not there doesn't mean that they're not there in a more abstract sense of people and the impact they have on others Atreus, and it's just about being more thinking... cognizant of that in the future right of acknowledging the things that the other person would have to say that are that are meaningful and useful to you and keeping that in mind and what an interesting inversion on what was the more overt fear of loss in terms of Kratos losing Atreus to then have Atreus say to him, I need to know that you're going to be okay if I'm not here. Mm -hmm. Like, it, isn't that an interesting flip of the more uh, conventional reading of uh, this relationship where a lot of it is sort of viewed through the lens of Kratos, not realizing that Atreus has those same concerns too. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously that's been like overt in the story, right? He wants to prevent Ragnarok and he wants to he wants to make sure that Kratos survives that, but it's just like giving more of a voice to that character's concerns in a way that's unexpected. And then leading right into um, Kratos setting up story. And yeah. then we get Atreus, the callback line. A wonderful, probably my favorite specific callback in the game. Well, so this was yeah. simultaneous. It was bittersweet for me because I was through the roof happy that I heard that. But a lot of people don't know the reference. And so they're like, what? That's shitty dialogue. Oh, that's a shame. It's incredible dialogue. <laughs> it's just so it's funny because of the comparison, right? Context. I think, by the way, I've, I've got it in here. So we'll play it first. Okay. That can't be unwritten. Remember? 
We shouldn't let prophecy define our choices. Then we will make our own destiny. Yes. They're back. Oh, did I not put it in you? I'm retarded. Oh. How did I not put that in there? I have a distinct memory of putting that in there, but apparently I didn't. Okay, well, well anyway. You have <laughs> failed us all. I have like, failed. So, the, uh, because we, it's right at the beginning of 2018, pretty much. They, they go hunting. The first thing Atreus does is fire too early, I think. Yep. And it, uh, it scares the prey. And Critus is like, what are you doing? It's God is up. Fucked mm -hmm. all this up. And then and Atreus just looks like, oh, shit. I'm, I, I, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, says, I'm sorry. And Critus says, don't be sorry. Be better. And he says it in a very cold way. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. The coldest and, and, their relationship is, is right at the beginning of 2018. Yeah, I think at first I always kind of read it as him treating him like a Spartan, like saying, no, like, don't don't say sorry, like, hit the target next time. And then with all the context of every, all the scenes with Faye in this game, it's like, oh, they they really kind of pulled that together to be a, be a message, you know? It's incredibly important, and it, it, it's safe to say that that was incredibly deliberate because it lays down the groundwork for, like, one of the most fundamental themes in this game, which is the nature of, of like, change and atonement. And um, it's, it's not about, like, being upset about it or sad about it or, like, apologizing for it. It's about acting better in the future, like, becoming a better person and striving to not make those mistakes in the future. It's not about, yeah, it's not about apologies. It's about taking action. To try and make things better um and i mean it's it, the, the really great thing with atreus saying that to him is it's like it's so indicative of the fact that the lessons that kratos has tried to impart on him like they've they've taken root he has yeah, listened yeah. and he values what kratos has to say and his intentions and training like that's it's it's he he's he's taken it on board which is, I mean, of course like kratos smiling for many reasons the fact that he smiles at all yeah, he's proud yeah. of him like that's that's all that that is. It's pride. He's done his job. If that if that worked out there, that's at least yeah indicative. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the fact that Atreus does listen to him. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what to add anymore. I think that's pretty much covers it. Very well, the performances, the music, <laughs> uh, absolutely fantastic. Music just fits. I I, I mean, think... yeah, it's great, great. Oh. We should travel us no further. Well, that's a bloody relief. So you put down old Garm, did you? Yeah, sort of. Atre See Sindri's expression on Atreus? Yeah, he's not a happy camper right now. Oh. Atreus, your decision to go to Asgard after all he's put us through. I'll never understand it. But I hope you at least came back with something we can use. I hope so, too. Come on, let me show you what Odin's up to. Here's what he cares about most. More than Ragnarok or anything. Is this mask. Anyone recognize it? That thing? Ugh, oh, it's a dead end. He's been faffing around with that since before I knew him. To be honest, I thought the giants were just having a laugh with that one. No laugh with that one. Okay, fine. No. You're wrong, Mimir. This mask is no fraud. The giants didn't make it, and only a few of them ever glimpsed it in their visions. They never knew its origin, but some believed it was a way to gaze into the secrets of creation itself. Is it an oracle? Much, much more. Doesn't seem like he's just describing what he knows it to be. It looks like he's invested. The fondness for it. Yeah. The way he touches Imagine the page. Becoming one with a source of infinite knowledge. This. This is why Odin tortured me. So what do you think? Know it? No. It's one obsession he never saw fit to share with me. But I'll tell you this. Even when Odin speaks the truth, his purpose is false. Either way, it's a mistake to let it distract us. Is Heimdall our focus or not? We will reveal. 
write our fate another way. Then I'm going back to Vanaheim. If we're not taking the fight to Odin, I should help my brother stand against him. And listen, everyone. I'm really sorry about the way I left. You know I've never hurt any of you on purpose. Well, when you can turn into a bear by accident, I suppose these things can happen. So, do you forgive me? Of course, Atreus. We know you meant no harm, lad. Sindri? I'm sure I will. Eventually. Ooh. Okay. Some some bitterness there. Uh, it feels deliberate. <laughs> like yeah. it's not um, <laughs> well because it's not that While easy with everybody oh no, of course yeah, yeah. Some, some get some physically people, hurt by it. yeah like some people would be like yeah no it's cool but then some people would be like i yeah maybe you know like give yeah. me some it's time my face it that hurt I, well that exactly me. it's no surprise in the air i hope that i can be forgiven for not doing more when the hellwalkers attacked whatever reservations i have about violence I like the idea that as soon as Tia started explaining himself, Atreus was like, I'm out, bye. <laughs> I'm going to my room. You shouldn't apply when your home is under attack. And certainly not by undead abominations. Yet I reached for a shield instead of a sword. You are right to chide me for that, old friend. The next time the moment calls me, I'll be ready. Well said, Tia. I believe you just might. Care to join me, Kratos? Have a seat, think about your breathing, try and find stillness in your mind. No. You are well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take more than a porch full of bone john stiffs to keep me down. What am I gonna do? Walk around with a bandage on my head, begging for attention? I was mauled by a bear. Nudged more like it. Appreciate that the, there is dialogue there for Kratos to check in on Brock and see how he's doing after he, yeah. he was... Uh, yeah. They think they said he was bleeding after the attack. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that Tyr apologized and that it can be, it, it looks like this is going to be something of a motivator for him to maybe take action in future because he yeah. regrets it. The Hound of no oh, time. A threat. Indeed. You have proven worthy of great responsibility, Master Kratos. Please forgive me if I've been abrupt or at all impertinent of late. The loss of Madame Neathog weighed heavily upon me, even before the grave uncertainties of this Garm episode. I do sincerely apologize for my rude demeanor during this time. I did not notice. You are being polite, of course. My demeanor was impudent, borderline cruel. Surely this was a source of some discomfort for you. No. My <laughs> conversational wounds <laughs> run deep then, and you would hide the scars. I swear, Master Kratos, I will make it up to you someday. So what happened the last time you were in Vanaheim? I still don't know how you got Frey to stop trying to kill you. We traveled to her village to break Odin's spell. Once freed, she accepted that I was not her enemy. You also missed a highly entertaining moment where Brock was lifted ass over face in Freyr's camp. You met Freyr? What's he like? Different from his sister. Lacks her conviction. True. And he's a bit quicker to forgive. And an ineffective leader. But his heart's in the right place. You'll like him, lad. Mm. Really like that way of describing him. It's like, Kratos was unimpressed, but Mimir's yeah. like, chill, <laughs> chill, chill. He's a cool guy. Time to see how the Vanir have fared in our absence. I hope Freya's okay. She can care for herself. We're still checking on her, though? Her brother's forces are outnumbered. And there is much I owe her. Yeah, I Very imagine tough. it'll literally be a, a life debt he has for her at this point. Pretty oh. much, yeah. Atreus, a welcome reunion. Unexpected, but welcome. You know us? Can't be. Is that who I think? Oh, you shifty bastard. It's almost good to see you again. And for once in the shape of a man. Or good boy, really. Mickey. So that's how they've got your head out of your ass. Maybe now you'll stop being such a half-blind, piss-drunk, oversexed liar. He was more of a pig than I ever was. I do not know you. <laughs> do you not recognize your handiwork? <clears throat> Hildesvini. 
Remember when we first met Freya in the woods? It's honestly kind of neat they remembered because in the first game they established that he, uh, the 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 ball was an advisor when he was in his normal form, and that since she's gone right, from Midgard, right. it's like you don't have to remember the ball. But I mean, what happened to the ball? <laughs> like, no, yeah. there he is. Yeah. After I, I oh. am <laughs> so so sorry about that. Freya's boar. Her advisor and friend. Counselor to the Vanir. And yes, while exiled at Midgard, I was trapped in my boar form. It looked weirder than any boar I've ever seen. Get after it then. We didn't know he belonged to anyone. He doesn't. He's my friend. The boy was following my command. There is a reason I've tossed this in here. It's once again just like the Alfheim thing. You got that, right? Kratos mm -hmm. being a good parent here, being like, don't don't take this out on the child. This is all stuff that I have encouraged him to do. So, you know, it's on me, whatever issue you have. But now look at how it's recanted. Yeah. Then help fix this. Hold here, please. And then you shot me. At my command. No. My arrow, my mistake. Forgotten. Vanaheim needs... I mean, it's subtle, but like... It's just, Drace mm -hmm. has gotten older now, so he's like, no, no, yeah. it was me. He's happy to own that decision. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. I help more than ever. Even Mimir's. Where's Freya? She came here to help her brother. She leads the search party for Freya and Bigvir. They've been captured by the Ainher Yard. Hey, that happen? An ambush. The presence has intensified since your last visit. To make matters worse, the Celestial Wolves haven't been seen in days. At least I assume. Not easy, tracking time with no moon in the sky. What happened between you two? The usual. Miscommunication, conflicting loyalties, broken promises. Nothing to concern yourself with. I'm not concerned. Just curious. Curiosity's all well and good. But so is privacy, huh? Okay, mm. okay. I threw this in because I thought it was so interesting. It's like the only time, really. And it made me think about it, that there's information to be had, but a character was just like, no, that's, no. That's, that's my thing. You don't... Uh, well, no. <laughs> like, why should I tell yeah. you what went on between me and Hilda Sveeney? Like, what has that got to do with you? And it's like, oh, I, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know. Anaheim looks and feels so different from the other realms. It's warm, like Svartalfan. But there's a kind of thickness in the air. Mm. Egros. Egros. Uh, what? Egros. Greek. For humid. He grows. I like it. Come here. I still feel like that's just yeah. adding on to the references of Kratos is more and more open about his Greek history. Yep. Um, to the point where he probably could teach Atreus the language at this point, right? If yeah, you really probably. To. Though maybe that's pointless. I don't know. It depends what what's going on over there. <laughs> is it yeah, that's true. <laughs> using a dead language by? Uh, I don't know. But it'd probably yeah. still be just it's a nice Ragnarok father son moment for them. Just yeah. teach him the language. Dead language? Why yeah. not? I mean, Atreus knows shit tons anyway. It's, told us Ragnarok begins when Stolen it's, Hati it's not a dead language, moon, though. Right? It's just no one speaks it in this realm, right? Or in this. Well, so that's Norse what I was saying. I'm not sure thing. if it's a dead language. It depends on what, how everything is over in uh, Greece, I guess. I said it was foretold, lad. Prophecy. Which, after our time with the Norns, we've all had quite enough of. But Odin still believes. That's got to be why the Einar stole the moon. He's still trying to avoid Ragnarok. I think they're sleeping. Well, there you have it. The legendary celestial wolves. Supremely entertaining, as promised. Remember their shrine? They didn't rejoin the sky until after the moon returned. And then chased an arrow across the sky. Right. Well, best we go find the moon and put it back where it belongs, eh? As if that's a perfectly normal thing to say. I'm not even going to begin to understand how they stole yeah. the moon. I don't... I ain't got anything for that. I, think I, 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 I don't quite understand how Mimir would contextualize the word normal. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Steal the moon! It's uh, Dr. Evil, I guess, sort of thing. <laughs> going... They need to make a movie where someone steals the moon. Not blows it up or makes a base on it, just steals the moon and never explains. Put it in my basement. Yeah. I saw it play Golan Hati Shrine. The wolves are back in Vanaheim. We're rescuing the moon. Yes. Rescuing I the, the prophecy. So, doesn't it make you worried? 
everything we're doing. Oh, people saying Despicable Me. Is that what the, the plot is? is this, they steal the moon? Yeah, Groot. Oh, was it? Groot. Oh, okay. I, just, I couldn't I remember. I've never seen a Despicable Me movie. Like, I, not, I've not seen it, but because uh, I remember the back, the villain's look as well, but I really didn't remember that being the plot. Well, good for them. <laughs> now, you're not trying. Remember our agreement. Prophecy will not dictate our actions. Yeah. Our allies need help. That is our focus now. It's from Helheim. Heimd almost to grab this while I freed Garm. Ah, I was there, but I, I didn't know. And now you fight to undo the damage. Your guilt is misplaced. Yeah. No, you, you're right. Father, how are you so sure we even have a choice about what we're doing? Doubt is a weakness we cannot afford. Who said anything about doubt? So far, we've done everything the Giants said we would. We make our own choices. Nothing forces us. A lad does make some good points, though. As long as Atreus lives, so be it. He's been repeating that a lot, and you might just yep. argue it's a part of his nature he is not going to change, and why would he? Like, if that determines a couple of these choices, then so be it. There's, there's no reason to change that. More good boys. Doesn't surprise me at all they put this in the trailer. Yeah. That's real cool. Just like inside their shrine. I actually used that as one of my thumbnails. <laughs> this looks so great. If I do this... Fate only binds you if you let it. That I'm about to shoot them with an arrow, just so we're clear. Not because it is written. I really like that line. Mm -hmm. Necessary, not written. Elsa! Look at him go! That's great imagery. Yeah, that's awesome. Good choice, lad. And it's it's cool for the Norse people because they were wondering how they were going to contextualize this and how it would look visually, and I think they're satisfied. I wouldn't know, because I don't know anyone who's a Norse expert, though I find there are plenty available wherever wow, you look yeah. for discussions <laughs> on this game. All of a sudden, well, they seem to be in excess. So, we report back to Hilda Sfini, then what? We came here to help Freya. We will not leave without rescuing her brother and the Light Elf. Okay, but Odin's not gonna stop searching for mask pieces. That is his concern, not ours. Sure, but if that mask offers all the answers... Then it will surely exact a price. Be wary of shortcuts to knowledge. Yes, father. Kratos, Atreus. Knowledge. That eclipse was your doing, I take it. Thank you for coming. Big Vir used the diversion to escape. What about your brother? We know where they're holding him now. Bail has already prepped the explosives. If you're with me, we can leave as soon as you're ready. I could use another shapeshifter's help. Go with him, Atreus. I will aid Freya. Yes, sir. What did you find? A seed of Yggdrasil? To Muspelheim. Where do you reckon it leads? The gauntlet, perhaps? The what? Combat trials. We... I attempted them several <laughs> years ago. With Atreus? Yes. Then we should find the other half of the seed. Was that... I like how he... Was I that like because he... he felt bad about the fact when he was saying it out loud, like it probably shouldn't yeah. have taken Atreus to them? Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to do. Like, we... Uh, I attempted them, but Freya's like, you did it with Atreus, didn't you? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like a responsible thing to do. But uh, no, not really. Well, as he said at the time, training. Training. What is your plan? When we reach the temple, I'll fire off the beacon. 
A signal for Vela and Birger to set off their distraction. Birger. The Dark Elf Hive. Nice to not be on the receiving end of it for once. With their attention drawn elsewhere, you and I can assault the main force from behind. While Atreus and Hildesfini slip in to rescue your brother in the confusion. Yes. Once we see their beacon, we'll regroup by the river and escape on Freyr's boat. Come on, we're making good time. Yes, yeah. you and Clark, oh, you put it in. <laughs> the bridge only grows in the daylight. I, uh, I wanted to see the wolves again. <laughs> I suppose they are grateful for the attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've seen them. Now call back Hottie and let's go. <laughs> so, Lady Freya. Had any good books lately? <laughs> Just, you know. The Norn said you'd kill Heimdall, but you chose not to walk that path. Back when we first met, I doubt you'd have done the same. <laughs> and you? Do you still seek Ragnarok? Odin has much to answer for. If Groa's prophecy is correct, perhaps my realm can finally know peace. Perhaps I can know peace. Forgive me for being a head on a belt, but haven't we all just established how prophecy is pure havers? Gods, Mimir. What? The most annoying man alive. That what sounded so genuine. Like, yeah. Who is it? What? Alas, we're neath hog. It was in our way. Aye, I don't doubt it. Ah. Curious, though. What was she doing here? Odin used roots of the World Tree as part of his spell that kept me from leaving Midgard. Neathhog protects the tree's roots, wherever they are. Ah, I see. Odin used her. And she unwittingly paid the price. Classic Odin. Um, it was brought up at one point, and I feel like it's probably worth talking about. Uh, the uh, Someone, I can't remember if it was a couple of people, but they, they felt it was a problem that Freya killed Neathhog. Um, but what, what does everyone think before I... Go further than that. It was, uh, it, I think it depends on what they say. It's a problem. What do they mean when they say it's a problem? Yeah, yeah, like problem. in reference to the war? Um, it, you know, in reference to, like, it was it was a bad thing to do morally and that it seems out of character. Um, I uh, don't think she would let what is essentially a beast, as important as it may be, but a beast be something that she stops at in order to get the abilities back that she needs in order to fight Odin. I'm sure she didn't do it with a smile on her face. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty clear that they did it because they basically had to to get get the thing, <clears throat> the powers back. Upon having essentially checked it out a couple of times and, at this point, yeah. uh, it seems to me, in the fight, this thing is using uh, tears so accurately, it can like almost pincer you while not necessarily in the realm that you're in. Um, yeah, or at least it can fuck exactly. with you quite a bit. Uh, it was heading back primarily because it was, you know, losing the battle at the time. But that does not mean it will not attack you ever again, especially when Freya says it will protect the roots with its life. I think what you're yeah. supposed to assume at that point then is that it is fighting until it's losing a lot of health. And so it's like, I'm going to fuck off now. But the second you start hitting those roots again, it's just going to come back. Um, yeah, exactly. And so, at that point, she would have to get rid of it. But I think there's actually a, even a bonus reason. Like, if Odin has set this up here, there's no telling where hell else he could have set it up to. And, like, this thing, it, it's not only fucking up uh, Freya, but it's just it's being used as a tool of Odin's at this point. And so, you, I think you've got a couple of reasons there that you can use for why she would go through with it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I guess for the sake of... Covering it for those who are upset that she got the kill. Oh fuck off! They got Sorry. the kill. Okay. They got the kill. They exactly. got the kill. Team yeah. effort. She couldn't have gotten the kill if Kratos wouldn't have held it back. I don't know why that's hard for people. That is the way you want it to do it. Like narratively, you want them to get it together, not one or the yeah. other. And and yeah, it was both. She couldn't have cut its head off without Kratos keeping it in place. So. All right, chill. <laughs> just, just chill out. 
Make Trace will have more than enough time to get in and out undetected. More than enough time to get in and out undetected. I am not worried for Atreus. He is ready to fight on his own. Oh yeah, it's probably worth saying, I don't care if she killed it on her own either. <laughs> like oh, if, yeah. <laughs> I, sorry, I, I gave off the impression that I wanted it to be that way. So it was like, no, I don't care. It's Freya, that was like Freya's whole thing. And it was indicative. It was like a representation of how Odin had wrought his roots inside her, uh, or gotten all this shit. Like this is the beast protecting the curse that's on her that prevents her from going to other realms. Like, of course, it it should. I'm more than happy for it to have gotten the killing blow without Kratos holding uh, Nidhogg in position. Oh, absolutely. But I think it's cool was, that he helped as well. I was going to say, though, also every single dragon class enemy here, so both dragons and then the um, the Drekki, like the alligator yeah. thing, they're, they're, they all have the same QTE in their kill, and it ends with you hitting square to have Atreus shoot the dragon in the neck, so like, is it a problem that Atreus gets all the dragon kills? Like, I'm, I know. don't know, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, where <are> the consistency? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of think of the, the companion character as an extension of the player as well. Like, you're also controlling Freya and or Atreus with either QTEs or with the square button, essentially. Right? Yeah, yeah. Fireworks! <laughs> Completely giving away your position. Oh shit, here we go! <laughs> What? Idiots! Idiots! Oh. I mean, it would be redundant to say this is a good part. <laughs> like, but, oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them. <laughs> if it isn't Queen Mistletoe herself. Queen Mistletoe. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's what a piece of shit. It's not just the fact, because, like, you could be like, well, that was a lame way of like, executing that insult. It's like, it doesn't matter. He's looking at it. He knows exactly what's on his mind for the most part, yeah. what his deepest insecurities are more than likely. And of course, that's on his mind all the fucking time. So just saying it, it's just, yeah, that's Heimdall. Yes, but... Been a while. Heimdall. <laughs> and you must be the little half-breed's father. Lucky day! <laughs> you have a lot to answer for, Sunshine. You too, traitor. Better a traitor than Odin's lapdog. Mm. Mm. I love that delivery. Odin's yeah. lap dog. Lap dog. <laughs> he say he comes across as not even, um, not even giving much of a shit. Like, like it's just like we're gonna get you. Have yeah. you just had that one chambered for years? Yeah. <laughs> the burden is mine. I can help. I know, but you are needed elsewhere. He's right, you know. Sizzles wasn't looking so hot last I saw. Sizzles. Oh. I know you didn't want this, but we know how this ends. See you soon. Well, we both know that. That is Freya saying to Kratos, you can take him. I know you can, and I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing you again. Like, you're going to be okay. Yep. She's reassuring him with the prophecy that they are all very invested in trying to prove they're not bound by. Mm -hmm. I find that so interesting, alongside, of course, the fact that Freya's come this far to the point where she's like, you're going to be okay, buddy. You got this. You're going to beat him. Yep. That's not true. <laughs> but don't worry, Frigg. I'll be coming for you and your brother as soon as I am finished here. <laughs> now, what you got? Dory mode, everyone. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I was about to say, you were wrecking him. <laughs> Wait, I was just looking away. Was that in real time? That oh, shit. Yes, that, that was real time. Was yeah. Melting. I was, like, I was like, oh man, this took me a lot longer. What'd you bring me? <laughs> Having fun yet? <laughs> Ha! 
Oh well, you and me then. I love that he just fucking kicks it. Like just kicks it, yeah. <laughs> he's he's spent like the the few moments we've had with him and Gul Topper, he's been like really friendly with it. Been like, who's my little brother? And it's like, oh, I love you. Second, it dies. Oh well, <laughs> just, <laughs> piece <that>? of shit. <laughs> uh. I can feel your frustration. It is immensely satisfying. What now, brother? This pair ah. remains our best chance. Well, I'm waiting. Hey, careful! It's a really fun boss fight, not just for the mechanics being yeah. different than usual, but also the first time you crack through, he dodges it all. Second time, he has to use his, uh, well, a block, basically. Is, yeah, yeah, it's a little more. A little bit harder. Yeah, a little bit diff more, more difficult. These are. Oh, wait! You expected the stick to give you an advantage? Kind of doing that. Of the Aesir brought down by an old geezer's cane. Ha! Bam. And that last yeah. one, he blocked and then he took the hit because Kratos was fast enough. It's like, ah, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Nice development. Yeah. yeah. You actually hit me. And a lot of uh, people say this, uh, I assume it's true, it's the ring that did that on his face as opposed to necessarily the fist. Uh, creating the oh, creating cool. the cut. Yeah, yeah like I the mean, slice, that... which yeah, is really yeah. cool if true. Yeah, line that cause... Daphnir is the thing that can <clears throat> hurt a god in this world. Then, yeah. Well, no, I I was just gonna go as far as saying uh, Dropnir is the key to defeating Heimdall, but it's also what just got that first hit as well. Which, uh, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like, like uh, if you punched him in the face, it still would have hurt. It's just that he got the the ring finger. Wait. What is going on in that empty head? Oh, no, no, no. You are going to spare me out of pity! <laughs> Let it go, you may live. I love this so much. Yeah. So, you got. Because yeah. um, he. He can tell exactly what he's thinking right now, and it's probably nothing too complimentary Where towards we Heimdall. <laughs> is Heimdall's overconfident, and then he gets this happen, where the spear goes through his arm, and what does he do? And this, by the way, it wasn't something I noticed as much until I was watching Fringy's playthrough, because you pointed it out straight away. He's like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 stop, 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 stop. It's like, ah, oh, like, the, the Chad really? demeanor yeah. is gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Chad no more. He's us. coping and seething he now. Is. Um, <laughs> he is not used to being vulnerable. Yeah, and so that, you know, he expresses straight away, please stop, please you know, don't, don't hurt me anymore. And that could have been it. But he reads, as, as Kratos is walking off, they connect their eyes, and he's reading something, and he's not fucking liking it. What is it? Uh, and it's that mm -hmm. Kratos pities Pity. him. Like, genuinely yeah. pities him, which is beyond infuriating to someone with an ego the size of <laughs> yep. Heimdall's. It's like, you seriously <laughs> think that of me? Fuck off! Like, which is so funny because it pulls him right out of his, like, survival instincts. Yeah, it's uh, just pride. He needs to protect his ego. Brilliant. He can't take it. And there's something it's else. It's great. It's really great for this character. Something else Heimdall reads, and then he has an opinion yeah. on it. Is this about the little runt? Mm -hmm. Oh, now I am definitely going to get him! Bad choice. Yeah. This is your final warning. I don't think a warning is going to cut it. You think you get to just walk away? 
No. That is not how this works. <laughs> You do not get to decide my fate. I, that line is so important. It's so Noel. good. That, that, that it's so good. That's what defines him, and it's so great because in, in saying else. you don't get to decide my fate, and the choice he commits to, he decides his own fate essentially. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> like he does. He makes a choice here, and, uh, and it just ultimately. matches this man so much. Yeah, he sees, he knows what everybody's thinking. He can see what everybody's intentions are. This guy does not want to be in a position where he's at the mercy of anybody. He cannot accept it. Nope. He can't take it. He just cannot do it. And it's going to be his undoing. You are dead, sunshine. Breaking fate, or fate's breaking us. What a great little line as well. Mm. Uh, I, 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 this thing, uh, <clears throat> it was it was only on subsequent sort of understandings of the game. Heimdall, like I, I think I even said on stream, like nothing wrong with a one-dimensional character. He's he's more complicated than one-dimensional. He's got a lot more going on. Yeah. Yeah, he got some stuff. He's getting going the literal on. fucking life choked out of him, but he's reading in Kratos' head. I do not want to be a monster. I do not want to be a monster. Like, that's the one thing that's mm -hmm. getting to me. It's the one thing in the back of my mind. I, I I can't fucking deal with it. And then he's just like, well, with my last breath, I'm going to do everything I can to prey on your insecurities. Yep. Because I can Good read shit. them as clear as day. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. And the eyes fading away. Do you see the hand slowly fades away as he's mm -hmm. uh, losing yeah. his breath as well? That's a, that's a Bifrost hand, right? Yeah, I assume that's Bifrost. Yeah. Um, yeah, what a... What a moment. And yeah, Mamiya trying to pull him back a bit. And like, what are you supposed to make of it at that point? It's like, well, what made you kill him there? It's like, it was your rage. Something that I'm trying to get a handle on. Mm. Hey, a little help? At least the rescue's going well. Mm. Ow, ow! Eat it! To me! Follow! We, uh, got company back here. Oh, that, that running sequence is awesome. It's a, it's a, no. feels really dynamic, this one, for a story. Yeah, it's pretty fun as well. Archers ahead! Go! Oh, seriously? Long. I got the impression myself, when, uh, especially when rewatching it, that uh, this was like Kratos 
understands that a portion of the job on the other end is done while he was dealing with Heimdall. And he was just mm -hmm. kind of like, when, when it's like, oh, you know, we need to defend you for longer. Maybe we can help you out slowly. He was just like, fuck, we're getting him out, okay? We're doing this, fuck this. And like yelling while doing it. Like, uh, I think what all he's thinking about right now is having killed Heimdall. And yes, uh, he's just trying absolutely. to do other things. Um, doing them well, too, but yeah, just got a lot on his mind right now. Freya's boat. They will regroup. We should go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is bad. Hang on! <laughs> you should have seen your faces. <laughs> Relax. It's flying! We're flying! No, like, I weren't they on a flying that. boat in Helheim in the previous game? Like, why is Atreus impressed by this? I don't know. Not every boat. I, like, most boats don't I fly. Feel like <laughs> still, I feel like the second yeah. time I'd be pretty impressed. I love the idea that, like, Rags has been on one flying boat, so he's like, I don't fuck care anymore. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <Not laughs> this. Ruined it all. I, I mean, like, this is also a boat that, like, uh, not for nothing, it was a piece of paper a couple yeah. minutes ago. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, I think, okay, it flies, sure. Just like the one in Helheim. <laughs> I get it. I like the idea I mean, you're with them. Like, isn't the fact that it's paper more interesting than the flying? <laughs> like, come on, guys. Well, I mean, I think that, like, once, if you didn't ask a question about the paper, why are you impressed by the flying? I think the flying is neat, as well as the paperiness. And you know what? Kratos always appreciates flying. Every fucking god he fights can fly, but he can't, okay? He ripped <laughs> off a Sounds man's fair. wings. A thousand or so years ago to try and fly, yeah. but then he lost those too. They're kind of shitty wings. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of part of the. They were really though. weird, the Icarus wings, because they regenerate, right? Like he would. Do you remember in yeah. that game when you fly too long, they fall apart? Like kind of yeah. in reference to what mm -hmm. they are, but at the same time, they come back instantly. So it's like, how's what's going on there? <laughs> like kind of magical, I have infinitely uh, repeating Icarus wings. Yeah, it's almost it's like the bargain bin wings. Like they will keep they will fall apart instantly. Oh, but they regenerate. You're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so you can fly for for like three seconds. Wait, why isn't it playing? Oh, there we go. Oh no. We have guests! <laughs> There's another one! I knew this was going too smoothly. Uh, little help? Uh, uh, they're too fast! Look out!
Well, so that was a pretty neat move. It was pretty epic. Um, yeah. the, the... I could have used a little more development from Beer Gear before that. Well, that's that's the common thing people say about this. It's like, <laughs> was I supposed to care? It's like, well... I mean, it occupies a very small amount of time, and uh, you can mm -hmm. find out more about him both before and after this if you want to. Uh, the information is available, but... I don't know, like, the thing of, like, why would I care about this guy? I'd just be like, I don't know that you have to care that much. It occupies a very small amount of time. Like, it's, 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 a. Uh, they were in trouble I, and I he helped them out. The issue in presentation is the preamble the sacrifice had. Like, he, he was speaking for quite some time. Now, granted, I'm not an expert in the mythology, so I don't know if this guy was, like, famous for having a poem that he says before he dies. But, you know. It, I wonder if I, it's, I, um... If it's just as simple as like showing the the nature of like the casualties of war, right? It's yeah. just like there's this guy and he did this heroic thing, and now this is just a quiet moment of contemplation about that, about the cost of uh, this battle. Yeah, I don't sort of I, like I, a, I do, sort of like a prelude to what's to come, right? I do wonder about that sort of thing. Like, isn't there value in sometimes actually not being as familiar when there's a sacrifice of some kind, just because? Like, you know, Kratos has no idea who the guy is, but you can see that he appreciates it as well. Like, um, it, it enabled them to complete the mission, right? Where maybe something else would have happened. But, um, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to think. Like, would I have preferred it if maybe he got a few extra bits of lines in other cutscenes? People want me to address, yeah, he's not dead. Um, yeah, he's not dead. It doesn't really change. Oh, really? No, you yeah. can go find him, he's alive. Um, Man, he's like the 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 reverse MCU Heimdall. I, I, I have no <laughs> idea who he's dead. Um, he's like that dude that dies in Kenobi. Okay, so that's actually an interesting way to compare, right? What was his name? Todd or something? Luke? No, not Luke. Wade. Wade. Wade that's it. Um, Wade. Yeah. Wade. That, that, why is it that the the Wade thing is so funny? It's like maybe that's because it's couched inside this horrendously stupid TV show. <laughs> yeah, like was, we have no reason to be charitable to Obi Wan at that point. Um, but at least the death of this guy means something to all of these people that we are very familiar with. While it mm -hmm. was a lady in in Obi Wan that was sad about that, and I don't think we'd seen her before either, right? Or at least we'd only seen them both one scene prior, where they had like a line each or something. How could you forget Wade? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, Wade had we we learned so much about Wade. We might have more lines for the for beer gear in the boat than Wade ever got. <laughs> I know that it, you can, it might actually in be the, comparable in the camp. You can uh, talk to beer gear and uh, you can find out his mm -hmm. basic story before this happens. Uh, he was uh, he was a traveler. He went off the path. And that he Freya is the one that found him and had him join this group. So you know, yeah. it's it's and something. In the, in the uh, section it opens up after all of this, I think that's when the the big part of Vanaheim opens, right? Yeah, that's uh, you can there's like a bunch of travelers around that you can kill, and you get like little tidbits of notes that he's been writing them. It's like, hey, Odin is fucking with us. Like, don't he's trying do to this save them. Thing. Yeah, there's just, there's only a path and no destination. It's just gonna be killing forever until Odin doesn't need us anymore. So yeah, um, I think what throws people off is the fact that he got the big focus before the sacrifice, as opposed to maybe we just add it from Kratos' POV for like the whole thing, and then Guy jumps off and saves them. Maybe that would make more sense with the whole like. You know, war, it has them casualties. I think a lot of people are like, wait, was I supposed to know who that guy was? And uh, I don't necessarily blame him for that. Yeah, because yeah. uh, like, the prayer he says has, like, it, it implies narrative weight. And it's like, well, hold on. Did I did I miss a side quest line where this guy does something really, really important? But, uh, yeah, it was still a pretty cool moment, though. You really think that's the end of Birger? You think he survived that? He's down there picking the dirt out of his nails with the beast's feathers. You'll see. He... Uh, he has to be. We're almost there, Ingvi. Just hold on a bit longer. I don't suppose I have much of a choice at the moment. 
Freya exists in the game as a plot device for Freya to have a second character arc. That is dangerously close to fridging talk, my dude. He's a character. I played without subtitles on, and it was sometimes <clears throat> really hard to tell which one they were talking about at any given time. Oh, it will be tough with me as well, because I, I try to make a difference in how I'm saying it, but uh, Freyur has plenty going on that you can find in the game, as well as obviously the overt cutscenes mm -hmm. and stuff, and what he means as a person, what his history is. Like, the idea that he only exists to make something happen for another character, I'd be like, you can eventually broadly reduce everything that way. Atreus only exists to have Kratos go on certain journeys and have certain payoffs. Oh. It's same yeah, like for... how reductive do you want to be? Yeah, like I I like Freya. I think we've seen enough of him at this point to say that. He's um he's uh he comes across a little more to me with the um, the modern sort of talking than a lot of other characters, though I will still say that I feel like it's it's a part of everybody at this point. Um comes across as a really chill dude. Just uh, guys, mm -hmm. just trying to, and and from what we know, right, the he's not a particularly responsible leader. He's not even a fantastic leader. I can't remember. If, I think the scene's coming up actually, where you get a little bit more insight to what he's up to. But yeah, we'll um, we'll talk a bit about it when when we go further. Freya lacks agency. That's um, I think that is actually true. That's part of his characterization. He's not as much of a um, he's not as much as a leader. Lunda! Lunda, we need cloth and boiling water. Red root and lamb's grass. I know, I know. You think I never staunch a bleeder before? Oh, now don't I need you to find me a boss. red flower with blue I didn't thorns. I any of your stuff while you was off being tortured. There was a blue flower with red thorns. Uh, I can't remember. It's been so long. Well, whichever one of us is right is the true Shrek fan. That decide. It was blue flower, red thorns. It definitely was. Oh man, I thought you were talking. Is that about the one I said? I can't remember. And prey. I was like, oh man, the hyperthermia flowers. Blue flower with red thorns. Yeah, who was correct? I can't remember which one of us said which one. <laughs> I can't even remember. Yeah, I can't <laughs> remember which one I even said. Uh, well, well, I definitely said the correct one. Let's use the time machine that is scrolling back by like thirty seconds. I see, you know, Muller is correct, Rags is always right, so, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we were the both C right? is always right. Maybe it was two flowers, who knows? Hmm. Color is subjective. Muller wins. Alright, no, Rags, you were wrong, you said red flower with Aha! blue thorns. I said yeah. red flower with blue thorns, but it's blue flower That's with true. red thorns. That's right, yeah, so you got it wrong. Also, direct pressure is going to staunch a bleed a lot faster than any flower will. Tell it's you magic, now. you fuck. The flower <laughs> wasn't supposed to help with the wound. It was supposed to get donkey away. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you even oh, see the movie? Okay. God, pay well, attention. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen Shrek. I was talking about Yeah, me too. Uh, Somebody. <laughs> body. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> oh, body. Easy. Heck, you say it's a made for. I was talking about Lunda's like flowers. <laughs> you. No. Freya, mind giving her a hand? We're just taking over entirely? Hold still. She'll just get you stable so I can take you to Sindri's house. The rest of my herbs are there. We'll protect the realm in your absence. The four of us. Vanaheim's in good hands. Party at Sindri's house, then. Huh? Wherever that is. Your boat. Nope. Your boat. Go on, take it. Sail the skies, sun yourself on its bow. You look like you could use it. <laughs> Make a Vanir god proud. He gave you his boat? Nice. He left me no choice. Because it was necessary, not because it was written. Really like Atreus reinforcing that right after he shows him. It's good stuff. Um, he's, he's supporting him as well because yeah, he Atreus will know better than most people that that's not making Kratos comfortable. 
that he's killed Heimdall. That's like mm -hmm. we're getting real close to fulfilling all of the fucking prophecies. It's like, uh, yeah, you still did that because you made that decision. It was an important one to make. It's got nothing to do with you lacking any control over yourself. Very true. I read something in Odin's library Music. about what Galahorn is supposed yes. to do. <laughs> if blown by a god, yeah. it sounds through all the realms and harmonizes the space between them. Blow it somewhere like Tyr's temple, and it would be like opening up all the realm travel towers at once. It's quite a vulnerability. Wonder why he didn't just destroy it. Some artifacts defy destruction. Well, we should make Freya aware of this. Oh, you're back. The heroes of the hour. <laughs> I want to hear everything. I mean, when you're ready, I'm not giving orders here, am I? Try to rest, Ingvi. Let the herbs work. Oh, they work? Oh, they they work very well. Cause Hi. you make things better. Oh, it's full. You always have. Since since we were kids. I find a new way to get into trouble. And you find a way to make it better. Well, that's certainly true. Do you know... <clears throat> do you know we used to lead Vanaheim? Together? When we were young? Not much older than you, to be honest. Well, you know, she did the leading. I just... tried to keep things fun. <laughs> Leadership. Not really my strong suit, let's be honest. <laughs> really? Your group back in Vanaheim seems pretty devoted. Well... I can inspire people, I guess. Eh, you get them to see the best in themselves, you know? I don't know if that's leadership. Is it more like, um... Like a muse? Wait... Like... Like a what? A muse. Father told you me You like the that. little rodents? Oh, okay, in I was... Homeland, <laughs> they inspired all kinds of artists. What? That's a job? Well, why don't we have that? <laughs> why oh, don't you man. have that? I could totally do that. I think they were all goddesses, though. Well, come on. That's not fair. That's not fair. I I would be a natural. Oh. What were we talking about? Ingvi, you must rest. You understand? You must. Please, just stop talking. Okay, I'm sorry. But someone was gonna fill us in on what happened with Heimdall, right? Is that what's happening? Patience. Heimdall is dead. Good. It kind of makes me wish is I it? did more of the interstitials at uh, Sindri's house. I, I didn't I, like that's the first time I had seen that dialogue. That was yeah, there's good. there's so much oh. you can miss in this game that um, oh yeah, they just don't mind if you miss it or not. They they, they dude the side mission content like we said is thing. Mm. So uh, oh yeah, the, the whole crater area is huge. But um, I yeah, just I like, the scene we just time. saw. Like, what does it do? It's like well, it's showed you the. Uh, Freya and Freya care about each other immensely. That they go back a hell of a long way. That they were a team with uh, managing Vanaheim, right? Like as much as you might be mistaken in thinking, oh well, Freya did everything because she's the leader. It's like it, they keep making reference to how it was Freya that um kind of like gives everyone the part that seemingly can be missing from Freya, which is like the the fun or the uh engagement of like binding people beyond just leadership it seems like they're two halves of a whole to some degree for a uh leadership in totality and i just uh if you find his journal i haven't got it in there so you can read that he's uh he's super insecure about the fact that he just doesn't believe he should be in any kind of power mm -hmm. um the guy uh, he just he just he, she says it i think one of the first things when we meet her that um he tends to try and move responsibilities off to other people um but yeah, I don't know. It's just good to keep in mind for things that are going to happen. Look, I don't... But if he was going to hurt your boy, it's... if he was going to hurt your boy, it's a good thing he ain't around no more. The Norns didn't quite see it that way. 
The opinion of them three shut-in spinsters ain't worth a goat fart in a hurricane. You did what you <laughs> did. No need to fret about it. That, to me, is evidence once again. Brock is like, Kratos probably isn't feeling that's too cool. happy about what's happened. Because yeah. he's pretty familiar with everything that's going on. So <clears throat> it's his way of being like, you're fine. You did the right thing. Yeah. yeah. You're fine. Don't worry about it. It's a good thing he's not around, you know? And then <laughs> being told there's an opinion differs with other people. He just shits on them immediately. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck what they think. What now? The riddle. What gets bigger the more you take away? Love. What kind of chub buffling relationships you been in? Any sense? <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Oh, fun. I won't be lectured on the nature of a romance by the two of you duffers. Oh, duffers? Yes. Bigger the more you take away. I, oh. I think that was great that he's like proud of himself for getting an answer and the both of them are like, the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Fuck? <laughs> That's your perspective. Even Brock and Kratos are both like, damn, dude. <laughs> hey, you think sin Enough. Look at that. <laughs> you really did it. How, in all the nine realms, did you manage to kill Heimdall? I knew our spear would do the trick. Well, happy Ragnarok, happy everybody! Happy Ragnarok! <laughs> Let's drink. Let's drink. Let's drink. Is it true? Heimdall's dead. I can't believe it. There's no stopping it now. Odin swore peace only so long as you spilled no more Aesir blood. I refused that deal. Yet he honored it. But now... <laughs> I mean, that's worth pausing on. That's a really strange line. That is a really strange line, yeah. You're trying to think of, like... Is he bringing this up because he's still mad about the whole... Starting wars, doing violence and stuff, but... That seems a little bit... Tertiary to that. Like, who cares if... I thought we were all on the same team that Odin's a piece of shit that lies and does everything he can. It's like, why are you saying, oh yeah, but he honored the deal? What's the what's the angle there, bud? Yeah. Dang but what? It. I know better than anyone that Odin's promises never last. We have the advantage now. It's time to bring him down. No. None of you understand what's coming. Odin's vengeance will be his only concern. Not his only concern. The mask. Whatever knowledge it unlocks, that's what Odin wants more than anything. If I go back to Asgard, go I can't. Use... Go back. Look. If I can finish what I started there, awaken the mask, get answers, maybe that's our way out of this. But I gotta go soon. Before they figure out what's happened. Trace, you are home. Do not ask me to put you at risk again. He's at risk where he stands, Kratos. We all are. Anything mm. we do or don't do is dangerous right now. But Odin needs me. He trusts me. I'll be safe there. From a tactical perspective, am I wrong? I don't much like it, but it is our best play. Dividing Odin's focus would buy us time. And give us a pair of eyes in the enemy's inner sanctum. But if there is truly a source of infinite knowledge, you can't let Odin have it. Aye. And once he has what he needs from you... Then I lose my leverage. I get it. I'll be smart. Father. I can do this. Remember our promise. You too. You know what you're doing. 
I do too, Sam. Well, I still want to hear how you did it. You mean how we did it? Ah, uh, you hurt me. And then <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> oh no, I'm so sorry. That time on a response to the axe. Yeah, <laughs> and people whose balls have dropped. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a sick bird. When I did that, I was on my street. I got fucking. I was laughing my ass off. I had no idea. <laughs> it's it's so happen. great. It's so great. <laughs> Prince, listen. I can't let you go back without this. A hammer? Your key, please. You ever need a way out of a bad situation? Throw this down hard and say, where, Guy? One use only. Wergi. Thanks, Indri. <laughs> Hope I don't need it. Me too. Hmm. All right. Odin. I mean, says it and uses it immediately. The the one angle for like you know some people say like why wouldn't you have given them these things before? It's like I think this. I don't know that it's as applicable in terms of like when you're just doing average realm travel. Like I don't know that it's necessarily something but like right now he's he's actively because remember the first time he went to asgard was a surprise to everybody but this time he's yeah. going there deliberately and it might have been something that he crafted semi-recently i think um but i don't know that you'd necessarily need something like that all the time um just for specifically going to asgard i think is the idea because it's uh, yeah because they, ba they basically said hey as soon as he has what uh, <coughs> as soon as odin gets the mask fully, you use the leverage, and there's a big chance he's just gonna murder you right away after he has what he needs. But I wouldn't want to un undermine the idea that it probably would be neat to always have one of them, maybe. Um, you know, because there could be times where you accidentally bump into some horrifying monster somewhere, or you whatever at some point. Mm -hmm, but, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, the fact he's prompted by him going to Asgard is why he's giving it to him now, which makes sense to me, at least on that end. Yeah. Said, Bugen. Mimir, anything else I should know about Odin? Maybe a weakness or something? Like if I flip up his eye patch, he'll disintegrate. Hi, <laughs> lad. Wouldn't that be? Yeah, no. Sorry, Mimir. I can't do your accent. I'm on my own for this one. It sounded just like it would if. That actor was trying to do that impersonation, though, just as bad <laughs> as I was expecting. I was like, yeah, that sounds yeah. about right, yeah. It's Becky. It's Fauna. Good girls. Is Fenrir around, too? I haven't seen him. I wanted to let you both know that I might not be around for a while. I know you're going to be fine, but don't worry if I'm not back. <laughs> it's okay. No. Really. It's okay. It'll be okay. I love you too. It's um, an interesting line that's easy to miss. It's basically yeah. him telling the wolves that he believes he's likely to die doing what he's doing. Exactly. Saying mm -hmm. goodbye to the, to the doggies. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you can tell by the way it's, uh, the line is delivered. Feels like a yeah. Um, that might be a one-way trip right here, and I'm um, I, I think convicted to do so. I'd likely argue ninety-eight percent of people would miss that line because this is no reason. I missed to go that on my there. first playthrough. I only saw it on my second playthrough. Oh, I only remembered to go and grab it because you told me about it. Oh, like, oh yeah. yeah. I should probably go over there. Well, there you go. <laughs> Ben? Huh? You made it back! <laughs> hey. This is your wolf? Ah! Stop doing that. <laughs> oh, were you having a moment? It sort of looked like you were having a moment. I can go. No. Sorry. This is Fenrir. <laughs> it's okay, Ben. She's, uh... <laughs> Oh, I was right about your knife. Huh? I'm glad you found a place for his soul. <laughs> Better than some random snake. Me too. Yeah, hey, uh, Well, you would you rather be a giant wolf or a giant snake? I guess giant wolf, right? Giant wolf, wolf for sure. 
I don't know. Mm -hmm. Giant Snake's cool. Well, I'm disappointed in you. I'm disappointed <laughs> in you. Why would you think I wouldn't choose the long option? True. Oh, Both pretty long. Loki? This is my marble. And where are you heading off to? I'd lost my marble. Back to Asgard. <laughs> I dropped my balls, hey, now I can hit the shine. She just handed his balls back to him, it's uh -huh. so woke. <laughs> Why? Well then she wouldn't be having them back, right? Look. Oh, yeah. Once I see look this through, I'm bad at have, detecting these I'm things. I'm gonna know <laughs> I have the balls everything. Now. How to save my father, how to stop Ragnarok, and maybe, hopefully, how to bring our people back. Loki, those are all very noble. Intentions, but he's Odin. You have faith in me, right? Of course I do. I just hope the story you're writing for yourself is the one that you truly want. Would you, would you take care of Finn while I'm away? I'll take good care of him. Be careful, Loki. to defend themselves doesn't mean they're guilty. I mean, what kind of messed up logic is that? Yeah, mom. Yeah. <laughs> dead. Suddenly this boy, who you won't stop hanging around, is nowhere to be seen. <clears throat> He's literally working with grandfather. Oh, well, that puts me so much more at ease. What I'm saying is that maybe you wouldn't feel so weird about it if you said more than a cold hello to him. Forsetti's investigating. So the truth will come out soon enough. I hope it does. You'd better go. <laughs> you better <Okay>. go. <laughs> oh, I just left that in because you moved me. Harness it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Heimdall's dead. Happen to know something about that? Anything? No. Well, I mean, everyone hated them. Sure, sure. But have you seen anything? Something noteworthy? I just really like that. Like, everyone just fucking hates that guy. He's like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah but anyway, <laughs> that was really what I was talking about. I mean, you know, he did sock through pretty hard while we were out. Maybe someone found out? Got even? I, I don't know. Are you suggesting my son had something to do with this? I don't know. Honest. Well, I have to ask. It's reassuring because their mind reader is dead. So you can't tell yeah. I'm lying anymore. Never believed you had anything to do with this. I'm glad you're back. So I figured out what went wrong. I mistranslated a word here. Did you know? I thought it said beyond the cry of cold breath. That delivery really it's, comes across as like, oh, you misread it. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, <does>. Okay. <laughs> but it actually reads the cry of first breath. Well, that's somewhere else entirely. I know where that is. Young man, you've done it again. Go. Take the mask. Take the sword. Take the bird. Find Thor. We're going to Niflheim. It's D2. Uh, hi, Sif. Do you know where I can find Thor? 
All Father is sending us on another mission. Why would I tell you where to find anyone I cared about? Look, yeah, fair. it's fine if you don't like me or trust me or whatever. But I want you to know that you're hurting her. Excuse me? Through it's gonna be a Valkyrie one way or another. You know that. If you don't stand with her, you're gonna lose her. You may be working with All Father and enjoying his little bubble of protection. But stay out of my family's business. Enjoy your freedom while hey, you still have it. Loki. Rude. Sorry. Um. It's a pretty ballsy move for Atreus, you know. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Good on you, I guess. And you got the response I would expect. <laughs> like, are you yeah. serious? It's like I won't tell you where my husband is. Yeah. Well, you're a bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But now your stock is uh, you. <laughs> it's falling apart there, Atreus. Just saying. Um, Power I'll move. Head to Niflheim with your dad. I haven't seen him around, and I was. Wondering if you had any idea where he could be. He wasn't with grandfather? No. I think I know where he might be. Follow me. I, uh, also wanted to talk to you about Heimdall. Don't. Not here. You're right. Later. Back in Helheim, I told you I'd help your mom understand how much becoming a Valkyrie meant to you. I wanted to, uh, let you know that I meant it. You didn't. And you're still alive? I did think she was going to choke me with her hair. I'm honestly surprised she didn't. Thanks, Loki. Weapons aren't allowed inside. We'll have to check them. Why? Just do it. Come on. This way. Oh. Come on. They're not going to let you in otherwise. Through. I'm... It's fine. Hey, Thor. Seems like it... I kind of like, you can see Mjolnir's there. It's like, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get him to drop yeah. Mjolnir. <laughs> That's not happening. He's probably the one guy who's allowed to take his weapon in. Might be a Absolutely. bad time, so... If you need a moment, I totally understand. No rush, but... Uh... Right where I thought you'd be. You shouldn't be here. You... You shouldn't have brought her here. What are you doing? Relaxing. Did I say no rush? I meant we should get going, right? We don't want to keep the Allfather- QUIET! He's right. You should get going. <sighs> Dad? Don't do this. It's already done. Let it be known, the God of Thunder is good for two things. Killing giants, and pissing me! Any man who disagrees will greet Mjolnir with its face. I feel like a lot has happened, so we we'll probably talk a little yeah. bit about it. Um, there's several references throughout the game already that he wasn't drinking, clearly. He is drinking, yes. and a lot. Uh, after yep. a lot of the things we've seen, He's not dealing well with all the pressures of uh, his life right now. And it's obviously to the massive disappointment of his daughter. Mm -hmm. And likely of his wife as well, because she was hoping he would uh, finally make a difference and, as you said, stand up to your father. Uh, mm -hmm. Like he's not <clears throat> quite able to do it. Neither was he in the scene we saw him with Odin. Um, and something else that's happening, I'm assuming everyone else has noticed as well, it's just that... Whenever she manages to get some level of eye contact, he avoids quite a, quite yeah. hard. He does not want to look at her. Also, get a lot, get get basically the the reaction of him when he's drunk. It's like, and everybody who doesn't agree with me is gonna well basically get killed, which we have heard about from different stories from this and the game before this. How Almost Thor was um, just kind of <clears throat> a rampaging lunatic. Almost every story Mamiya tells ends with Thor killing a giant or Odin yes. betraying someone. And like they even, I think, comment on that. It's like, damn, all these stories I seem to end that way. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Now you see why. 
get fucked up drunk and I don't know, someone looked funny at him and then he goes like, you're done so. Oh, Meryl, you're so cool. <laughs> yeah. This isn't you. Thor. <clears throat> Hugin is waiting outside. Please, let's just... I said, quiet, boy. So I want to pause here because I don't know if you noticed oh. in the scene. Uh, the first thing Atreus tries is completely ignored. Second thing yep. he tries, he goes, quiet. And the uh, third thing he tries is, I said quiet, and then he says, boy. How dare he. Fucking <laughs> no one is allowed to call him boy except Kratos, okay? Except Daddy-O. My name is... I love how everyone who sees this is like, bar fight. <laughs> like that's, bar fight. <laughs> that's, that's how they... Hijinks shall now ensue. Yes, that's how they all start. Prepare thyself. They, they were waiting uh, for that. I was immediately on board. I was like, yeah. What? Dude. No! Let's do I, the Thor oh, bar. come on! No, 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 I swear that really wasn't... <laughs> uh, that's enough! Love the music in the bottom as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, he looks great. Is that, oh, yeah. is that a is that a specific track or is that a, 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 a theme? Oh, I don't uh, I don't know the name if it's got one. I'm, okay, I'm not okay. even sure if this is in the soundtrack, uh, the released one. Thinking too much. <laughs> Couple of things getting achieved there for specific reasons. I don't know if you saw it, but just to the left there was uh, Mjolnir and Ingrid are fighting Ingrid, each other. Yeah. And yep. holding its own, the sword. So I think there's an assumption sometimes that Mjolnir is just, you know, unbeatable, but we got the the axe, of course, and this sword seems pretty special as well. Uh mm -hmm. that'll be relevant. Um and then of course this being uh a fair question to ask, because like you are in a bar. And we have been sort of beating people up. It's like, I'm going to start shooting them at this point. It's like, is Odin going to be pissed? I'm just killing Eidherjar, like, in Asgard. Solving like, for the Man of Steel equation. It's, it's, well, it's, <laughs> it, it is trying to be like, I mean, we can't just have an action scene wherever we are. We have to actually, like, contextualize it. Oh, <laughs> What if you started again? Right now, just put down the... Grab his arms. Let's get him out of here. Yes, he good fight. Good fight. I'm sorry you had to see him like this. No, no. It's fine. Really. Hey, I'm strong, but you gotta help me out here. Yeah, Treyas. 
carry a load. Wow. Yeah. Come on, it's not that far. That uh, that wound Kratos gave him hasn't fully healed as well. So when people often nope try to point out as well. So that non-immunity for gods, you know, it's just enough pressure in the right places and you can kill them. Very good scene coming up again. Thor? Get up. You are going to Niflheim with Loki. All father's orders. You have to get up. I know you're disappointed. Disappointed? No, 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 no. That was a glorious fight. You can't even say you're sorry this time, can you? Because what's one more broken promise? Grandfather treated you like crap. You were struggling. I get it. But you can't just... <sighs> we're here for you. Mom and I are here for you. Even when you're here. We love you. You know that. I just thought this was behind us. I fucked up. Yeah, you fucked up. Probably the only person who can speak to him like that. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, it's such a, like... Um, you, you, you go through this game being like, so Thor is the hammer of Odin. That's, what's, that's the idea, and I'm going to have to beat him because he's a big old thug. And you get very little time of him compared to many characters, and they've built an entire character who's having extreme difficulties, and you almost better understand him than characters you get entire movies. Like, I know him better than I know fucking, what's her name, the new Black Panther. Like, uh, she was confusing sure. as hell in the new one, sure, yeah. And then you combine it with, like, two movies worth where one of them, she's the protagonist, compared to a guy who's almost unable to be called supporting character or secondary character. That's how categorizing all the characters according to their, like, I guess screen time would be. Like, is, is Thor... Mm -hmm. You know, really think about it. We've got like a handful of scenes to work with, but uh, th this this hits people hard. A lot of people have seen lots of comments about it. It's uh, a lot of families go through stuff like this, and so yep, ha and having all of the context that makes him a monster when reading what's what he's done, but then seeing a lot of this stuff makes it a lot harder to hate him. Um, makes you understand a lot of what is going on. Um. And yeah, just the uh, the look in his face, the look in hers, um, not uncommon for him. And it's likely what led to what happened with Magni and Modi. It's, um, they don't want to be having, having that happen again. Yep. It's, uh, it's a lot, it's rough, and at this point you start to wonder, like, what uh, what do you want to happen to Thor? What, what is going to be yeah. next for him? Is, uh, you know, you, you go into the game being like, man, I can't wait to just have Thor and Kratos fight. When Kratos goes to whatever pantheon, you look for the strongest of the gods in that pantheon. Like, I want Kratos to fight him. I want to see that fight, yeah. <clears throat> and then you're like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. man. Jeez. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of an interesting parallel, too, right? Because a lot of people are very critical of Kratos from what they have read. But like it doesn't cover as much of what he suffered. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I, li I like the 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 way Throod 
like reacts like it starts with like being pissed off but that's like oh that's not gonna do anything so just gonna reinforce like hey we're here for you like me and mom like we we need you here so yeah. you can't even say sorry like what is one broken promise because that has happened before lots of times before we were even here well so... i think uh i think a lot of people won't it pointed out as well there's no no character in this scene is saying your veins are full of cheese whiz. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, taking it seriously. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and so it's it's kind of like they did this on purpose or something to help us out that we can say like, yeah, fat Thor. It's a little bit more complicated than it being ruined by him being overweight. That's not really the yeah, not really the problem. <laughs> there are ways to go about it, but one of the main ones was take it seriously for fuck's sake. Pretty much. Can I get you a water or something? Fine. You again? Let's make this quick. You in a hurry to get back to Asgard? Just get us to that mask piece. Oh, and that is, someone just said, like, didn't he just call it by not doing the, the flicks? Like, he did, but do you see how ina inaccurate it was? Like, um... Yeah. <laughs> I think the finger flick is supposed to be when it goes to, like, he, he has complete control over it. He always seems to grab it every time he does that, but he can call it with, uh, without having to do that. Ingrid, I wish you could smell these. Was it worth it? No, smell these good. Yeah, it's weird. Everyone keeps calling Hugen. It was two birds. What's with just yeah. where's the other one? What's going on? Racism. Busy. Haven't worked Fine. for Odin. But I hope you know we're truly like that bitch. Through Through looks up to you. I hope you know that. Don't need a lecture about parenting from you. Just find it. Looks like we gotta head through that wall. Do you Something wanna I need to do first? <laughs> That's all I need to do first. <laughs> Take your time. Even gods. <laughs> no, we can go. <laughs> I like that the delivery fucking delivery is perfect. I love all the delivery. There, buddy. So no, we, we can, can go. go. I was there, so Key, you really keep trying to. I don't even know what you're trying to do anymore, but you have no idea the kind of shit I've been through. Right. Have giant son of a powerful god with impossibly high expectations. How could I ever know what that's like? Okay, I just want to add one more thing. If you can't be yourself, you also might not feel like you can follow your own path. That doesn't sound familiar to you at all. So we've got. Um, I assume Errol. with that, he's gunning for a uh, throod, right? Like, especially with what we've overheard what Thor is figuring out about his own daughter in terms of how better to, uh, I guess, help her is to encourage her. And that, like, Atreus is kind of, like, pointing out, it's like, hey, man, you kind of need that, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, the, 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 I, I don't know if that was a bit jolted there, but, like, yeah, he, the, the Thor goes, hmm. Just life experience, what does it matter? Seems stupid to gripe about the things we can't change. Who says we can't? Damn it! Ancient! Again with the griping. Calling out a problem isn't griping. It's healthy. It's your fault. I don't know if it just happened to be that way, but the way he walks past with the ancient is like <laughs> preparing its <laughs> laser, and his Thor's just like, uh. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Bet you're glad I'm helping so much this time around. You're welcome. I love Hellwalkers, you just blast them apart. Poof. Poof. Problem solved. Don't have to think, don't have to feel. What are you going- Um, I mean, you know, that one's pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah. rough as to- <laughs> Yeah, also, uh, just, uh, I saw this mentioned by a couple people. 
Thor is just like this. It's kind of cool to have a companion that actually deals shit tons of death. He can take on everyone mm -hmm. you fight as Atreus for you if you want. He'll just do it all. Yeah. He's, uh, he actually, he's not just superfluous, right? Like, it's just, it's kind of fun when they do that. I think if you take someone, he just straight up one hit kills the ancient or something. Yeah, as soon as you get the ancient down to a certain amount of health, he just kills it. Oh, okay, okay. Blast them apart. Poof. Problem solved. A lot of his dialogue is about how he hates thinking. What are you going to say when you see them again? Sif and through it, I mean. If all fun is pleased, it doesn't matter. Look, I don't need you to solve my family problems for me. Just find the mask. Let's get out of here. You're enjoying the freedom? Out here without Fabio looking over your shoulder. I, uh, well, yeah, I guess. It's different from what I'm used to. In a good way. Looks like we gotta get up that cliff. Try thinking. No thinking. Oh, thinking. It's better when I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> Thor, I um hope everything goes okay when you see Sip and Thor again. Well, hoping's better than thinking. Music. Oh, music. Old music showcase. Oh, so again, this uh, like this section in particular, kind of a uh, sort of venerates the choice of having these Atreus sections because it's just insights that would be really hard to facilitate otherwise. Yeah. Because I mean, without it, Thor's still really great, but with it, it just uh, adds so much more to that character. Yeah, because he, he wouldn't tell those things to. Kratos or no, you Freya never get to whatever. see. You never no get way. to see those family dynamics, which is super important in terms of uh, characterizing him. It's like really integral. And he's chipping away at Thor. Um, he is. You can tell. Yeah, he's getting a little bit uh, more receptive to Trace the things that he's is, saying. Uh, sort of emotionally intelligent, right? Like appealing to. If you remember when they first started talking, right, uh, uh, Atreus to try and gain some ground, reference to how his giants you know, ancestors or family to a degree were killed by Thor and Thor bit back harder than he could have expected. So he just backed off of that and he's been trying mm -hmm. other things and he's appealed to his daughter quite a bit and uh, referencing her stuff and it's like, it's working way better. And uh, it's cool as well because Odin said, be nice to Thor, see what happens. Atreus is being nice to Thor and it's kind of working. Yep. Gotcha. Phew, that was close. Um, thanks, Thor. Wasn't about to lose that man. Loki, you did it. We are on the verge of great things, all of our work together. You're welcome. Oh. I'm sorry. You are it's here. Batman. Why? His I... <laughs> <laughs> I love his performance. You are here. Why? Because, like, the thing is, yeah. he couldn't give less of a fuck about whatever news they have. This is this <laughs> perfectly accentuates Odin's character. You might be like, well, what if I had the information on who killed Heimdall? He's like, literally don't give a shit. Yeah, like, I, I had it could have been... <laughs> It could have been me. I don't even care. Like, I, <laughs> the mask has just been formed. Like, it's it's the it's the key to all knowledge. There's nothing you could tell me that'll change that. And yep. what she has is pretty important information. But watch him. He just does not care about it. His father, I'm though. For said he has proof. Take him. No, leave nope. him alone. I command it. You said no more Aesir blood would be spilled. You said family comes first. You don't think that this is retribution for him being here? He's put your granddaughter in danger. He's made your son miserable. Loki didn't kill Heimdall. His father did. Your daughter is old enough to make her own mistakes. And your husband started drinking again all on his own. Dismissed! I might have subtly nudged him a couple times. He's so great, though. Like, the <laughs> fucker just controlled the shit out of this room, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she brought up a lot, and he counted all of it. <laughs> like he just, yeah. and like uh, as he's speaking as well, she's she's like losing her posture a little bit. Like, uh oh, like, this mm -hmm. is not whoopsie. Because uh, she, I think she thought she had a pretty good argument. But the thing is, he's always going to recontextualize everything according to what benefits him most. Because yep. he's not necessarily wrong about everything he just said. Neither, well, 
the thing is, she is like, things aren't doing great for our team right now. You understand that, right? And he's like, uh, my team is fine. I'm getting the mask. Yeah. Actually, he's I'm like, winning. Like, I have yeah, the mask like, right now. I'm doing you're great. You're interrupting me. Like, what do you, what do you want? Oh, no. Thor's drinking. Whatever. I like him better that way anyway. Fuck off. <laughs> you two. A word. Now he's probably going to be like, you guys work for me. What are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. flying around at her orders? What is this? Can't you see what's happening? He's not protecting us. Magni, Modi, our boys. We used to tell them stories by the fire. Do you remember? We would carve those wooden horses. We would play and laugh until the sun sank and they fell asleep in our laps. They were thrown at the Allfather's problems like brittle knives to a mountain face. And for what? What if Thrut's next? I'm sorry, we're just gonna break it up a bit, because this scene's so fucking good. Um, yeah. The thing a lot of people came away from with this scene was that uh, Sif encouraged Thor to kill Atreus. That is no, not what happened. Wrong. <laughs> not totally happened. wrong. That is very wrong. Very clear who she was encouraging him to take action against yeah. there. It wasn't Atreus. Thor seems to never take up against his father. He just won't do it. Nope. And uh, but he's he's got so much rage right now, and so direct much... it somewhere. Yeah, he's got to he's got to do something. I, I even love the uh, as his face raises back up, you hear the thunder. Um, mm -hmm. Very fucking pissed. And, uh, well, he's gonna direct it at somebody. The key line I think is that a lot of people reference right. They were thrown like brittle knives against a mountain face. It's like if yeah. if you were told that, like who is to blame for this event? It's like you wouldn't blame the mountain. Nope. And so, yeah, uh, pretty straightforward, but yes, he's, he's going to take it out on someone else. You, you kill my son. Sleep in their beds. Turn my father against me, my daughter. I have no idea what's happening. You know, I finally thought of something I can teach you. Hey, you stand down! Seems we better be right. Where do you go? Sindri. Kind of neat. The, um, the, the, him doing that, I think you'd probably, many people would be concerned, like, surely the hammer would have done so. It's like, no, the, the sword got no, it. No, the sword. The sword protected mm -hmm. him. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, we that was set up sort of thing earlier. At least it was shown it was a possibility. And uh, I think that comes through as proof the sword is... Its loyalty almost extends further to Atreus than it does Thor. Um, that's a lot to put on the line. And it also makes it so that the sword is still in Asgard, not uh, able to reach us here. So It's doing a whole bunch of things at once, and it's such a quick, small detail. I, I think it was a really good choice. I could, I could imagine that they had built this in the story, and then they were like, should we show an example of the sword putting up with Mjolnir earlier on? Because it it, I think a lot of people would be like, wait, Mjolnir can be stopped by the sword, you know? <laughs> so, uh, it could be, I don't know. I just, uh, it's, it's, it sounds like something that could have happened to sort of help congealify yeah, all, all of it. But... Of, all kinds of magical weapons out there. Who knows what they can do? And um, before that happened as well, you could hear Odin being like, what the fuck? Yeah, um, stop it. What are you doing? And so you can only imagine what's happening right now. In terms of a conversation. Ugh. Gotta plan an exit. Atreus. <sighs> Glad you're safe, lad. Got out just in time. Pretty sure I burned my bridges in Asgard, though. Wait. Why were you out here? Sindri told us where you would arrive should you find trouble. Oh. Thought you might have been exploring without me. No, lad. Your dad was just concerned. Though, now that you mention it... Mimir, 
Brother, please. It's all so crowded and tense back home. Don't you miss the three of us out finding our own adventures? Putting off the inevitable. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Far, right? Of course he remembers. Right, brother? Of course I remember. <laughs> you can kill oh, yourself in the first game if you do that. <laughs> I know. I haven't. Yeah, I, I never went been. there. That's fun. Yeah, if you go back there, they're I like, did. you know what happens. And he's like, yes, of course. Because there's another. <laughs> there's another line about it with Freya, where it's like, oh, that's one of the other weird things we did when we m met last time, or something along those lines. Neat. Dying in the first game is specifically why I did not go try that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was can't scared. go that way. Back, everybody. You made it. I'll get to here. Do you want to set the table if you're ready to stay? Oh, see? I told you the key would get him home. Because you tapped it with a hammer. Dwarven magic makes no sense. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> out of dog barks. You're back. I can't figure that one out. Are you okay? I'm fine. I just hope unlocking this thing was worth the cost. You have it. What did it show you? I didn't get to use it. They found out about Heimdall. I had to run, but at least Odin can't use it either. But if you didn't get any answers from the mask, all you've done is steal Odin's greatest treasure, just after your father's killed his most loyal ally. None of us are safe, even here. So we have no choice. We find Surtur, sound Galahorn, and bring Odin to justice, now. You'd incinerate every soul in Asgard and call it self-defense? Does he ever suggest plans or just crap on everyone else's? The obvious plan is staring so you in true. the face. Yeah. We don't need Odin to use this. We can slip into Asgard and do it ourselves, right under his nose. We gain the knowledge we need to shatter this prophecy of war once and for all. Except begging your pardon, you don't have a way into Asgard. They got the big horn, don't they? Oh, so you expect horn. to sneak into Asgard, blowing a horn that sounds across all the realms? I expect you to bite my blue butt cheek. <laughs> Please, just think about it. So, um, I'm pretty sure this is what happened on my stream, but I can't remember now, it's been so long. I think mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my aspect here was like, it would, it would be interesting to know what Brock thinks, and you can go walk up to him and ask. I can't remember if I did it on stream or not, though. But, uh, oh, okay. So no. oh, don't look at me to come mastermind <clears throat> these games, but I'll listen soon as you got what you need here. It's just fun in terms of like the interactions they often have. We'd be like, why would the player walk up to Brock now when we're just between <laughs> that? It's like probably to just to see if he has anything to say. And he's like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just appreciate it. This mask, the easy answers that it promises. I know this. Shortcuts always have a price. Atreus, you have carried it. What do you think? I think it's a chance. At worst, we'll have something Odin wants as leverage. At best, if it really gives us all the answers, then we can make our own path. And nobody has to die. Hmm. Grand. Now all we need is a way to Asgard. <laughs> I know I've been a burden to you all. I know you've questioned why you even pulled me out of that hole. I have too. But it's clear now. This is what I'm needed for. This is my purpose. One last time, I will pick up my spear and I will lead us to Asgard. Well, ain't that neat? Yay! Mm, that's good, finally. He's come through. It seems like he understands now. It's not like we've had a huge amount to develop him with, but I mean, that time with the undead people attacked, that's really what got him going on the whole, like, I need to stop taking action, you know? And maybe the death of Heimdall and all the developments are making him think, like, if I don't act, more violence will occur. Seems to make sense. Mm -hmm. Seems that way. Excuse me. But did you, did you catch Freya's reaction in the background there? Uh, no. Keep an eye on him. I will pick up my spear and... I will lead us to Asgard. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally like, what? the fuck? Excuse me, but if you got a way to Asgard, where's that idea been this whole fucking while? What? Not that a fair question, brother. You was held Asgard. 
you would have gotten us all killed. It was a pretty big deal because Kratos mm -hmm. was going mad with panicking about how he yeah. couldn't get to Atreus, and if you had a door to Asgard the whole time, that's uh, that's big potatoes. But apparently, his reason is you know you would have gotten us all killed, which is like, Ugh. all right. And we need to find his destiny. Here it is. It's all led to this. If we can get inside, I'm going after Odin. I will not stop you. We can do both. Spot on, brother. If the mask doesn't give us an out, we'll still have the drop on him. Mm. Works for me. Let's do it then, and quickly, before he sees us coming. He does hate surprises. Slow down, you damn spruce. I still want to hear the details on <laughs> this uh, new way to Asgard you got. Spill it! It's an ancient path. We can't reach it from here. Where then? Let me collect my things and I'll show you. You ain't got no things. And where are you going with that mask, Rock? That belongs to the kid. He earned it. All you done was make passable dirt soup. Rock, it's okay. No, it ain't. This ain't right. All the pieces ain't welding together true. Like, what's with him calling you Loki anyway? You know that ain't his name. Hey! I'm talking to you! You never shut up! Yeah. Run! Hold the face, Holden. Let go of the boy and face me! Tell your brother to throw me the mask and you've got a deal. Stop moving. Freya? If he dies... Now, now. It wasn't part of the plan, but if he dies, we are square for Heimdall. And honestly, you got a bargain. I will kill you. Plan on that. Mm -hmm. So nice spending time with you again. Freya, please. Uh, uh, uh. Can't be in two places at once, Frig. Hey! I don't move, you don't move. Don't do anything you will crack. I regret many things. Killing you will not be one of them. I am in control here. Throw me the map. Now. Save him. You have to. He can't. You can't. Maybe if I go back to the lake. Stop me. I know what you've done. And I forgive you. But you gotta stop. This whole time. So, uh, what do we do now? Now? Now we kill Odin and anyone who gets in our way.
You can't run away from this, Kratos. Odin won't stop until we stop him! We need you here! That's probably well, a place to stop. Um... I, yeah. <laughs> so, what about that, huh? You want to start with, because uh, I figure in order to break down all of that, it's worth yeah. taking it in chunks. So maybe the first and foremost would be Tyr. And yes. the reveal and the recontextualization of all of his scenes prior all to that moment. We will have to wait a little bit to talk about that actually. You reckon? I'm oh, gonna, okay. Well, not not because it's not suitable, because I'm going to put them all in. I'm waiting for a line from ah. the mirror that prompts it. Um, oh, you got okay. some scenes in there in the edit. Yes. No, so nice. we'll talk about that nice. in a sec. All I want to say about that right now is that they. Uh, there's someone that's pointed out by several people, and it's fucking great detail. Uh, whenever they refer to Tyr, He's got an accent above the Y. Yes. But whenever he speaks, there's no accent on his. Yeah. Just a little... <laughs> that kind of attention to detail is fantastic. Little oh, clue. Oh, I didn't, real I didn't, I didn't, I didn't yep. have subtitles on, so I didn't catch that. Oh, wow. That's really I neat. had subtitles on and didn't catch it. <laughs> Nobody did. It's, it's not the kind of it. thing that you're looking for beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of amusing when I'm pretty sure Mimir like explicitly said Odin has tricks up his sleeve we haven't dared to consider. It's like, yeah, that I guess is, not. Is, huh? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I think it wasn't. was after this scene that I was like, Odin is a fucking phenomenal villain now. Like that. Yes. Knowing that he's been here the whole fucking time, going all the way back in, yeah. to scene interactions. one with him, where yeah, he, because... he says, stop looking for Tia, he's dead. It's yeah. like, when he says that, the, the take in that scene is like, well, so then he's alive. Like, why would yeah, you be so... Odin's and it, yeah, it's, Odin's he did liar. it on purpose. He's trying to come across as though he's playing hard to get with Tia in a way that it matters to him that you do not get Tia. Like, I don't want yeah, you to have Tyr. Get away, he's mine. Plants himself as Tyr, and then, you know, puts very few obstacles in your way to stopping you from getting it. And then once you get him out, they launch what? Like a handful of Einherjar? Like enough that you can obviously yeah. defeat them. And then he heads into the broom closet, and he lives in there pretty much, to the point where there's jokes being made about the other people, about how he just stays in there all the time. Yeah, everyone just everybody just thinks, oh yeah, I mean he's been tortured forever. He even says, oh, the broom closet is all I can handle anyway. So I just need to ease my way back into society, basically. Uh, but yeah, it was all part part of the the plan. The other thing Odin did that's like that is already really impressive to me, right? Like recontextualizing and adding layers to everything he's already said. He gave Tyr an arc to make him more yes. convincing. Right? It's he, incredible. He played the character of guy who's been tortured for thousands, a thousand years, or hundreds of years, whatever it is, and that he's a he's a passive, uh, you know, a diplomat type who mm -hmm. now abhors violence in any and all senses, and uses that to try and argue why he's kind of inept at suggesting things that'll be really useful to them. And in reality, it was just Odin kind of just trying to avoid suggesting anything useful to him. Mm -hmm. Um. And as I said, we're going to go through the Tia's dialogue in a second to look at what okay. the angles right. were. Um, and but yeah, and then keeping all of that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say to what you said. Then the final angle for for Odin, outside of the obvious of getting that mask, just the uh, he's been t speaking to Atreus, knowing all of this shit. So yes, yes. he yep. when he's like, "Do you do you know what happened to Heimdall?" And he's like, "No." Odin's just disappointed because that was a test. Mm -hmm. He was hoping and Atreus exactly. would probably come out with the, maybe the truth that that's the level they were at, but he was just like, oh, you didn't. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, but keeping all of that in mind and how elaborate Odin's plan was, does it not make perfect sense that Brock, the plain speaking, no nonsense yes. guy on the team, saw through it? Something that a lot of people have trouble with with this, and I'm not entirely sure why, but hey, what, what I titled this, I think, at least on the re-upload, was it's a guide to the story as well as... Uh, a breakdown mm. of it. It's like very cool. It's dumb that Freya and Mimir didn't see this well before everyone else. Uh, they're the smart characters who are familiar with Tyr, right? What's going on? Um, I think that it's almost flawless with Mimir. Mimir is incredibly uh, sad about the state of Tyr because it's it's just like him. They are like one yes. to one in terms of their life experience, 
and he's seeing the guy who didn't used to be this way completely broken. He makes several comments about it. He believes that the character Odin is playing is the character that Tia could end up being. There's several different people Tia could end up as a result of the treatment he's mm -hmm. had. This is one of them. And Mimir con contextualizes a lot of stuff in the same way I think an audience would. Some of the things Tia says, and again, we can go over it once we get to the examples, there's reasons he would say them that aren't right. just... It would be absurd. I think that what people need to realize is once they've been given the secret, they start to piece it together in such a way as though they had that information. Like, when you don't, you don't immediately... Why the hell would you go like, oh yeah, that sounds like Odin? Like, no. Yeah. It, just, it just sounds like a broken man. And, uh, and they're almost sad to address part of it. The only time Mimir actually steps further out of it is when you have their lives are threatened. Like, that's mm -hmm. when Mimir's wi willing to sort of almost criticize him. But both Freya and Mimir take extreme pity on Tyr. And that's yeah, why he was able they, to sort they of know sneak what, it through. Because they know what Odin can do to people. Brock they... doesn't give a shit who you are. Yeah. <laughs> he'll speak to everybody the same way. And he'll assess the situation in the same way. And remember, Brock and Sindri, those two are the guys who are in charge of travel throughout all of this series. Uh, or rather, the, mm -hmm. the Norse series. They're the ones that basically give access to all kinds of things. They tell you about how things work, and they always have workarounds. So it's kind of annoying that ca the character's just like, I have a way to Asgard. It's like, I'm sorry, you what? You have a way to Asgard. <laughs> like, like, that is not, that's it's not something that's very fucking have. easy. Yeah, and then the fact that he says, I need to gather some things. Brock has been working in that place this whole time. He knows it's a fucking time. broom closet with nothing in it. So he's like, what? Nothing you, in it. You're yeah. bullshitting. And then, of course, yeah, you didn't of course, got shit. <laughs> Why are you calling him Loki? Yep. Yeah. No, you know, it's like, and that is something that, that's definitely something that Brock would have picked up. It's like, that is not his name from Brock's perspective anyway. Oh, it just shows so, a huge amount yeah. of respect Brock has for Atreus. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Like, yeah, he, he acknowledging the fact that it was, it was Atreus who earned the mask. Like, he's the one who went out there, put himself in, in danger, potential, you know, perilous situations to get it. Yeah, like, and, whether and or he, not. It's like. Whether or not we get an access from you to Asgard, why the fuck are you holding the mask? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you don't need that mask to it, get your things of all, all... Yeah, it's like... Go ahead. It's, oh, I, was, I was just gonna say, it's, it's exactly what Brock said. None of the pieces are welding together true, because that's, yeah. that's for him. He's, he's a pretty straightforward guy. Oh, it's yeah. just things make sense or they don't make sense. You know, things are true or not. He, he's not... In in a sense, the uh, in in a sense, it's kind of paradoxical, right? Because him being a person who's not very nuanced in the way that he conducts himself means that he's actually quite clued into nuances of other people, of other characters. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that Tira's is acting is just it just doesn't follow. It just doesn't make sense. And like I said, we've tried to highlight it as we've gone, but every time Brock says something harsh or or. Uh blunt there's an undertone of like why do you think he said that it's like oh it's because he's trying to support someone or he's trying to help someone out he's trying to reassure someone yeah. like a, a lot of when, what he when says it, has a lot of goals behind it yeah when when freya and freya have their 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 their, their scene together and it gets like awkward because there's a silence and he just comes in there it's like okay what y'all looking at come on well yeah and like i don't know when so Kratos, weird it is when Kratos and Freya are like having their first reunion, and there's like mm -hmm. an implication of are they going to kill each other? And he's like, "I'm here too, yay!" Yeah, <laughs> hello. You can't expect that's not deliberate on Brock's part, and this is when you start to realize why. I mean, it's not applicable to everybody, but why it fucking isn't very nice to see him die. He's uh, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, he's he's, he's the... a part of this series that is uh, has been quite. Uh, reassuring, warm, fun, and uh, yeah, he's the first NPC you meet uh, when when you start 2018. He's the first other person you meet, and so. immediately the 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 way he talks and everything is like, oh god, this is going to be a fun character, and he's been here this whole time, and now he just got stabbed to shit, and it's very first upsetting. Guy that you. Suppose first it guy that helped sense. you. Suppose it makes sense that there's a salt of the earth dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man of yeah, yeah, I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I love the line from Kratos uh, where he says, uh, "There are many things I regret in my life, but killing you won't be one of them." Yeah. Like, mm. Oh, such a Kratos line. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I just I, I I love Freya like 
looking at potential vengeance right in front of her. She's been waiting for a chance to even be in the same room as Odin, but someone behind her is asking for her help. Yep. Like, oh. And I love the line from Odin where he's just like, can't play in two places at once, Frigg? Frigg, yeah. He's just fucking with it. Uh, he doesn't care about Brock, as he said he, earlier in no, the game. Don't really care for the, door, the blue one or something along those lines, right? Did he never stop talking, something like that? You talk too much? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, uh, do you ever shut up is what he said when he stabbed him, which uh, is indicative, yeah. by the way, of Odin didn't breach his plan here because he had to. He reached his fucking boiling point with the dwarf. Yeah. Like, yeah. he had the thing he wanted most in his life. He has, has it in like his hands. And this all he needs to do is get into this broom closet, and there's this little fucking blue dwarf that talks funny, and he doesn't think is very in intelligent, and is starting to see through his little facade, or his big facade, more like. And yeah, he just fucking loses his shit, loses his cool, and he's like, do you ever shut up? And then he goes from there. And yeah, as I said, he even says that wasn't part of the plan. But then he starts to, to course correct me to say, hey, if you just let me go, we'll square for Heimdall, right? So that's a bargain. Wow. The, it's really the fact interesting that he says, that he says a bargain is yeah, I was about to say, it's like, oh, I actually don't care for that person very much, but I just want that fucking mask now and want to go back home and use it. Well, that, and it's been pointed out before, but uh, you should have grasped it now. The reason he said it's a bargain is because he doesn't view it from a point of view of like how much a person means to them. It's utility. Heimdall was really useful. Yes. Uh, Brock isn't exactly. that useful. He's just a blacksmith, right? So it's, yeah. it's just, which is funny. plenty of like, blacksmith. Yeah, you know, yeah, you've got a backup one. one right there. Like, it, it, yeah. It's just how Odin sees the world. Um, yeah, it, uh, and the scene is just just having to deal with the reality that Tyr was Odin this whole time, all the stuff we've just talked about, and then also Brock has been stabbed and is dying in the background, and then also Atreus is, has a knife to his throat and the mask mm -hmm. is at risk. All of this at once. It's, it's quite a scene. It is very intense. Like, I was, uh, I was on the edge of my seat, if you will, when that all happened. I was like, oh, fuck. And yeah, We're doing um, this, eh? I think uh, it's not just that he was pissed off that Brock was doing all this, but it, I think Odin was realizing, like, oh, shit, the longer this conversation goes on, I am actually going to get fucked. Because uh, yes. the whole idea is, like, I can get to Asgard, but I'm going to need the mass at the same time. This is the chance to get those both. But he fucking noticed. Um, yeah. And yeah, and then of course we have all of what Sindri told us. Um, but he, he has trouble, he's, he's not letting... It, 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 that's what I noticed, by the way, with, with literally this uh, stream that we've been doing with the first part, when um, Atreus says to Fenrir that you have to let go. Uh, mm -hmm. I completely blanked that, that that was echoed in Brock saying that to Sindri. Oh, that's true, yeah. That's a yeah. good shout. I didn't notice that. Parallels, they're all over this game, and they're all great. It's, they uh, are. It's um, really good. Talking about Sindri, he's not doing... Didn't take that too well, eh? No, uh, and, he, <laughs> and he did something that... Uh, yeah, he did something I that... Invite, I only... I would invite Rags to my talk about it. Second playthrough. Oh, yeah, go go ahead, Rags. Go go do it. Oh, and I, I really liked it. I thought it was a really super duper cool payoff. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if I can add much that hasn't already been said. I really oh. enjoyed watching this I mean, this play I, out. I, mean, I heard you noticed something that I only noticed on my second play. From yeah, I was, I was inviting you to talk right. upon the subject of what Sindri did in the scene. Yeah. Uh, we're, oh, at the end there? The last yeah. thing he did, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think um, one of the reasons that makes this one of my favorite parts of the game, if not my favorite part, uh, was particularly Sindri teleporting. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that I found very interesting about it is that, especially re-watching a lot of these clips, they go through a lot of effort to make sure that you never see Sindri and Brock coming and going. The, they just sort of are around. Uh, last stream, we had talked about when Sindri goes to Atreus's room and he appears with the stew, um, how they specifically have him appear in the room in between... And th this was uh, in between, uh, oh, sorry, Atreus is in between the player, our perspective, our view, the camera, essentially, and where Sindri appears. So he walks past 
the camera and Sindri, you know, he uses that cover essentially to, you know, appear in the world. Obviously, that's not something that Sindri is aware of in the real, you know, in his world that he's being watched by players in a sense, right? So all of these, all of these methods are used to hide their teleportation. Um, even in the sense of their, the, the, the people, the characters in the world are aware of it. But we, we never get to see it. Mm-hmm. So in this moment of incredible emotional um, trauma, um, the fact that Sindri teleports in front of the player like that, it's almost like I, I get this idea that it's a just to show how emotionally broken he is in this moment. There's this idea of there's no pretense of even hiding this thing anymore that's been hidden for two games now that a lot of care has gone into hiding. It's not it, there's no point in hiding it anymore. He doesn't even care about hiding it. Almost as if there's a wink wink nudge nudge that Sindri is all these things are being done with the player in mind and now it doesn't matter if the player sees it. Um it it, it in a way yeah, something I think is it becomes broken. very in a mm-hmm. yeah, it, it becomes very kind of meta in a way that you get to finally see that and this is what it takes for that to happen. Uh which I really really enjoy about that moment where he it, it's it's like its own payoff and a payoff um so i I really really like that i think there's a really excellent element of kind of player involvement that goes into that payoff uh of finally being able to see that happen uh and using it for that moment i think that uh, that covers most of what we need to talk about except the tier parts but we're going to get there in a second um Mm -hmm. Just strong performances all around as well, and the music. Lots of uh, we just took this Fatalfheim uh, theme essentially and slowed it right down, and mm. changes the tone completely while maintaining the meaning. Um, but yeah, if anyone couldn't have guessed at this point from everything, we were fond of this story. Of, of... this story is oh. really good. A little bit. This no, is it's... a moment where I bet it. You just see all of these moving parts come together. A lot of planning, a lot of... It's kind of like a lot of the lines of dialogue that are completely superfluous that a lot of players will never, ever get, whether you're going back to the Wolves at Home in Midgard Mm -hmm. or whether you check in at Brock after a dinner discussion. There's just all these lines that are totally optional that statistically most players probably... uh, There's a lot of them just will not get, but they made them anyway for the players who did. And in the same way, you have all of these details that, especially when the new game pluses start rolling out and people play it again, and we get that resurgence of people mm-hmm. know, you know, going in with that you know, extra knowledge and noticing things that they'll appreciate. I mean, they're, they're putting in so much work and effort, and there's so much planning and craftsmanship here that you can't help but really appreciate it. And, well, I guess we've mentioned as well in this freeze frame, uh, they make alterations to Atreus's facial expression for this sequence. Yeah. Like the, this whole sequence we're going through, he's looking, he's looking a bit, a bit sad, a bit sad faced. Uh, well, and I just appreciate him looking to Kratos as well. For, yeah. Like, help. And oh yeah, and that's pretty worth mentioning. Kratos' reaction, it's so blunt, and it's like, what's happening there? And it's just like, like we're leaving. someone else is fucking dead. He's lost someone else. And if you didn't notice, it was kind of the person he cared about most outside of Atreus. Mm-hmm didn't like to admit a lot of these things uh he's always quite subtle with his uh, affections of any kind but um can't forget who this man is this is kratos when someone he loves dies uh he has one response and he's desperate to not have that fucking response Mm -hmm. so what is he doing right now (laughs) uh you might say he's panicking let's just go outside and hunt some deer boy Oh, his face. It's like, please help. Father, where are we going? Oh.
father, can we? I... I want to go hunting. I will follow. We are with you, Atreus. What are we hunting? You are hunting deer. Which way? In the direction of deer. What do we hunt? Deer. Which way are we headed, lad? In the direction of deer. Oh, I love that callback. It's so mm, juicy. It's we're, poetry. We're going to where we began. Yeah. It's poetry. It rhymes. And the sun's path in the background. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, it, it like it's not as as much of a dismissive line as it kind of sounds like. Like the direction of deer isn't just like fuck you, just go. It yeah. actually is saying we're hunting. We don't necessarily know the destination, the, but finding out where exactly we are going is kind of part of the part of the task. Well, yeah? and they did that right after the death of the wife and mother, right? Like. Mm -hmm. And what happened after Fenrir died? Like, we're about to, in this sequence, deal with what is it that Kratos is doing when they commit to this sort of decision whenever they deal with grief. Do you wish to speak of what happened? I think I heard something. Was well, that they played the line, then they played it again, as if to insult, like, what's going on here? It's like, no, it's the, it's the point behind these scenes taking place, what the characters are dealing with. Yeah, like, I would hope that there's a recognition of what reincorporation is. Like, it's just a thing in storytelling of taking something that was used in one uh, one context before and reapplying it in a different context after different events with different characters, like, with di different, you know, essentially different people in terms of the arc that they've gone on. A um, different scenario. This isn't referenced to be like, remember the other game had a line that involved deer? No, no well, absolutely it's not. It's very, very purposeful. Atreus remembers exactly what happened after his mum died. And I remember that line pretty well, because it was him looking for direction from his father, and it was a pretty useless line. But obviously it's, it's, it means a lot more of what's going on in Kratos' head as well at the time, but he's just repeating it, because now Brock is dead. Someone that Atreus felt Pretty strongly about. This way. He just needs space. It's such a boring trick in writing, repeated lines. Damn. Mm. Uh, okay. are, you, are you wait, are you gonna commit to that? Recontextualizing <laughs> previously <laughs> stated things is like as wow, alright. Interesting. It acts as That's a link. Opinion. It's not really about the lines themselves, the words themselves, it's about what's happening. Um but hey. Uh, I don't think we could explain it any better than that. As Odin would say, I uh, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. Oof. Here. Tracks. They're leading that way. Atreus, violence changes us. You are not weak to feel its effects. We're all feeling its effects. I keep seeing it. The knife. Brock. Sindri's face. Son. There it is. Over speed. Mm -hmm. Why? And that was running. And so are we. I don't understand. When an animal is wounded. It must stop the bleeding, or it will die. We have been wounded in this. This is a distraction. It's 
my fault. No. You should find Sindri. I have a pretty good idea where he might be. Lead. Yeah, uh, committing to rage, violence, or distraction. It's like none of these ever get us anywhere. It's like, yeah, what are we supposed to do then? What is next? It's like, what should we do? It's like, we should probably go find Sindri. One mm -hmm. of those things. We need to talk to the people affected and then figure out what, what we're going to do next. Constructive things sort of thing, not... Well, yeah. The, the apt realization here is that you can't... Like, there's a problem here that needs to be resolved, and it's not going to be resolved by just going out into the woods to hunt. Um, yeah. This is not a situation that demands passivity, you know? There is action that is required. Action both in terms of uh, the, the, the stakes of, of the story, but then also actions by way of them healing and, and coming to terms with what's happened. It's good stuff. Is it okay? I need to think about what I'm going to say to him. Of course. <laughs> Everywhere I look, I'm reminded of my mistakes. Our actions have consequences. To be reminded of them is not punishment. Feels like it. If I had just... Seen through a deception that fooled us all, stopped an attack you could not predict. There is no if, Atreus. Your father's right. There are things even gods cannot control. It's Mona. It's Becky. Come. Here's Temple. That's where we're headed. Ah! Mimir, is there a chance that we could bring Brock back? Sindri did it once. Maybe we could figure out a way to do it again. I'm afraid not, little brother. When a soul missing its full year, its direction, like rocks, leaves, its corporeal form, well, it can't reach the Lake of Souls. He's not only dead, He's been denied an afterlife. There's nothing to bring back. It's really gone. Atreus, if there was anything ah! we could do, I promise you, we'd be doing it. I know. It was stupid of me to help in the first place. And so, at this moment, mm -hmm. when I heard that, I was just sort of struck with, oh, man. Yep. So yeah, fuck. Henry, yeah, that's yeah. That's what he's thinking. Uh, that's what's he's that's going through his head like he knows better than everybody about that exactly it's not just about the loss of brock permanently for all of the audience and the characters that's happening as a permanence as well as his loss of the afterlife due to one person's decision yep, yep. and so if that person is aware of it which seems very likely uh at this point you're not even sure what you're in for in terms of meeting back up with him this yeah. Water. Although I think it's just in general, uh, pretty nice that they gave Atreus this thing where they where he goes, oh shit, that's all my fault. Because in of course in his mind, man, if I never looked for Tear, this all wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So and he of, and of course goes back to him in his mind, it's like, oh shit, this is all my fault. It's almost like you could say okay. his pursuit of knowledge got to the point where he started to not necessarily understand there could be some serious consequences mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm actually i'm real glad you brought that up metal because something i noticed as well you remember when atreus said like you know stop thinking like a father and start thinking like a general they're very yeah. harsh like no and then you know they're much more considered no mm -hmm. we got the same thing again there the instinctive reaction is no it's not your fault 
but then the slow considered one is still no that isn't your mm-hmm. fault like yeah. it's not don't don't hold that don't don't be so hard on yourself about this choice again that feels like a, a really deliberate callback yeah but i guess that's just a repeated line to be fair so <laughs> repeated interesting. lines don't count uh, only the first time counts that a fight with one one guy about this is kind of funny he literally just said i'm a trained writer and this is like bad <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, oh you're I hope you're... this is bad that isn't that just like a pretty categorical argument from authority it's just funny like, yeah. on yourself <laughs> like, <sighs> it, I just, i've just never been more convinced in my it, life it, you know just like it, <laughs> 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 I want to get on a boat and just sail away from here. No, that doesn't work, Atreus. Kratos knows that. From yep. That's what he's gonna it say. It's impossible to forget them. <laughs> I have tried. I heard a song I about that once on the river Styx. No, no. no. Which I I like that as well as a line because oh, well actually let's finish let let him, let him finish. What oh, he's I saying. thought you were gonna say that you liked that Mamiya chimed in because Mamiya did the same thing. Like you. They're trying to that. get away from uh, from all of his mistakes with Odin, but they've come back to haunt him several times. But what I like about it is that this is the negative aspect of the life that you have has some consequence on you that is uh, ultimately inseparable from you. Like that there's the acknowledgement of, yeah, your mistakes still sort of ling with you, but is there a flip side in terms of things that will stay with you even when they're you know no longer present in your life? Hmm. To forget them. I have tried. Aye. They'll follow you no matter where you go, little brother. If you are to sail. Because with Mimir, yep. somewhere. you did a lot of side missions and stuff. People talked about Mimir. The lift at the end of the bridge should still work. We can get up to the temple that way. Hmm. Atreus, what makes you so sure Sindri will be here? It's where he and Brock reunited, reforging something that broke. He'll be here. Oh, sorry. No. No, I don't want to hear it. You don't know what sorry means. We're not letting Odin get away with this. Could that be the Odin you invited into my home? We were all fooled. But some of us were bigger fools than others, aren't we? I gave you everything. My skills. My friendship, my home, my secrets, my treasures, and you just kept taking. And now what have I got? <laughs> Not even my family. You want sorry? This is what sorry looks like. I. What can we do? We. There is no we. There's only you. No matter what the cost. So what you can do is get the fuck out of my sight. Come on, Chase. More than how you wish. I I 
thought we were his family, too. We were. Oh. Mm-hmm. Punished I reacted Sindri. to this poorly on my God. first viewing of it, but um, I, spo I, I don't know if we're speaking ahead spoiler wise, but uh, the the way this thread wraps up um, turned it around for me. Well, uh, this isn't directed at anybody in particular, right? But like, he says a lot of stuff in there, and it strikes some people, a lot of people, mysteriously, as how while the Sindri, what are you doing, man? You 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 kind of let Odin in there too. It's your place, you know. It's not like it's just their fault. You're you've got a hand in all the. Got to understand. I think that uh, Sindri is not in a place right now where he's going to be entertaining uh, full rationality. He is uh, he is a no. raging ball of yeah. absolute violence and anger and pain. And it's something that Kratos recognizes when he tells him to mourn as he wishes. He recognizes it as mm -hmm. like, yeah, a lot of these things that he's saying, yeah, they're unfair. But like, he's really, really sad right now. You just gotta, you gotta give him some space. He's dealing and, with everything. Um, yeah. Um, things that, th the reality is that th these two can't really relate to this, this specific thing, this event. Especially the implications it has on, on Sindri in terms of a choice that he made and the consequences of that choice. How can we not parallel Which, with uh, Freya the, uh, causing so much damage to someone you love by trying to protect them? And do you remember back when you had our first sequence with, with uh, Atreus and Sindri? He says uh, the reason he did it was selfish. He didn't want to be alone. Hmm. Like he recognizes it wasn't for Brock's benefit, it was for his own. Mm -hmm. Right. So this and is turmoil. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it, it feels very appropriate and deliberate yeah. that uh, Kratos and Atreus went past the bear again as like a reminder of that time when it, intent versus consequences and how to deal with them, you know? Sindri had an intent, there was a consequence, and now he has to he has to grapple with it, he has to deal with it. Um, However, and it's not going to be easy. There is some truth to what he said, and it's an unfortunate reality, I think, that can be spotted as, a, as yes, almost a byproduct of just normal attitudes. I think we went over on Metal's Forge. Um, mm -hmm. We did. There's this thing that's happening throughout the 2018 in this, this game that made me feel bad, especially replaying it all. Sindri's not treated very well by he really, isn't. really not anybody. Um, he's Brock, I think, gets a little bit more fun and 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 uh, better better treatment almost because of the fact that he doesn't take shit. Uh, so you got to deal with him a little bit more difficultly. Uh, Sindri, on the other hand, he almost plays the doormat to some extent, but nobody ever sort of bre breaches that treatment of him. They just do it. Um, mm -hmm. our primary character, Kratos, basically has never quite respected Sindri in the same way he does Brock. And, uh, what really... I trust him. Yeah, what really fucked that up was the the Atreus stuff. Freya commented on that in Svartalfheim. She was like, you know, are you really that angry at Sindri? And it's like, yeah, he is. Uh, Kratos, I think, would probably never forget the fact that for years he didn't have what he thought was uh, his full, like, parentage control over her. His son, and part of it was to do with uh, sort of the use of another person in the background, a person that he probably expected would have come to him in terms of, of sorting out that like his son is sneaking off to go and find shrines and stuff. So yeah, uh, but obviously Sindri's logic was like, what do you mean? I was trying to protect him. Like, you know, he was going to do what he was going to do, which funnily enough is exactly what Thor said about Throod. Mm. They will do what they're going to do. I'm just trying to look out for him. Um... And so you got that, you got how they keep basically like receiving upgrades and bonuses from him, and despite the fact that they provide materials all the time in the same like uh, mechanics of video games you'd expect, uh, it's rare, like Kratos will say, you know, it fits, and then Sindri will be like, okay, good, yeah, cool, sweet, you know, that's some of my best work. <laughs> like, um, how, else, how often has Kratos explicitly said thank you to 
uh, Sindri. I'm not even sure things. if he says thank you at all in 2018 when you're buying uh, armor, but uh, I think he. I don't, don't think so. I think he does in this game, but I I would love yes, to check if it's only with Brock. I, I can't. I, I, it would be a really interesting detail if they had it that way, but I know he, I've caught him saying thank you when you're buying armor here and there. Yeah, but I, I, I never never checked for who it was, so yeah, I would need to double check that as well. So, yeah, um, and it's why we highlighted it, or at least I tried to with uh, in Svartalfheim, when you go back to when you have uh, the Bifrost situation, trying to get it so that realm travel is open, so that Kratos and Atreus can go to where they want to go. Uh, Brock and Sindri actually set it up. They crack it. It's it's kind of amazing to get them back yeah. to full realm travel. And Kratos' reaction is, my Bifrost is drained. And Sindri's like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it's not so that bad, right? You don't, yeah, you, know, you don't you don't need the Bifrost to go around the realms anymore. I, I just I we've we've gotten you full realm travel. Then he's like, I used it for light. Yeah, it's, it's such a let's see if I can th build you something for light, then asshole. Ex exactly that, and he almost looks regretful, like, oh no, I fucked up. And it's like, no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. It's just Kratos is not. That's just who Kratos is. He's he's a, uh, he can be difficult, and yeah, and so when he gets them. Uh, he, give, he gives you the compass. It's like a special device, and you're more so mystified by it until Kratos like begrudgingly admits, "It's like it's a compass." It's a compass. <laughs> like like saying it like it's not as cool as it fucking is, sort of thing. And then he provides them the lights, and they're just like, mm, "Okay." And um, I think when he provides the, I think it's either the compass or the light that he says, "Like, you know, sorry for getting in your way of your little quest. He's like, when, in reality, I'm providing you something that's really useful, so really, mm -hmm. you know, you should... Anyway, like, and you got the thing with the bear. Basically, like, he gets shat on throughout, and I think this cracked a portion of his personality to no longer accept that. Like, nah, <laughs> fuck not... you guys. Um, yeah, dumb. almost, almost, almost like uh, Atreus in his little... Little angry face in 2018, where they had some. Oh, you always just complain, 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 but never actually talk to your brother. It's like almost a little parallel there again, maybe. Well, I mean, that's actually one of the things that caused some dissonance for me when I first got to this scene because when Sindri says, "and like now you you've cost me my family," I was just like, "but you wouldn't even have been talking to Brock if it weren't for Kratos and Atreus." Like you. you but it's their quest that brought you guys back together. Like, you were estranged. So that was sort of I was like, man, Sentry's being kind of an asshole. And um, they they made it pay off at the end of the game. I guess he that's, is that's all. completely lashing out because he's... I mean, I was about to say 100%. Odin is obviously the one that hit the, the, the killing blow. But for the repercussions of what that is, it's, it's all on Sentry. And uh, he's more than aware of that. In the same way that a lot of the cost of the deal that was made with Ares, you couldn't blame it on Ares. Like, it was, it was it's a result of Kratos' desperation and choice to sell his soul to a god. That's how he, he talks about it from now on. Like, it was a huge mistake. And it's, uh, it's these decisions you make. You know, your intentions can be one way or another, but those consequences, they're going to be coming whether or not an intention was in a particular way. Uh, it's just a lot of shit going on, and um, you can't help but feel a little bit awful for Sindri at this point. Um, yep. Let's see how everything turns out. There's no making. We'll turn. I Is I there... like if you no. you notice the uh the little objective thing often has some interesting uh interesting lines when after uh after Brock died it just said leave dot 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 um that yeah, one like there just said return home and prepare for war like it's kind of it's kind of like the the objective marker is aware of the tone of uh of these moments yeah it's definitely totally appropriate at times better when we brought Odin to justice. Justice? Justice is not what we seek. It is vengeance. Oh, the seed! Leads back to vengeance. Maybe that's all we have left. The seed was planted. He's almost, yeah, because it's, it's all the fucking same every time, and he's so 
pissed about it. Like, why yeah. even pretend for even a minute that it's like it's time this to exact justice? Like, no, yeah. we, we're angry they killed our friend, and we just want to make them. They want we want them we're to hurt. Get him. That's the reality, yeah. And then the tracing. That's 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 all we've got. So get back. Where we really are going to war. You just come to that. Yes. And we were back in Sparta Farm, looking for Tyr. This isn't what I wanted. This wasn't what I meant. Not if it meant losing Brock. We know what she is. We know. We really took everything from Sindri. Don't take to heart what I'm said in grief and Atreus. No matter how spot on they feel. Are we even sure Freya will still be at the house? Don't see why not. Odin's back door in was also his way out. Without the blasted raven apparently hiding in the broom closet, the house should be secure. And she will not turn away allies in her vengeance. Aye, it's all our vengeance now. And no more fake Tyr to twist our minds around. Oh, what a mockery he made of Tyr's desire for peace and mine. You skipped over how he fought and freed the Valkyries. And that the giants are all gone? And now they called me Loki. And finding the shrines. The giants and... are gone. And we got to Jotunheim. Mm. They were all. That is perfectly reasonable for Tyr to be upset by and interested in. It's also. Very much information that Odin would be interested in. He was wondering what happened yeah. to the giants. Also tells us he did not kill them because he's surprised that they're all gone. Well, we mm -hmm. already knew that. Did we? Yeah. Do you not remember what happened to the giants? Uh, no, we we, uh, we di didn't. We we didn't know they were all, all dead. Dead. Wait, no, the fucking balls. Never mind. Just go ahead. <laughs> brain fart. I had a brain fart. We cut that in post. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Tyr, in your trap, minds talk about Loki. I'm sorry, that name doesn't sound familiar. The giants are, were, a very private people. That doesn't sound right at all. In retrospect, uh, the giants and Tyr were very, very, very good friends. The idea that. He doesn't really know much of anything about anything to do with them. It just seems seems unlikely. But this was some of the first things he said when you first save him, and you sort of just take it at face value. You're just like, huh, oh, the giants, yeah, they were, I guess they were pretty private. But really, with all we learned about him in the um, the 2018 game, it seems unlikely that there would be little to, to draw out of him about what the giants thought, this, that, and the other. But, um, hmm. Makes Perhaps after a rest... You are certain the giants would not counsel war. I said that they were wise. In my experience, that goes with being peaceful. Is there... his, uh, his desire for peace, we've already been over how it all would run on a surface level, but Odin wants the peace because his true motivation is the, uh, the mask, the, in, the information, the knowledge. He doesn't want war. He doesn't want Ragnarok. Those things aren't useful to him at all. Um... So, yeah, when you start to... Th this all made sense for what Tia may want and Tia may say. But uh, now when you're listening to it with um, Odin's intentions behind it, it's all interesting. And yeah, these weren't... We didn't cover these at first, but I threw them in here. It's, um, Tia kind of hilariously points out that Kratos is looting. And we get some like almost meta lines about how, oh, yeah, yeah, my dad yeah. likes loot. And when you first go through the game, it's kind of fun. You're just like, ah, yeah, I do like loot. But think about it. Tyr is Odin. Odin has his chance to see grow a shrine, which regards Ragnarok, and there's apparently a hidden part to it in terms of information. Tyr really wants to see this shrine, and uh, it makes way more sense that he does, considering he's Odin. This is this is desperate information that's been available for ages, but he's had no way of seeing it. He's on the cusp, and Kratos is running around picking up hack silver so just keep that in <laughs> mind when you listen to these lines hi old friend just looting on your chest we'll be right along my dad likes loot ah very <laughs> well dad likes <laughs> not like they're giving us much of a choice so your father said i'm just naive i suppose no just an optimist old friend 
Lucky for us, swearing off violence doesn't mean he can't disfigure some architecture. This way. <laughs> Shrine awaits. The Shrine awaits. Kratos, where are you going? He's just looking around. He does this sometimes. Ah, a curious mind. Carry on. Excellent. Let's continue our ascent, yes? It's all nice and chill. Mm -hmm. But behind it is a guy who's like, I just grow a shrine. Come on. No, fucking Let's hurry up. Thing. I want to see the thing. <laughs> Maybe if we allow me to speed this up. Yeah. <laughs> and Odin dies. Oh, boy. She lied. You are lied. Of course she did. <laughs> Odin's working off a false prophecy. <laughs> Imagine what he was going through in this scene. Yeah. Knowing that the prophecy is just that he's going to get fucking killed, Asgard gets destroyed, and the other realms are fine. The long take presentation really worked for that, too. because, Or at least watching it back a second time, because <laughs> right when we would be seeing his reaction is as the camera pans away. And we yeah. Know that there's only the one camera, so... Can't stop Ragnarok, but we can win it. If Asgard is destroyed, Odin will not be the only casualty. There must be another way. Already skew into like, all right. If they won't fucking work with let's avoid killing Odin, then he's starting to use the fact that other innocent people could die, right? Yeah. Even you mentioned, I know, is it is it coming up mentioning the wildlife and stuff? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> Oh, he also says, like, what about all the wildlife? Like, he doesn't only talk about civilians, but, like, everything in that realm, basically. Oh, I'm not sure if I have that, but yeah. That's okay. Thing. I just don't remember if it just comes up here or not. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, it, it's interesting to compare to something in future, but also something like him standing behind uh, Durlin when he speaks to Kratos. Right. At first. If I can't tempt people to stay away from me by using me, maybe I'll use someone else. <laughs> Keep moving. Really worked up. Think he's okay? Focus, Atreus. <laughs> Here you are. A male fit for a champion. Enough. I said we would speak no more of that. Yes, of course. No. Yeah. Didn't mean to offend. There is almost no reason he would have said that. And that's why it's a weird line. But now that we have Odin, it's like, ah. Okay. Yeah, just constantly egging them on. Yeah. He's the, trying to so stuff. discontent. <clears throat> uh, I'm not offended. It's just a word. The word that clouds your judgment. I never thought I'd have the pleasure of seeing you again, Frigg. Uh, don't call me that. Mm -hmm. I haven't been that person in a long time. But I'm happy to see you, too. I'd feared the worst for so long, what you must have been through. Nothing so bad as what you've suffered. Freya, I am so, so sorry to hear what happened to Baldur. He was only a boy when I saw him last, but I know he meant more to you than anything. I can't help but read this as him bringing up something that made her hate Kratos. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's got to be it, right? That's why he's bringing it up. Just in case you want to kill him, at any <laughs> he's point. right there. And to forbear your vengeance in this way, it's it's truly an inspiration for those of us who believe in peace. The only <laughs> peace these realms will ever know is once Odin is gone. So, like, you know, hopefully everything's chill, right? You're not gonna be attacking anyone. It's like I'll be attacking Odin. It's like ah. Uh... Uh, that's one like, person I don't want you to attack. Fun. Yeah, just watch him as soon as she declares that. He's so annoyed. Believe in that. So you're not here to prevent Ragnarok. You're here to bring it about. I'm here to make sure Odin doesn't hurt anyone. The way he hurt us. I can see I've upset you. Forgive me. But Odin is like, oh shit, I kind of gave away a little bit too much there. Too yeah. I am far removed from my days of diplomacy. I bloody knew these two had nicked it. And Odin blamed me for it disappearing. They stole Drapnir. We didn't steal nothing. The way he delivers <laughs> that, 
they stole it, like as if he was wondering. (laughs) Those fucking dwarves, you little (laughs) shits. It's so great because like you can read that, I think, and it can just pass your mind first time around as just being him being like these guys doing something immoral, like stealing. Yeah. I thought it was a sense of almost like he was impressed. Like, they're the ones who managed to do that. Like, these guys did that. I, I, even my first time around, I got a distinct impression that he's uh, disapproving of it. Sounds like he's denigrating. Like, they stole Dropnir. And th- that's the, the distinct impression. It makes more sense second time around. Because it's Odin saying, I knew my fucking ring was stolen. Who did it? It was you guys. <laughs> Especially considering Mia, Mamiya just said he blamed me for it. I bloody knew these two had nicked it. And Odin blamed me for it disappearing. They stole Dropnir. We didn't steal nothing. We just ungifted what never should have been gifted in the first place. <laughs> gifted. I don't like who I became on our last adventure. I can't be around the violence that follows him. That follows you both. I'm sorry. This is a fuck up. Yeah. A lot of uh, the dialogue from him is is always just about trying to make everyone not not go for violence, not try and kill. Yeah. But it's not because he's trying to, you know, encourage a world of peace with the least amount of hurt and pain coming to people. It's because he doesn't want them to kill Odin. Yep. <laughs> Would drive you hard. Um, I'm gonna rewind that because it fucking. Glimmed up on my side. This is a fuck up oh, okay. of not insignificant yeah. proportions. What would drive you to such mischief? Is this Loki's doing? Enough. See, that line to me just feels really weird considering everything we've heard from him so far on the surface. But if it's Odin, he's taking an opportunity to try and turn them on Loki. Yep. Because he that's all he does. He's a fucking pot stirrer. He tries to yep. just yeah. make everyone more Literally, and more distrustful. Yes. Yeah, he's a big fan of the cooking. He is an actual pot stirrer. Ooh, that yeah, looks good. Is that braised? The giants didn't make it, and only a few of them ever glimpsed it in their visions. He's quite taken with that book. They never knew its origin, but some believed it was a way yep. to gaze into the secrets of creation itself. Is it an oracle? Much, much more. Imagine becoming one with a source of infinite knowledge. Is it true? I'm Dahl's dead. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's the it's first so time great. he is that. Yeah, that's 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 how he discovers it, and he it's confirmed with the horn. There's no way they'd have that if unless I'm Dahl's yep. probably dead. And that's what he was looking at. It's just it's great. It's really He's great. Still staying in character, even though he just heard that. It's like, ooh, <laughs> that must have been tough. <laughs> Stopping it now. Odin swore peace only so long as you spilled no more Aesir blood. I refuse that deal. Yet he honored it. It's just, oh, why boy. would he say that? So that's, why would he? That's one of the most blatant you know examples of, that's just Odin speaking right now. Yeah. <laughs> but now. I'm fine. I just hope unlocking this thing was worth the cost. You have it. What did it show you? That's like it's just Odin. <laughs> like yeah. you can you can tell that they decided to make the lines more overt as you as you get he's closer to the reveal. More excited, he's getting, yeah. yeah, he's getting closer. The mask is right there. Yeah. As as much as the deal one that like I refused that deal, yet he honored it. Line was it was overt. Like okay, that's very much Odin speaking, but it's also rooted in Heimdall's uh, supposed pacifism. You know, like it would make sense Heimdall? for him. You mean Tyr? Oh no, sorry, Tyr. sorry, Tyr. Yeah, I mean it's rooted in in what we know of Tyr. Uh, or, sorry, of pseudo Tyr. You know, like fake Tyr. The the persona that he's been projecting, or like the personality, is that he doesn't want war for any reason. So when he's like, "Well, Odin hasn't caused," oh, like he has honored that deal for peace. So you know. Maybe well, so you yeah, should, it wasn't. Maybe you that... should have too, anyways. Even if it wasn't hand shook, you know. It wasn't that it couldn't be justified in some way, shape, or form with what we know about Tyr. It's that it's so inappropriate, like, to come from a guy who was tortured by him to a bunch of people who've been tortured by him and threatened by him. Like, what do you mean he honored the deal? We all know him to be someone who doesn't fucking do that shit. Why would you even say that? Like, if he honored the deal, it's only for his own benefits. Like, it's it's the kind of thing that if another character was feeling particularly uh, annoyed, they might have really picked on him. But yeah, that like, did eventually happen. 
the, the, the yeah. character was called Brock. <laughs> he had enough of his shit. Master, young Master Atreus, I'm so relieved to see you safe. My infinite condolences to you all. I do not know what to say. I am devastated to hear about what happened to Master Brock. To think that something like that could happen in my home of all places. I am sickened and deeply sorry. Is Master Sindri all right? No. But he is safe. He has returned to Midgard. I see. I can only imagine the grief he must be feeling. Please, take care, you two. You're back. Are you with us? Hmm? Good. It's time. <laughs> I don't what know. It's I kind ask. of funny. Goes, Are you with us? Time to unite <laughs> the realms. Okay, good. Someone else said, wait, but how does Brock figure it out before Mimir and Freya? It's like, uh, roll it back half an hour. We go over yeah. it. Yeah. I'll keep going over it. Against Odin once and for all. Tyr tried to unite the realms. The real Tyr. Everyone loved him. And even he failed. Then we better not fail. Or there will be no one left to try. This is Ragnarok. And Odin's already had every blasted plan we have. Yes, we've lost the element of surprise. More than that, we have only one way to Asgard, and it's not so. Get Odin. It means we enter from Tyr's temple, here. Asgard's wall is here. Odin's host of Einherjar will hold the space in between. Which means... We need armies of our own. As many as will answer the call. Numbers Odin won't see coming. And that's just to reach the wall. To breach the wall, we'll need to find Surtur. Radatoskar was able to procure this. The three of us will go. I know just where to look. Mm. Splendid. Allies, then. Who do we think we can get? I'll venture to Helheim. Try to recruit the army of the dead. And I'll return to Alfheim to unite the elves. Just like that. Unite the elves after centuries of war. Well, they really like me in all fun. And you? To Valheim? Yes. To find Sigrun and muster the free Valkyries. Midgard has no army. Nor Niflheim, nor Jotunheim. That leaves only Svartalfheim. I'll go to Svartalfheim. Sindri? Are you sure? I said I'll go. So be it. Good luck to us all. You said you know where to look for Surtur. Yeah. I unlocked the secrets in the shrine when I was in Muspelheim with Thor. Thor? Don't worry. He didn't see me go in. That was not my worry. Now look, when we find Surtur, we'll have to convince him to combine with his wife, Sinmara. Combine? Yeah. When the two of them, uh, join, they'll create an enormous Asgard-destroying monster. Oh my. Oh my. Also well, a mention, by the way. Kind of Wait, go ahead. I was just saying it was it's kind of an appropriate reaction. Go ahead. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I also mentioned Hassan got banned for playing that interview with the the I assume the Kanye Alex Jones one. I think um Sitch and Adam did that. So I hope they're they're not gonna get clipped by it. I think a couple people are because uh Yeah, I, I only watched it on Sitch and Adam's show. I, uh, mm. Yeah. That was a wild interview though. Whew. Hopefully they can sneak by. You never know with these things. Especially if Bigger content careers are going down for it. Um, yeah. Be careful, lad. But yes, um, obviously we're doing our... Uh, we're, we're mustering everything we have access to, which is not a lot, especially as we just said. We just, there were several uh, realms that don't even have anything for us to use. Mm -hmm. um, but of what we have access to, uh, the Valkyries seems like an obvious and relatively simple choice. The um, Army of the Dead... Sounds at first a little more complicated, but you do get uh, information on exactly what happened to make that happen, which I don't think it would be considered a spoiler at this point to just say basically they're going to try and make a deal with, I hesitate to pronounce the name of the bird, Errol Sligler or something. I, I would need to see it spelled out. Yeah. But yeah, um, I know which one you mean. <laughs> the deal is that uh, 
she or it, I'm not even sure, can be replaced as the guardian of hell uh, in exchange for this. Mm -hmm. Which is the big fleam. Um, Grosslingular. Uh, and then, sure. Uh, side mission, if you take Freya into Alfheim, which you could have done at this point, uh, she'll tell you that the reason Freya is so Freya is so respected and loved in Alfheim. I'm paraphrasing his story, but basically he went there early on. He was super drunk. He was messing around. He fell in the River of Souls. Um, I guess while it was still more dangerous, I think she said that he came out of it unharmed, uh, which basically convinced all of the elves on both sides that he's like a Jesus type person. And yeah. that any time he shows up, they just like, they would worship the fuck out of him. And that's what he's referring yeah, to when he says they like me. Dip in the River of Souls in God of War 3 just de-leveled him to like <laughs> yeah. early game territory. Yeah, we, we, we turned out okay when we went to the Alfheim one. Maybe since we went into the River Sticks, it provided an, an immunity, you know, from now on. Ooh. So that sort of thing. But yeah, so that's why there is a chance he'll be able to do that with the elves. That leaves uh, the most difficult job to Kratos and Atreus, which is recruiting Serta. Who you may remember from such properties as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Big guy with a sword. Ah. I have some doubts regarding negotiations with Rasvelker and Helheim. Rasvelker. My thinking is that she may be more amenable to speaking with a man. He can pronounce it better than me. Deceased. Mimir. Oh, death is a skill now. <laughs> I suppose these two can survive a bit without me. Brother, you wouldn't mind? Very well. Many thanks. We'll catch up with you later. Hey, I, I think I can see Surtur's forge in the distance. I wonder if they saw their prophecy and decided to isolate themselves in their home realms to fight it. Understandable. Hopefully they'll understand why Ragnarok needs to happen. We need to be ready for Surtur. In case he doesn't want to help us. Ready. Prophecy says he and Sinmara join. But who knows how they're going to feel about it now. You would try to force these primordial beings into submission. Well, I don't know. You're truly my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> yes. We can't win this war without them, right? We seek a fire giant. Go away. <laughs> what just happened? Hey, I love this guy. He's chill. This will be the uh, Muspelheim track for fighting. I like the organ. Is that? Oh wait, no, no, that might have just been strings. Fighting clean. There's a lot of fun music to fight to in this game. <clears throat> Man, if that is Serta, he's got a lot to handle for. As so that, said, that was actually kind of interesting, sort of just to make a point about the music. What I was hearing there was the lower strings, I think, were on the downbeat, and the upper strings were on the upbeat, so it almost sounded like an organ medley, but a melody. But, um, mm. yeah, no, I thought that was that was really interesting, and then my brain put together that it was strings. Neato. Yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Why won't you help us? Why won't you help us? I don't want to. Elaborate. <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> we'll die. Right. Because you've got so much to live for. Not me. Her. So what's the point of all this? You keep separate from Sinmara just so you can sit here and wait to die? At least if you joined with her, you'd be together again. We are together. Not her heart. She's got mine. It's not much, but it's enough. But you're not even- Have you ever been in love? 
pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something about the way I'm trying to crack it because I've heard this guy talk so many times. What is it that I like about it so much? It's like I think it's the casual way that he reads sentences. The delivery. The, yeah. It's so He's unique. Very yeah. casual. It's yeah. Like it. This is a clear example of in very little time, and having said very few things, you already get a really good sense of who he is. He's the opposite of Kang. He um, he gives me a sense that he is incredibly old. That and he that, has seen a lot and, and very uh, casual he, about but, just yeah, he's just moving through sentences very obviously and honestly. Mm -hmm. Pure charisma, yeah, kinda. Yeah. You uh, it's a, he's he he's draws a little a little you get drawn in a little and yeah, I really like that line about love. <clears throat> Pretty good. Pretty straightforward. If you knew that, you wouldn't just want to die, kid. Jeez. And Odin will succeed. And all realms save Asgard will fall. Yeah, he must die. It's true. But I won't sacrifice her any more than you would him. Sorry. Um, wait. And that translated to Kratos as such a like, well, we're fucked then. <laughs> yeah. like, if what you just said is true, yeah, okay. No reason to even ask further. By the way, this uh, this outfit I'm wearing on Kratos, that is the uh, initial gear leveled up. Yeah, yeah. And um, I get it to, I think, level 8 before the game ends, and it goes, it has like a golden cover, and I'm curious if everyone, what everyone thinks of the look, because I thought it was pretty cool. I oh, like I like thing. seeing this a lot more than a lot of the other outfits. It seems like it fits him more. Yes, that's exactly long, how I feel. On mm -hmm. the long play that we watched, he had those goofy fucking blue scales on his arms the whole time. I well, like, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Clashes with everything. I said to the people in my chat, like they were like, "Your outfit's not very." I was like, "I don't. I, it's not chosen because of the look. I wanted the stats. Like I did. It's yeah, not yeah. the look. That's a really I think important the look. Is really good. Good. No, yeah, I'm I, yeah. I'm saying that on this playthrough, I get to go with looks, but on you, you know. Yeah. I you can transmog stat. your armor when you have oh. the fully leveled. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, when it's on level 9, you can uh, make it look whatever you want to. Oh. And you can transmog it into anything in the game, or just other things that uh, have? I think the, the things you bought. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. The, I haven't checked the extent if you have to upgrade everything, because I think if you, you get the initial ones, of course, but I think if you have the other ones upgraded, you can use the upgraded looks as well. So you can just transmog them when they're full leveled. Hmm. Cool. It's kind of neat. Good reason to have new game plus, Sony. Those blades. Yeah. May I see them? Surprised you'd say they're pretty he cool. Has primordial fire <laughs> in those. They are not of these lands. It's funny, every God of War fad gets a little tingle in their balls whenever someone talks about the Blades of Chaos. It's like, oh, yeah. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna what's the new information? Because <laughs> we like give these me, things give, a lot. Give me. I wanna Jim. know. What could? Put those in here. And I'll become your monster. But I don't want her involved at all. But the prophecy says you two have to combine. I'm sure this will work? What have I got to live for? Yeah, get a wreck to try it. The little smirk he did after it. Yeah. <laughs> Not here. I said this on. I said this somewhere else, but I really felt like he was waiting for Kratos to try it because before <laughs> telling yeah. it, <laughs> just to, nah. like, will you actually just try and stab me now? You gonna? Yeah. No. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not here. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> We 
Where do we go? The design for Soda is awesome. Is... Mm -hmm. I really like it. It's pretty cool. He's even got a little, like, rock beard. Yeah. What awaits us at this spark of the world? Magic. Primordial stuff. With that and your blades and my heart, we'll be good. I'll get it. Big. Smash stuff. You'll like it. But what'll happen when you change? Don't know. Won't be me anymore. But how will you, or, um, future new you, know when to attack Asgard? You got the horn. Right? Yeah. Then we're good. So, here it is. The spark of the world. This is beautiful. It really looks fucking cool as shit. I'll meet you, Cross. Yeah. This feels too easy. Odin knows we have yellow and he knows you have the mask. After killing Brock, he knows we would seek Surtur to start this war. But what other choice do we have? None. He knows that too. This is it. What about Sinmara? Should we at least tell her? No. It had hurt her too much. More than not knowing what happened to you? Sometimes loving someone is about choosing the lesser pain. That doesn't make any sense. I promise you'll stay away from her. You have our word. Sorter. Stabbing you with the blade is going to be enough to create this new you? Sinmara's heart is cold. So beautifully cold. Your dad's now got my fire in those blades. If enough of me and the spark's fire go into enough of her, it should work. Okay. Come here. I assume I'm not crazy, but like the him giving away his fire made the ice from her heart spread further around him. Uh, yeah, it looks that's like the question it. I got. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I haven't like compared the models, but I think now. I think that's what happened. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because kind of it's detail. kind of always on his shoulder there, but it's not on his chest that much. I don't think. Not typically. I you think this is gonna take?
look at that framing. Such a good frame. And it's just... We oftentimes have him, at critical moments in fights, activate rage to sort of win it out and just having him do it with his son, mastering control of the bear, which was the one he hadn't cracked beyond the wolf. And, yeah. Uh, I think, is is there a, I can't remember if there's an achievement for it, but it's just the whole working together, better together sort of stuff. They're in sync, father and son. Yeah. Good shit. Did it work? Sorter, are you there? I await the call. Hello. Uh, great. Yeah, you're Hello. good now. All right, cool. Hi there. Something went wrong, but I think it's right now. Hello. Also, we oh. have Ragnarok. Oh, oh my god. god. Sorry, yeah. Hear that? All we have to do is call him with Gallarhorn when we're ready. The Valkyries were a small setback, but I bet we've got Odin worried now. He knows we're coming for him. <laughs> we're gonna show up to Asgard. Oh, oh by, by the way, I, I got something to drink in between. The, did you talk about how he says, I'll be your monster? Oh, uh, Serta, yeah, it's... Serta says that to Kratos. I think there's something about that in a journal entry as well, right? That choice uh, of words. It might be. I think he writes something about that to do with Serta, but yeah, there's no way you can't add that to all of the fucking dynamics involving everybody's turn toward becoming worse versions of themselves thanks to previous violence. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this desperation for the good guys just grabbing this chill dude who's just doing his thing and turning him into a giant monster will destroy an entire realm. It just as a phrasing specifically, like telling Kratos that like I'll become your monster, the thing he doesn't want to be for anyone anymore. Yeah. Now he has a monster for himself. It's like ooh, that's that's kind of spicy. Ragnarok's gonna come in. Odin won't stand a chance. We're gonna win. Groa was right. Groa failed to predict what we would sacrifice in return. Maybe she could only see the big stuff. This is gonna work, right? It must. So, you fought in a lot of wars, right? You've never had anything like Ragnarok on your side? I have. And the creature does not guarantee our victory. Right. He's referencing the fact that he had an army of titans and they all got wiped out real easy. Yep. <laughs> Much to the disappointment of many God of War fans, but hey, what happens, all right? The titans weren't a good idea. The gods wiped them out historically. Why'd you rig them back just to get wiped out again? You fools. You should have just gone back in time to when Zeus was a baby and, I don't know, stepped on him. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what you do when you have time travel, right? That's the meme. You're quiet. Step on babies. Yeah. I mean, just any. you're always quiet, but... This feels different. I had hoped my days of ceaseless battles were over. I had hoped to never see my son go to war. Father, I know we're doing the right thing. Ragnarok has to happen. The price we and others paid for this war is high. It will only get higher. It'll be worth it. Father, how did it go? And yes, my usefulness to a certain Vanium Nocti did run out. Ragnarok awaits our call. As do the armies of hell. Thanks mostly to me. It seems war is upon us at last. What else do you know of the mask? Only that it was the great passion of Odin's life. He journeyed across Adir's burning ocean into the heart of the silent matron herself to find it. Lost every man in his crew, but to hear him tell it, it was worth all that blood and more. Oh, hey. I had a feeling you might pop in here. You know everybody's meeting in Midgard, right? Hey, y'all, uh, I just wanted you to know if you need anything at all, I'll be around. Either here or at Brock and Sindri's old shops. Yeah, I know we're all busted up inside today, but, you know, I for one like to keep busy. Well, this is it then. The beginning of the end. The end for Odin. And after that, a new beginning for the rest of us. Atreus. I know. I'm just looking forward to seeing all the realms finally standing up to him. Elves and dwarves and hell itself. You are so certain they will unite. They have to. After everything they've been through. They have to. 
don't they? <laughs> so, sounds like things went well enough in Muspelheim. I mean, probably. Surtur didn't want some more involved. So instead of them combining to form the Ragnarok beast, we did a workaround that left her out of it. Well, hopefully he still shows up at Ragnarok to plunge his sword into the heart of Asgard. And where is that exactly? Only Surtur knows. Brother, about the oracles of your lands, would you say they manipulated events? Did they have an agenda? I do not doubt they held their own interests first, but in my experience, they could be easily fooled by their own prophecies. Would that be a specific experience, brother? Hmm. Once, I sought the Oracle for a means to break my bondage to Ares. One priestess had visions that showed her Olympus would be brought to ruin by the God of War. Therefore, she helped me, intending to undermine Ares and protect her realm. She did not foresee that I would kill him and take his office. In the end, I proved her vision of doom correct. So the Oracle herself brought about the very future she hoped to avoid. I suppose we're in fine company at that. <laughs> There's a lot of that in this game. A lot of yeah. oh, story, yeah. I should say. The, uh, the... That's from one of the PSP games. I forgot which one because I never tell them apart. Someone said Ascension reference. Uh, is it Ascension? Ascension? I thought it was one of the PSP ones. The, the Furies. Oh no! You start talking. That's not the fury. Uh, the furies had gone. Well, I mean, no. The the uh, oracle fate, would be the one who cursed him with the the uh, ashes of his family, like that. That initially made him. Oh, he's met a lot of oracles. <laughs> you meet an oracle in Athens in the first game. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So I think most people are saying ascension. So I assume it's ascension. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I'll be gathered in their home realms, waiting for when we blow Gallarhorn. I was kind of hoping to see some of them here. When all the realm towers open at once, we'll see plenty, lad. Odin won't believe what's coming for him. No. Odin had lifetimes to prepare for this. Whatever grows deception, he heard the truth as tear. Do not underestimate him. Rousing speech, brother. Very inspirational. <laughs> the Valkyries look different. Welcome back. Hildesfini informed me of your success. We've been planning accordingly. Well... What would Ragnarok be without Ragnarok? Who else agreed to join us? I see the Valkyries. Better than that, they are reborn. Corporeal and uncorrupted, thanks to no small amount of Vanir magic. They're shield maidens now. Nice. And your brother? He came through. The elves called a truce to unite against Asgard. That gives us an advantage by air, and with Hel's army for a vanguard. What about Sindri? Will the dwarves fight? We haven't heard from him, but there's time yet. And I think we have what we need to clear a path for the Ragnarok beast. Well, when you say it like that, why worry at all? Sigrun, it's good to see you so alive. Oh, yes, I wasn't myself when last we met. I'm glad you're safe. My queen. The Shield Maidens will be divided among the forces breaching from Alfheim, Helheim, and here in Midgard. We stand ready. Kratos, Atreus, Mimir, please excuse me. Oh. Good night, then. Freya, have you determined our path out of Asgard? If the towers are the way in, we count on them being the way out. And if they are not? Then we all know what we signed up for. Our plan is only missing one thing. A Damn. leader. That honor is yours. Hmm? Pretty much just to acknowledge what they that there's a good chance we're all dead. Oh, yeah. Might be a suicide mission. One way trip. You have a righteous claim. <laughs> and the respect of your troops. And you have faced this enemy before. I held his invading army to a stalemate. This is our invasion. A siege on his terrain. I want our most experienced wartime general in the field. I don't care about the honors. I don't care about the prophecies and champions. I just need us to win. Freya. I know what I'm asking. Just sleep on it. Here we are. Kratos, your tent is to the right, and Atreus, yours is to the left. Mine? A young warrior needs his own space, don't you think? I do. Wow. Thanks. Sleep on what we spoke of. 
Let me know in the morning what you decide. But yeah, so logistically we're all set, basically. Yep. That just lines up how everything's working. We've got a bunch of foot soldiers in the form of undead people, a bunch of flying people in the form of elves, and then Ragnarok Beast is going to show up, hopefully. Mm. And, and uh, then whatever Sindri has maybe prepared, we and, might have as well. And the Valkyries. And the Valkyries. Did they already tell the new name? Uh, Shield Maidens? Shield Maidens, yeah. Excuse me. May I have a moment with Nanir? I don't know what tomorrow brings, but if tonight is our last night, I'd like to spend it feeling something besides hate. We has got a tongue and two horns. Sorry. There's nothing I'd like yeah. more. Except perhaps a dance. Yet do I may have lost a step? Do you respect love? I don't tell silly stories. You only tell silly stories. <laughs> I can never argue with you. Once again, there's deliveries from uh, Alistair Duncan. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's uh, they almost said it a little bit there of just like it was awkward that he was like, "Oh, we go, we, we're going, I guess. No more talking." And it's like, "Nah, they they actually do because there's there's a lot of history those two have. We got lots of pieces of it throughout both games." Obviously, yeah, there's a whole really... side side quest uh, about Sigrun. Uh, you actually get some extra dialogue here, I think, uh, in this scene when you do it. But I completely forgot what it was. I sleep here tonight? It's cold as fuck. your mind I can't when I will tell you a story if I fall asleep promise you'll finish it tomorrow And he, he called. 
called for death to come to him. And when death arrived, Just like Mahler's voice lulling my wife to sleep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Out of context. That's... <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's lots I want to say about this. So, one of the things some people say is like, what? He wants to sleep with his... What? And it's like, okay, so, first of all, you've got to remember, <sighs> number one, that uh, Atreus and Kratos sleep in like the same room, so to speak, back in their little cabiny place. Just because... He wants to be right next to him to make sure he can... But sometimes gods arrive and try to kill them. Uh, it's this thing that happens. Yeah, so, it's... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's absolutely what they're used to. They, they're still at the point of, you know, Atreus trying to leave the nest, so to speak, and do be his own man, that sort of stuff. But uh, at the same time, there's another factor. Yeah. He thinks he's gonna fucking die. Yep. Kratos thinks he's gonna fucking die. This could be the last time they get to spend any time that's not just fighting other people, basically. Uh... Super, super meaningful, super, super important. But the thing Atreus says before this gets started up, when he's like, oh, I can I can help you sleep by telling you a story, says you got to finish it tomorrow, as if to imply, like, you, there's going to be time to finish this story between now and when we wake up and go fucking die in a war. Like, it's, mm. it's like a hopeful comment, almost. And then what's the story about? Pretty simple. Guy carrying logs, gets all tired, and then wishes for death to come. Um, what do you, what do you think, what do you think Kratos is trying to say with this? Kind of, uh, I think from God of War 3 up until now, uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's kind of not exactly pushed away the idea of just actually dying. Yeah, uh, it's, pretty uh, much. He's had a pretty rough life, and, um, we will get more, but I think it's super meaningful that, sort of, so to speak, in-universe, in real time, his story is cut short because Atreus has fallen asleep. Mm -hmm. But his story is cut short at the moment of him saying when death arrived. And and the story is about how the guy was motivated to call for death. When death arrived, and then he looks down and is interrupted by Atreus having fallen asleep. The idea there, I think, that we're supposed to grasp already is that Atreus is the thing that... It's making him hesitate. On, on mm -hmm. the thought of death, yeah, which is already pretty fucking meaningful, and uh, we haven't even gotten the, the, the next half of this story, which we will get. I suppose it's worth pointing out, is that there's a comment on the uh, prior stream, you can guys go find it, about how it's pretty neat that such a, an important payoff is a father telling his kid a bedtime story. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty fucking cool to have in something that's this popular, this level of mainstream. It's just like that's that's awesome. sense of you. Damn fine woman she was. Apart from her taste in men, of course. Mm. She was a special woman. She wanted to protect people. She was here. She saw every step we took before we took it. Like she was always with us. Watching over us. Leading us home. my request upset you?
F is a natural part of life, my love. I wish only to be prepared for when my time comes. We mortals must do such things. I am glad to have you prepare with me. You are quiet? I have nothing to say. Well, say something. I enjoy hearing your voice. A funeral pyre. I would have chosen different. Oh? Mm. In my land, we entomb our loved ones. You would have me trapped in the ground for eternity. I would have you close to me. How touching. My rotting corpse would bring you such comfort. <laughs> we once tried to take charge of your ending, did you know? That was different. Circumstance, yes. But not on purpose. to better a future that will exist without me whenever that day comes for you and for our son. We will always walk together, Kratos. You will always be a part of me. I will always be a part of you. And when you are gone, that part of me dies as well. See? You feel your absence. No. Culmination of love is grief. And yet we love, despite the inevitable. We open our hearts to it. When the pyre is spent, and you have gathered my ashes, spread them from the highest peak in all the realms. You will do this for me. is to have loved fully. Open your heart to the world as you have opened it to me and you will find every reason to keep living in it.
probably worth pausing there. Yeah. Well, oh, there you have the... the... Yeah, so she only gets three the... scenes and they're oh, okay. excellent and critical. Yes. Because mm -hmm. now we got the final part where, of those uh, little seeds that, that have been peppered through these little, little flashback scenes, dream sequences, whatever you want to call them. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember the... the... <clears throat> the order in which they came, but the one was, oh, we need to look, we need to take response. We don't need to do something only if it, when it comes to us, we can prevent it before that happens, if we have the power. And uh, yeah, this is obviously, hey, if you look around, there's plenty to live for. You don't, you don't need to be so, so negative, basically, all the time. That's like one of the things uh, she said as well. The way to put it, um, the yeah. the three put together are all like foundational, uh, as you said, seeds that she planted mm -hmm. that he's come to understand and realize like throughout the twenty eighteen game and this one. The first being help beyond yourself. The second yeah. being um, your past doesn't define your future, mm -hmm. and your the third being a double whammy of loved ones when lost are still with you, and that is uh, almost accentuated by the grief you feel from how hard you loved them, which, how could it not align with everything he went through in the original trilogy? Why Why was he so fucking angry? Why did he kill everything? Because he loved his wife and kids so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, the fundamental. We just got it, a big scene before that one, about how he's considering very seriously for a long time killing himself, or at least not preventing his own death. And clearly that's something he shared with her. Uh, mm -hmm. He would have shared everything with her by the looks of things. And he's trying to explain to him that all he needs to do is basically love again, despite the fact that he knows it can end in horrors and pain, because that's the price you pay. Kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it's, 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 it's everything you need now to understand the full conversion Kratos had from original trilogy guy to guy at beginning of 2018 and we've had everything to explain us from then to now as well uh all of these yeah. lessons that he's come to understand they were all put in his head from an early point on when he was just this raging psycho who wants to be left alone he's pretty much become a much more fully well-rounded person and yeah. look, look around us <clears throat> in the storyline how many people do we now know and trust like, yep, it's it's gone so far beyond just him and just him and his wife, just him and his son, just him, his wife, his son, and some blacksmiths. Now we're we're involving so many people, and what are we trying to do as well? Save realms, um, and we're we're yet to get the bigger payoffs for all of this as well. It's still not quite done. Yeah, we, you you get even more of that in side quests again. Obviously, those are not all in here because then we wouldn't even be halfway through <laughs> this coverage. No. Um. But in, I think it's in Vanaheim, I think. It might be. If you go around with Freya, Freya and do the, uh, the Freya shrines, so that, that weird glowy shrine you, uh, that Freya has. Oh, and... where, where she got married to Odin? Uh, is, it, is it those ones you're talking about? No, 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 no. Uh, and no, wait, it's in, in Alfheim. It's not Vanaheim. It's in Alfheim. Oh, okay. Uh, in, the, in the desert areas with the, with the doggo sleds in the sand. Uh, there, Kratos says, uh, says something. It's like, oh yeah, uh, I'm doing these things now, helping, putting up this monument again. Because Freya basically says, why are we doing this now? Like these haven't been on for like centuries, basically, or for a very long time. It's like, oh, it's just we can we can put around some some seeds, so maybe these two uh, elven factions can become one together in the future and make this like oh, a little. The jellyfish, right? Like the big giant jellyfish. That's that... one of the parts. It's like this, okay. the the whole side questing is basically making the realm a bit better, even though it's probably not going to do anything for the war itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, yeah, and, it, and honestly, I think that and the crater is also that, like the dragons in the crater. And gameplay wise, I think those were kind of my favorite parts of the yeah. game. But point being, uh, at some point, uh, Freya asks, why are, we, why are we even doing this? And Kratos basically says, oh, yeah, my wife told me 
if you put some seeds down and people have to think about it to want it, they have it right here. We can do just so much. We can't just tell them, hey, make peace. We have to pepper some seeds around and then we just have to hope they come around and realize they've been not doing the right thing. And the same thing has now happened to Kratos because Faye has put down these seeds when they first met and now everything is growing basically and uh, yeah here and we are as is worth mentioning she uh is not some angelic character that provided him all of the answers he needed she was going through basically the same thing uh, we find yes. out she uh as a point of revenge damaged an entire group of people in an attempt to fight thor and uh that's what the axe was made for and uh it didn't go well and mm -hmm. it gives a very different understanding to the line uh, we're, we're not our mistakes <laughs> and yeah she, she's working on herself and Kratos but she also knows because she's a giant exactly when she's going to die and clearly that was the scene or we, we saw the flashback of when she finally told Kratos and then tried to explain to him like you know when I'm gone you don't lose the different motivations you've gained from having met me to do different things mm -hmm. Which is pretty much echoed with him and Atreus in Helheim. Pretty much the same thing. And uh, Kratos, after all these experiences, he's really coming to make this a part of his operation instead of just arguments he's heard. Yeah, and that takes time as well. It was like Metal said, <clears throat> the seeds were planted, but in terms of fully coming to appreciate those lessons, it's kind of now that it's all starting to uh, slot into place. What's going on? It is time. I'll meet you outside, Father. Sir. Put that game face on. Mm hmm. We'd hope to fly into battle with you one more time, my queen. Me too. But not as your queen, as sisters. Are you ready? Yes. I will be your general. It will be an honor to fight alongside you, General. Aye, brother. I'll be right by your side. So, what are your orders? To the temple. You have seen Sindri. Yeah. He ain't in a good place right now. But who is? I'm sorry, Lunda. I know you and Brock... Just tell me you're gonna get Odin. Tell me, whatever it takes, you're not letting that bastard walk away from this. You will not. Damn right. And if in the process you happen to tear him a bucket load of new holes in places he don't want them, I'll be rightly obliged. Historically, you should ask him the right guy. General. Yeah. Sir? General? General? Sir. Hey, bud. Uh, General. I came to these lands to escape my past, to start a new life. I can hide no longer. I do not want this war. 
We have suffered enough. Prophecy did not lead us here. Nor will it win this battle. Wars are won by those that are willing to sacrifice everything. If that is the cost of vengeance, so be it. Odin has taken so much from us already. The realms have suffered enough. No matter the cost. This ends today. If going out in a blaze of glory means that Odin burns too, might as well be. A big fat smile on my face. Brock. somewhere uh yeah the shit's real epic <laughs> i didn't yeah, feel is. comfortable interrupting it i'm sorry <laughs> it's just yeah. too good I, I like a lot about how it was staged too like yeah. I, I think uh, having it be in what's effectively an empty hall like an empty dark hall it kind of had it almost seemed like a stage play like it was like they were you know delivering monologues in a spotlight and it makes some sense that that building's been shut down since the end of the last game and mm. yeah they're coming back there and then all the spectacle starts i like that it was pretty mellow in the way it was shot what was uh i guess to try and go from the beginning the the speech he gave involved like an uh, acknowledgement that he's been desperately trying to avoid war no matter what almost out of a, a sense of fear of what's going to come as a result of it but seemingly he's come around to the idea that like uh, not addressing it would be worse um, and that it's time to take charge and that they, the people need a leader, right? That's what is uh, coming into being a general um, but also wars are won by those who are willing to sacrifice everything and Freya followed up with saying at whatever cost so interesting to consider those against what Kratos said earlier about Groa's prophecy he said did she did she, you know, know what it would cost us? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's going to be coming up very soon at this point. But yeah, uh, something that makes this so heavy, uh, or at least helps, is that Tia's Temple in the 2018 game, it's such a heavy and gradual, almost laborious process to be able to move between realms, and it's something that not many people can do, and you need lots of mm -hmm. materials to be able to do it. And uh, opening each doorway... It's like an important element, and we haven't been here, like was said, since the end of the 2018 game, mm. um, at least in that room. And so having this horn, and it's already been set up exactly what it does, uh, so then comboing that up with the fucking theme, nice and slow, revealing each of the doors lighting up uh, all at once this time, and then knowing that the idea is that we all need to take on Asgard and Odin. Um, pretty sufficiently epic as well as Kratos reasonably at this point in the story getting to the point of leading all of these realms and these people into war that uh, particular track like that section is my favorite piece of music in the whole game yeah I can see that yeah, pretty I darn good um, 
So yeah, it's uh, it's wartime, folks, and oh. see how it turns out. After Niflheim next. They're trying to shut out Regan. We've got to stop those war machines. Not an ideal start. to do. So before I let it continue, I just think it's, uh, it's a neat way to start that we have, you get more information on how uh, Ingrid ended up here and what the nature of that sword and Freya is, is to do with like some declaration that he'd only ever give up the sword if it was uh, he he met a woman that he fell like head over heels in love with, and Odin created like a. I think it, it, either he turned into that woman himself, or he created mm -hmm. one or something. But basically, tricked Freya into believing someone was real, and so got the sword basically through that. Uh, and so he's gotten it back. You can find that. I can't remember where, but it's uh, it's in the game. Um, mm -hmm. and then yeah, having it be that uh, Freya's really happy to see the elves. Of, you know, united and are attacking. And then do you see his reaction like when a whole bunch of them got blasted by Thor? Like, <clears throat> yeah. can't help but assume he's feeling a little like, uh, fuck. Like, I got all these people here and they're all gonna get fucking killed. And so I just like that he, that prompts him to grab the sword and he's, he's going ham. He's uh, getting stuck in. And then of course, yeah, you've got, everyone's here basically. The towers are open, but they're getting attacked by the war machines we saw set up by Odin earlier. The dwarves yeah, created yes. for him. The elves are attacking from above, and Thor's already trying to wipe them out. We got the army of the dead are going to be just running forward, basically. And uh, the first, probably most important thing is to knock out those war machines before they knock out the towers that provide the armies, basically. Mm hmm. Oh, yes, you're letting the music play. Of course. It's really good. Just that, try, try and get a no sense of what they're trying to capture with this music yeah exactly as yeah. it keeps going it starts to get more and more uh downbeat like tragic yeah tempo is very slow too it's like 50 beats a minute not what you'd expect for a massive epic fight but it really works Yeah, Skull and Hazi are here. Yay! As well as Fenrir. <clears throat> See, I, I, this sequence is, you could call it a, a set piece or almost something of an interactive cutscene, but because you are actually still doing the combat in the game, I I really prefer it a lot to the a tap X to progress. I just the, the war is happening. All of the logistics yeah, are in place. Know, like, we're a part of it. We're we're dealing significant damage to a lot of their forces. And there's lots happening in the background as well. Like in, at some point, you can see like German Gander and Thor fighting, and yeah. Thurder fucking shit up. It's like it's busy. It feels busy. Destroying fire giants, but I suppose this 
Desperation is better than nothing. Was that? It was. Odin's new Valkyrie Queen is Gnar. This comes from things. I would think so. Then we must hurry. Jormungandr! A welcome sight! But he didn't follow us from Midgard! Curious! You'll keep Thor busy at least! They sound eager. Good. made it after all. The snake looks different. He is different. But when I was away, uh, uh, never mind, later. The Einherjars link to Valhalla. My sisters and I must sever it. Go. Still no sign of the dwarves. Sindri won't let us down. We have to trust him. Mm. Rally all you can. We will make for this fall of Huntawa. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if you're paying attention, we've lost any more elves we've only got what we have now and uh, mm -hmm. the army of the dead is locked off as well which leaves basically all of the major components that managed to get in through their towers respectively so it's not looking great but the main goal of course is to breach the the walls floor and then get in and uh solve the mask plot line stop odin probably bump into thor and then facilitate ragnarok being Surtur's arrival but of course, right now, it seems that Serta isn't arriving. Mm. Odin's in for it now. <laughs> I know, I'm late. Where is your army? No more dwarves are dying for this. Sin, we... Save it! Odin forced them to build those war machines. And I'm here to tear them down. Before you break them, we must turn them on the floor. Fine. Leave it to the dwarves to clean up after the giants. Pretty interesting line. Considering, yeah. Uh, this wall was built by Hrimthur, right? Hrimthur, I think, who was a giant. Uh, and yeah, just leave it to the dwar the dwarves who canonically throughout all of this just build everybody's fucking armor, weapons, and technology, and are abused, and turned into like a a community that's just basically taken advantage of by everybody. It's just this this rage coming out of Sindri is. Uh, it's almost just like an unheard voice throughout the whole thing of, uh, yeah, what, what, what is the deal with the dwarves? Which, in a funny way, mm -hmm. almost, is the dwarves seem to be the most thriving out of all of them, but only <clears> if they concede to literally every last whim that Odin has. That's the reality. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a fun one. And so, um, yeah, all you have to infer is that Sindri's got knowledge and access uh, thanks to what the dwarves likely had a hand in, considering... Uh, Durlin doesn't seem to exactly be very pro Odin, and he seems to also sound like, like be pretty into these uh, War Machines creation. So, yeah. What bloody time he showed up!
yeah, since there's going to be a lot happening all at once, we're going to try and get to lots of different things. Uh, so that was probably something they had built in as a failsafe on yeah, purpose to let. I would these, say so. These machines were devastating uh, the good guys' side, and they've all fallen apart that quickly. It's, it's there it must have been something that they would have had planned for that. And uh, that is worth putting up as well. The hammer that Sindri is using is the one that Brock was using in this game as well, well before. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't, I haven't checked, but I have it on good authority that it is the hammer you got for Brock in 2018 game when he put you on Andvari's quest. So it's yeah. just carrying forward all these details that make it that much more meaningful. When this scene happened is when I was like, oh, I feel like I might end up liking the Sindri stuff after all. Um... A lot, of, a lot of people just fell over who seem to be operating those machines. Yeah. Let's uh, see what happens next. More or less what you wanted. I, I didn't want this. No. Close your heart to it. Close your heart. Who are they? My guardians. Odin took them in. They shouldn't be here. They're not soldiers. Odin put them in our path to die. It's war. Wars are won. By those who are willing to sacrifice. Everything. What are you doing? Son, listen closely. You feel their pain because that is who you are. And you must never sacrifice that. Never. Not for anyone. I was wrong, Atreus. I was wrong. Open your heart. Open your heart to their suffering. That is your mother's wish. And mine as well. Today, so. Today. We will be better. But... What can we do? See the size of that thing? I think we're gonna win. I mean, if they don't kill us first. Why have you stopped? Ragnarok is here. We finally have Odin right where we We will stop Odin. But we did not come to sacrifice the innocent. We will breach the wall at Rimpa's flaw. With what army? Atreus and I will be enough. That's suicide. It may be. But we will die seeking justice, not vengeance. Can that weapon break open the flaw? Only one way to find out. You three. Get those people to safety wherever you can find it. We will see it done. Frey and I will do what we can to slow Ragnarok. He was not mindless before. See if he will listen to reason. <laughs> Odin will not get away. If he does, so help me. I know. Valky! Ah! No! No! Protect them! I will help those that are trapped. And meet you at the fall. Go! Go, Atreus! We have lots to talk about. Yes. So Everything good that any of these characters do is because of Ingrid from here on out. Oh, well, that, that Ingrid save, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so that pays off pretty much almost everything for Kratos' big arc that he's had from the beginning of 2018 to now. Uh, the close your heart to it stuff, it starts out as a message relating to how you can make it through a harsh and violent world where you take care of yourself and you don't entertain much beyond your enemy other than kill them. This is uh, reflected in many encounters. And as the games go on, we get to learn more and more about the people we're fighting and how much more complicated the situation is. And we get several references, and this is what Kratos has been alluding to many times over about the cost of the war. And when he's bigging up his, his army to go to war, he says, you sacrifice everything. And it's something that resonated with Atreus almost immediately, along with Close Your Heart. And um, uh, the, uh, the line from Freya, at any cost... And we, we blow up these machines, which is a great boon to our side. Uh, it's going to make Serta pretty much unstoppable. But who, why are the people screaming and why is Atreus upset? What's happening? Uh, aren't those, like, what's the dealio with them? And then Atreus says, like, they were, they were rescued. They weren't soldiers. They, they're just people. And then Kratos starts putting it together. It's like, oh, because this is what Odin does. Mm -hmm. puts innocent people in the way of you trying to stop him from doing awful things so that you become a horrible person by trying to beat him at any cost, right? Yeah. And that's, uh, and this is it. This is the breaking point. No, not at any cost. Enough. Uh, no. Every every decision he ever makes is at any cost, usually. But he's, uh, he's putting a stop to it this time. And of course, when... Atreus is like, well, how do you do that? And it's like, well, he's reordered everybody as a good general would to get the civilians out of the way, slow down Surtur so that we have enough time to get in and sort our shit out before Asgard is donezo, basically. And uh, yeah, the fact that uh, he and the elves are going to now try and get people out through whatever portals are available. Um, it's just representative of, of a significant change in operation. You might even say he has made a choice here to change his nature as, in a yep. significant way. Um, yeah, and Od Odin pretty much put these people there as soon as he knew that shit's about to hit the fan for him, if I recall correctly. Because we, when, when we first see them arrive here, they're still building up their little huts and everything, so they just moved here. Uh, yeah, you can see them building it. He's uh... yeah. So it's a very recent thing that happens, and it's very calculated because it's a piece of shit. <laughs> um. So something I wanted to read. Uh, it was from the the previous stream. Since it's now relevant, I'm going to read the okay. whole thing, and I'm going to talk about it. All right. It's a grievance someone has with this scene. Oh. Okay. Okay. Go for it. I'll be right back. Door. Sorry. Carry on. I still don't yeah. like the open your heart scene at the end of the game, because when Kratos said it the first time, he had just battled Boulder, and Atreus said he understood killing animals for food and Draugr that were already dead, but what about people? In response, Kratos says, close your heart to it. On our journey we'll be attacked by all manner of creature. Close your heart to their desperation, close your heart to their suffering, do not allow yourself to feel for them, they will not feel for you. This was proven later when Atreus had just killed a cannibal reaver who wanted to kill and eat him with no empathy or remorse for his child victim. Kratos saw the horror and guilt on Atreus' face and he said, close your heart to it, as a reminder of what he said. All of this was beautiful in a growing up moment as Atreus is uh, being prepared for manhood and facing the world by a rational, protective, and competent father. All good fathers know that it's their job to keep their kids grounded and realistic so they can make it through life. I love these moments until the writers of Ragnarok strawmanned the first game with that scene. Atreus said, I know, I know, close your heart to it. Meanwhile, I was yelling at the screen saying, no, you idiot, those are random civilians, not people attacking you like in the first game. Kratos, go remind your retarded son what you said. Then Kratos comes, opens his mouth, and says, no, I was wrong. Open your heart to them. At that point, I'd lost it. I was like, these writers just character assassinated Kratos and ruined the best moment from the first game and butchered the context of the quote with their low-IQ, potato-brained, revisionist historian uh, oh, take. Oh, no. So. Uh. I want to I wanna resist anyone's, anyone's interest in being like, wow, what a crazy wrong person. I, I think it's fair. I think that, that they've come to a conclusion that is understandable. I think they're missing a few bits that turn it from 
what seems like a potential fail or character assassination to what I would argue is kind of genius. Um, Kratos isn't un, uh, uh, incorrect in the first game where he says, when shit attacks you, don't try to go like, oh man, I feel bad for you, when yeah. it's like at your throat or whatever. That shit keeps you alive, and that's what his primary goal is at that point. The thing is, it's, it's only a slight variation on a lot of what he's operated on in his whole life. It's not like in the original games, uh, the people who he's killing were like not trying to kill him a lot of the time. A lot, a lot of it is that. Uh, even I, I, I wanted to highlight before with some people that he even resisted killing Hera. One of the the first examples of him being like, you know what? Maybe I won't. But uh, she kind of goads him a little further, and then he goes for it. Now, the context of these cannibals coming after you. Uh, close your heart to them is, is more so in reference to the act of killing a human being as opposed to mm -hmm. understand the plight of the cannibal. Uh, that's not what this game's suggesting. What's happening in this scene, you have to bear in mind, because I have a feeling you may have forgotten, the Midgardians are indeed innocent, but they yeah. are soldiers in a war right now. Uh, you can argue they were placed there by Odin, and therefore they don't count the same as a cannibal trying to eat you for his own, I don't know, starvation. But the fact is, like, Kratos had to clarify with Atreus who these people are, because why are you reacting the way you are? They're attacking us. They manned the machines. They were trying to, you know, prevent our efforts to stop Odin's uh, the whole plan. And Atreus is trying to point out, like, oh yeah... They are the enemy. They are trying to kill us. I need to close my heart because it's going to prevent me from doing what needs to be done, which is winning the war. And we do that by any cost. And that's the, the, the nature in which you achieve that is by closing your heart. It makes you stronger at being able to push through. But Kratos is finally realizing, you know, that doesn't actually account for all situations. There's a lot of... This is pretty much a hypothetical brought to life. What if yes. the soldiers you are fighting are literal civilians that were dropped in place under the promise of being kept alive and told to man machines and press buttons until good things happen? And you rush in there as they are enemy combatants, so I kill them. You can do that, and it'll keep you safe. But maybe there's more to it. Maybe realizing that these guys are just people who have been dropped in place by a fucking psychopath that wants to use them for that very reason prompts you to have a little bit extra on this advice. Maybe you shouldn't close your heart to your enemy, open your heart and understand their motivation, their intentions, and their consequences of their actions, their nature, rather than their form. Uh, I think it's perfect as a final development of Kratos' sort of advice for survival. And it dovetails perfectly as a opposite to God of War 3 where he annihilated his enemies at the cost of everything, and the whole civilization was destroyed. Meanwhile, the here... fundamental change in the way that he operates now, instead of just bringing about destruction, he can sort of be an agent... Well, not even sort of, he can be an agent for good. Yeah, this isn't killing civilians who are running for their lives and collecting their health orbs. This is no. realizing that your enemy combatants really aren't as guilty of their position as you'd imagine, and maybe they could be offered something a little more than just death. Even though you wouldn't be considered an evil person for offering them that. And this is playing on this wide battlefield among the realms. But think about what I just said in terms of the next encounter Kratos is about to have in a significant way. An enemy that maybe if you offer some more understanding and complexity to the issue, you could kill them, or you could try something else, if you maybe open your heart instead of close it off. Um, so, like I said, I, I think I get how you got there, but I still don't think that's what's happening. And I think they made it pretty clear. These guys uh, have been paying close attention in terms of referencing their own scenes, and a lot of it comes back around as a loop. When Kratos gave the advice about close your heart in the original, or in the 2018 game. I don't think at the time he was being told about the potential of an innocent civilian group being forced to man machines they didn't even understand to fight a war they didn't want to fight. And so his advice is insufficient. Pretty good, 
but it's not quite full. So um, yeah, that would be my take. Now it is. And it's why I quite adore this scene. And it's important it takes place yeah. here at the climax of a significant decision in the battle. And I like that Freya has a sense of pushback, mm -hmm. but she doesn't follow through despite having said earlier at any cost. And it's because of that side mission that we told you guys about. She's the queen of Asgard. These people are as guardians at this point. You're just going to let them all die because they're in your way? Or are you going to fight for them? Are you going to do something for them? And, and this is why I think she's willing to take the break as well on the sort of pinpoint focus on Odin. Don't be like him. Well, I was about to say, because yeah. Odin would do anything. He, at any cost, right? It doesn't matter. It's all about his ultimate aim. You don't want to be like him, though. You want to be better, right? Yeah, so... Uh, that's why I, I just I just think the scene is so fucking on point, and it's it's Absolutely. this climax of the battle where a significant decision takes place, and it's so cool. It, the role of general's not arbitrary. He gives his orders before and after, and the uh, the, the after ones are so controversial, and yet everyone follows because that's the role he was given and accepted. And uh, it's time, I guess, to see the results of that decision. Yes. Sentry! Be careful and stay behind me! You be careful. I'm here to fight. Sentry! Can't let it control me. Yes, you get to play as the bear. <laughs> yeah, Man, uh, the the amount oh of restraint the uh, the the makers of this game had, they could have just put that in as a as a second transformation. You could choose like another another rage mode or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, nope. you you first you see him. I mean, it goes throughout the whole game, right? Like in the beginning, he's just going on an absolute rampage. He just kills another bear, has no control. We don't even know what's gonna happen. And Kratos has to just bring him out of it, literally. Like, he puts him in the fucking headlock of the bear, and it's like, shit, that's Atreus, what's going on? And then a second time we see it, he fucking knocks out Sindri and goes away. And both times he doesn't even remember that happened. And needs to be told that's happening. Then the third time is when we fight the Valkyries, and there we don't even get to play as, uh, as the bear. He's just using it. You, he's like the... He's well, it's little, a finisher little, out of little, desperation. Finish out of... Yeah, exactly. Like with his dad to defeat the enemies. But, like, I would say it's worth mentioning the, the wolf progression too, right? Because, like, what he's referencing right, when he right. says, I've got to stay in control, this is everything he learned with Angraboda in Ironwood, yeah. which is, by the way, not a worthless part. <laughs> There's stuff in not, there that's not. useful <laughs> to the story. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, she talked the way... about... She talked about oh, bringing the bear out or bringing the wolf out with... Uh, a particularly strong emotion that doesn't have to be rage and that maybe yep. those emotions can lead you back to some level of control and of course the motivator here is Sindri's in trouble exactly which dovetails pretty well with one of the last times you brought out the bear was it, it attacked Sindri now it's and I think I think there's something there for Sindri going ha 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 like watching the bear you know yeah. chop these two guys in half in front of him yeah it's pretty, pretty great. Uh, they did a very good job of those transformations. You can't go wrong with the theme either. Oh, it's not bad. What? You want to thank you? No, I just want. I don't care what you want. This changes nothing.
really had me believing you that we didn't have to be enemies. Dude, you're okay. My mom was right about you all along. You're a killer just like your father, and you're here to kill us all. No, just Odin. <laughs> I got the best thing Sidra, to say. No. <laughs> She's a friend. Friends don't bring the end of the world to each other's doorstep, Loki. You're right. You're right. I, I made some bad decisions. You do that a lot. I'm not sure that's a defense. It's not a defense. I just want to make it right. Is Skjolder okay? Have you seen him? Why wouldn't he be? What are you talking about? Odin is willing to sacrifice the Midgardians. He put them along the wall to try and deter us, knowing they can't fight. Their deaths are just meant to slow us down. Why would he do that? And how am I supposed to believe you? Because he's right. It's who Odin is. It's who he's always been. Mom, why are you here? What? He'll sacrifice anyone at a problem with one of him. The Guardians. Your friend. Our family, any of us. I had hoped that your father would stand up to him, but now it, it has to be you. Mom, what are you saying? I never doubted that you would make the finest Valkyrie these realms have ever seen. But not for him. Do you understand? But our family... Without Odin, we can be one again. A real one. What he's doing is wrong. He said if we held our ground, we'd be safe. He said we owed him. You don't owe him your death. Oh shit. Call back. Yes. Dad will never let them get their grandfather. Then go with him. He'll listen to you. Are you ready to go find the rest of your people? Yeah. So yeah, this is all super purposeful, right? So you have this war is happening. So the, the whole family realized at this point, this is the reckoning that's been long time, time coming. And it's the one chance to maybe actually make the difference. Sif, with everything she's seen so far, knows Thor can't do it. Thor isn't the one to take down Odin. So now she's trying mm -hmm. to encourage all the other components to work toward either convincing Thor to do it or to just work together to take down Odin themselves. And uh, what is Sif doing during this? She's she's trying to get the Mid Guardians out, and yep. So yeah, you you have this location sort of being uh, rude, realizing that which which side is going to be fighting on, and Sif just took the the opportunity to explain like, yeah, it's it's all true. Odin's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. So now, if we can get through the gate, the big problem's probably going to be Thor. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Finally. Oh, 
Hold on. Hold on. Who is the girl? Hi! Who's Thor's daughter? Thor's daughter? She's my friend! You fight well. My dad taught me. That much is clear. Yeah, well, wait. Sorry, Jesus. He's not. I know. That's where we gotta go. family cab. No more fucking games! And this time, I'm allowed to kill you. Rematch. Yeah, yeah. baby. We do not need to do this. We do. It's what we are. Music? Put them in my ear holes. Is that it's it's got a lot of meaningful things to say, but it's still also got these really cool battles yeah. <laughs> and really yeah. epic yeah. things. Like it's it's so uh it's it's so cool. <laughs> like that's it's such a cool <laughs> game. And it is um it is. same track you play against him in the first fight, but it's remixed now that it gets a bit heavier and more erratic as it goes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like you know. So, again, what Free just said, but now details. How fucking cool was all of that? He wrapped the <laughs> blades of chaos around Mjolnir. Thor, in response, electrocuted him down the chain into Kratos. Kratos then yanked it so hard he pulled Mjolnir off him and then wrapped it around and pulled himself over to him to stab him with the other blade. This is just yeah, is two gods of the highest of their power just fucking up each other. It's so awesome. Yeah. And yeah, Amazing. to get him off him, Thor did the equivalent of Spartan Rage. Yeah, Spartan, well, I guess. Thunder Rage. Norse. A rage, no, a rage. rage. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was probably paint on Gimme God of War, I can imagine. What was that, sorry? Oh, that fight on Give Me God of War is probably an absolute pain. I mean, honestly, it, it's not 
too different from a moveset standpoint from the first fight with Thor, so it kind of feels familiar. It's sort of like, um... God, the, the, when you fight the first boss of Dark Souls 3 again towards the end of the game. Sorry, uh, puppies. Again. Then your One of us dies <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, that's... Alright, this part here. <laughs> Man, oh, I love that frame. It's so good. <laughs> so cool. Try to hurt her. Nope. I would not. Don't you know what I've done? Yes. But what will you do now? Yes! Yeah! No, we don't change. I destroy us! No more. No more. For the sake of our children, we must be better. Why isn't he dead? Are you talking? Who told you to do that? You don't talk! You don't think! I think you kill! It's a simple fucking concept! Sif was right about you. I just didn't want to see it. What is this? Are you broken? I am your father. Take the hammer and kill who I tell you to kill! I did not want this. No! Ruth, this was all their fault. They've done this to us, to our family. Looks like I gotta do everything around here. Oh, sorry. Still angry Matt, Thor, about that. Thor. <laughs> what, a, what a great character yeah. Thor is. And right there at the end, he is about to start the arc that Kratos yeah. went on. And yeah. Odin robs him of the opportunity. Fucking stabs him, that motherfucker. 
It is tragic. Yeah. It pisses me off in the best way that media could. Well, because like, it's what yeah. happened there. As soon as he dropped the hammer, or yeah. he immediately realized that Thor was no longer under his control. And yeah. his immediate reaction is, well, I got to get rid of him. Because yeah. if, if I don't control him, he can't be around. As if he's of no to use to me, he can't be of any use to anyone. Exactly. exactly. As in, like, I will, I, I, I need him to not be of use to anyone. Yeah. And then in, in, in classic Odin fashion, through season, it's like, it's their fault. They did this to us. Yeah. And like, uh, right after stabbing Thor. Like, <laughs> and he's smart enough to know, well, that's not working. I, fuck you, yeah. too. <laughs> like, his, his, yeah. like, his first. Like, yeets her away. Yeah, with like, almost reflexively, Mjolnir. he lies. Yeah, he's he's more than used to it, but he's also perceptive enough to know when it's not working. It's like <laughs> shit. Um, yeah, but yeah, Kratos doing the fucking chattiest move ever, looking at Thor holding Mjolnir above him. The framing they had where Kratos is just captured inside Thor, pretty much, mm -hmm. and he's the one who's like, "We stop now. We're done. That's it. Yeah, nope, we're done. That's it. We don't have to do this." And like every last fucking line from Thor in both the first and second fights and different pieces throughout just about how much he is what he is. There's no changing it. There's no point in changing yep. it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Don't feel. Just, you know what we are. This is what we're here to do. One of us dies. Yep. And, and uh, like, you don't know me. Don't try to appeal to me. You don't know who I am. But Kratos does know who he is. We've spent so much time in the 2018 and this game finding out about what Thor has done. But really, do they yep. match up with the kill count Kratos has? I don't even know. And that's why this is so fucking beautiful. Kratos is talking to his old self. Yes, exactly. exactly. He's trying to give yeah. someone who's going through the same thing, the same kind of chance of redemption that he's going through right now, trying to change. And yeah. Odin robs and him of, of course, it immediately. The the thing that works for Thor is making an appeal to uh, his daughter, essentially. is yes. like, you need to be better for the sake of the people that you care about. That's like the thing that's going to work for Thor. That's like what he needs. Yeah, um, because Kratos knows that would see. work for him. That's what it brought, brought him, him around. And, yeah, and, and I mean, and we've seen throughout a lot of interactions, right? Like, Thor cares about his family. He is upset about the deaths of his sons. And he is concerned about the fate of his daughter, or yes. what it may be. That's the thing to appeal to, is to preserve yeah. his family. And it worked. And that's why. And then Odin killed him, because it he was, couldn't let him... It was so genuine, too, when he reached for her, when he's dying. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. That man liked his daughter a lot. <clears throat> and it was what was going to be able to pull him out. But uh, yeah, Odin snatched it away, because... Obviously, Thor's only going to get in his way if he can't be his his hammer. And yeah, uh, I fucking love uh, Richard Schiff's expressions, depending on what Thor says. There's this moment where he clearly clicks as to like, ah, I gotta kill you then. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's deliberate that we don't see Thor's face when he says no. It's all on Odin's reaction. Yeah, because it's, it's, the, it's the first time he stood up to his father. It's like, are you broken? I yeah, the yeah, hammer, man. Kill who I tell you to kill. That's that's been the dynamic this entire time. Thor is a monster for what he's done, just like Kratos was. But uh, we understand why it happened. It doesn't need to keep happening. You can change Stop your thinking. nature. You you don't like thinking. You say that all the time. That's it. And uh, let's think just just before, which is. This is the thing, they, they're running all kinds of different comparisons, arcs, and parallels, and this was one they hadn't done, which is, what if, at the point of realization, it gets snuffed out? Like, it's, uh, this is why when people were saying, like, I hate how the, the happy ending of the game or whatever is like, hey, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy ending, that would be nice. You're up! You planned on! Who's gonna be fine? I saved her. I saved her. That one's on you. You turned him against me. You turned them all against me. Oh.
Everything you hoped for? Was your plan really all that much better than mine? I hope you got exactly what you want. Oh, oh. What? Not quite yet. <laughs> Think you're the only one who can craft a binding spell? I spent many long winters thinking about what I would say to you as I watched you take your last breath. But now, I realize there's only one thing I need you to know. You have no hold on me anymore! And that's my friend. I forgot how good you look with wings. Oh, husband. You always sought knowledge well. Now I'm going to teach you what it's like to lose everything. Bow to your queen. I always loved you. You know. You've never loved anyone. I'm going to pause there. Do I'm it. spotting lots of cringe in chat already, as expected. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Most. It's, it's expected. Nobody will. They can't, like, understand it. So they'll just be like, it's horrible. Like, why is she saying anything that she's saying? Go on. She give a guess. She is the queen of Asgard. Correct. <laughs> That's a good start, Mark, honestly. <laughs> literally the queen of Asgard. <laughs> Start out with the, the literal correctness of the statement. We can begin there. So, uh, what is what is Freya's story up to this point? It's like, oh yes, Odin destroyed every aspect of her life and whittled her down to almost nothing. And she has spent the entire game regaining portions of her life until she's finally got him at her whim. Uh, it's funny, some people were like, she sounds kind of evil in this speech. Yes, she's incredibly vengeance-driven right now. She's pretty oh, much yeah. explicit. This has been something she's been wanting to do forever. And she says, like... She, she so much as says at the beginning of her speech. She wants she, to cause him pain. You. She wants him to understand what it's like to lose. This is her villainous speech to an extent. She's obviously trying to just exact vengeance, which isn't exactly necessarily a bad thing in every single circumstance. The point is, she's uh, she's not exactly doing this as out of like the pure justice of removing the bad that is Odin. She's very fucking angry at this man. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, this is the first opportunity she's had to actually do something this time. Last time, obviously, she had to try and save Brock's life uh, to no avail. So, yeah, she, she, she says basically all of the things that regard like why she would do all of this and it's funny to me that everyone points out the bow to your queen moment when nobody takes issue with the fact that odin placed them with a magical spell to the point where they're essentially kneeling to him like do you get he it it's a power play with odin everything is he has to be in charge she's finally got him in a binding spell with a charged object he was using in, in trying to search for knowledge She's got one on him. He had, like, fucking whatever many on her. She broke them yeah. all with the help of Seagrin, Kratos, and Fimblewinter. And all the Vanya magic she had access to. She gets one on him. That doesn't even fully work, by the way. As you can see, she fucks it up. Or he fucks it up. However you want to look at it. Um, she has one opportunity to tell him to bow, and she takes it. I don't know, man. It's pretty fucking awesome. Freya, More, have you considered that you might be a simp? I'm, uh, well, so the thing is, I, I'm a simp to all of the characters, as far as I'm concerned. 
Mahler is a soy confirmed. Let's go. I just don't get it sometimes. Like, is it just we cannot have a scene where a woman tells a man to bow? No. There's no context in which it'll that allow. That is necessarily no, cringe. It's, wo it's woke cringe, Mahler. Necessarily. Inherently. Women are cringe. <laughs> so, um, and here opening them wings to show him she's free. Yeah. Cool as fuck. And like, of course, he says in response, like, ah, yeah, you always look so good with wings, because he's still a fucking viper with words. He knows exactly how to piss someone off. And yeah. in response, she strangles him again. Yeah, Odin's uh, not so easy to talk down to. Um, he's just into choking. He just so wants yeah. to be strangled more. Um, I think she has been destroyed and damaged thoroughly throughout the entire games. This is the first proper win she's had against her fucking hyper abuser. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, but Odin's the king. She can't do that to him. <laughs> it's like, okay. Our brains have been poisoned. A little bit. They need, to, they need to cleanse themselves of this infection that's rotting their minds. You need to fucking chill. Try and be a bit more, God forbid, I say, objective. I just, this is what I mean. Like, it, it doesn't... I, I don't understand. I never do, but it's fine. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> That's that's the, the that's the story as I saw it. It was a great payoff for Freya's entire journey. I don't even see how it could be seen as anything else. Uh, there's a couple more things for her to have happen, but this was a big moment as well. Um, but don't hey. worry, she didn't kill Odin. I know everyone was panicking because oh. that would have made the story bad automatically. But luckily it's for you, that's not what minus happened. two out of ten at least. You guys, you guys are gonna have a rough ride on Saturday, by the way. <laughs> just, oh, just God. saying. <laughs> Consider this foreshadowing. I have no idea. I got no fucking clue. We. I don't even think I have a clue. Uh, I know I don't have a clue. Maybe I'm lucky. It's gonna hit. Die before that. I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna hit me like a freight train, and I'm ready for it, or so I like think. Like a Freya train. Like a Freya train. Uh. <laughs> Father? Freya? You did it, Loki. No, 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 <laughs> no more fighting. No, none of that matters now. This is your moment, Loki. Groa tried to hide you from me, but this is your destiny. Champion of the Jotnar. Only he can put on a mask. Only he can gaze into the truth of creation. Unfold the secrets of life and death. No more doubt, no more confusion. You were born for this. Put on the mask. Loki, ask it, ask it the question. This is your choice, son. I trust you. Man, it's just, it's, that's, that's what it is. He's now, what, what was it all for? Yeah. Hmm. Damn. Yeah, man, that's, a, that's a good question to be asking at this point. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like he said, right? No more doubt, no more confusion. That's like his goal. He just wants certainty about the future. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like the uncertainty of existence of life. And so, like, he's determined at any, like, cost to, to be able to know that. Um, which has led to all this, and now 
well, yeah, what was all this for? All this destruction, the obliteration of Asgard, all of these things that he's done. What was the point of it now that that's been stolen from him totally, locked away forever? You got... What an interesting villain. Yeah. And that ultimate choice for Atreus, that was his hero's journey right there. That was everything he was asking for. This whole game was the truth, the knowledge, the understanding. And uh, seeing what it's done to all of these innocent people across the whole story, thanks to Odin's very same pursuit. And it's mm -hmm. like, why? So that you can get an answer to a question? Who knew, who even knows what you'll get from doing that shit? Yeah. Really? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you don't uh, even know what question's being asked. It is not worth the cost. Uh, and it's something that Atreus has decided to be true. Odin has not. And by doing right. so, oh, you've just made Odin have to deal with the fact that he's done so much fucking evil in his life, and it led f to <laughs> sunk nothing. Sunk cost. Sunk cost. Oh, yeah. He was <laughs> definitely along that line. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's gonna justify every move he made with that. We said, I, I, yeah. uh, he, he argued to Atreus at one point that this was gonna be what we can use to make the realms a better place. Like it was, it was always. Whatever power he gained from this, it was it, he was going to use it to make everything better, so it would be okay. Yeah. Also, Kratos giving Atreus the choice, of course. It's just like, yeah, I trust you. I mean, yeah. At this point, it's, it's his choice to make instead of yeah. Like you know, it's a it's big old journey flames, and yeah, I I think a Kratos would have guessed at this point what what. A decision he's probably going to make, but um, mm -hmm. actually overtly giving him that chance is uh, super important. The answer is 42. True. You voided a lot. Too late for that! For that! Fly! Odin theme, I assume. The All Father, yeah. Yeah. Pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Old Father. <laughs> the 
This was our Good chance, shit. Loki. That song is oh, it's hard not for me to pick that as my favorite. It's so it, fucking I good. I think Man. it's my favorite, but it's it's got a lot that's, of stiff competition. That's a, <clears throat> it's the first one I heard, first time I heard it all the not all the way through, but so long. It's uh, man, it's fucking excellent. <laughs> I uh, do really like it. I think my favorite is the main theme. I got I a really couple like favorites at this point. I'm, I'm I refuse to choose between them, but that one is phenomenal, and I love the combo up of just the. Kratos, Freya, and Atreus. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. If you go into the pause menu, by the way, you have them all three in there as well. It's kind wow. of a neat yeah. little detail, yeah. Could have had my answers. I could have learned the truth. You took that away from me. I could have made things better. We could have made the Nine Realms better. This was never about the realms or me. It was about you. You destroyed everything. My home, my family. My kingdom! You did those things! Your choices! You killed your own son! It wasn't my choice. I had no choice. There's always a choice! What choice do we have? There is always a choice! Ah! Uh, mm. Very, very good! Stop. You can choose to be better. No, I can't. I have to know what happens next. I will never stop. Why'd you have to say that? Sofna, Apra, Desu. Oh boy. Sofna, Hithan. Sofna. Sofna. I swore I would never rob from you the choice between life and death. I have waited so long for this moment. And now that I'm here, I don't need this to make me whole. We stopped his madness. That's all that matters. And that's in. why you never toss a dwarf. Yep. Um, go as far back as Odin basically admitting, like, there is nothing else for him. There is only finding mm -hmm. that out. That's it. And so he knowing that the, the cost will never go away, he'll always do it. And so fitting in with what decision these characters can make, considering... Uh, what we've been learning about trying to find a way to not always end everything with killing someone. You know, Atreus takes his soul, puts it into the marble, and Kratos doesn't feel the need to smash it himself or to do necessarily anything with it. He hands it to Freya to match the uh, the echo of what he told her in Vanaheim. And then she realizes that the damage he's caused or could cause is completely stopped by him being stored in a marble so mm -hmm. that can be it and this is the thing all three of these characters have come that far to be able to make that decision and they are still repercussions of everything that Odin has decided to do and yet looks like he's gonna make it until that other repercussion comes in the dwarf yep 
The dwarf who he wouldn't have given a second thought is the one that kills Odin. Because of that choice that he made to kill Brock, who he considered insignificant and annoying, mm. and that ended up being his ultimate undoing. That vengeance. Sindri is God of War 1 Kratos as well. Yep. And uh, it's just absolute cleanly done. This, th that's what happens. You do that, this happens next. That sort of attitude. And uh, if you notice as well, it was the sound of something coming that alerted Sindri, and he just disappeared. Wouldn't even suggest maybe that something is about to happen that would put everyone in peril. He's done. Yeah, he's out. Maybe he's just he did the thing he wanted to do, and now he's just gonna do well whatever he wants to do. I guess mourn. Doesn't even care what happens to the other ones now. But yeah, what a absolutely legendary choice to accentuate the point of this whole game. The fucking boss of the Pantheon, the one that everyone considers the absolute legendary strength knowledge man. He's killed by Sindri. Yep. All because we're paying attention to exactly how everything would run if certain events take place and we only have to move certain pieces in certain orders to make them happen. Um, pretty great not going to be something that anyone here is going to lose that much sleep over I think Atreus maybe will feel a little bit bad about it but uh, yeah, I imagine Kratos sees this as just yeah I've been there man like yeah, uh, going to need time like someone said I mean he was killed by Atreus like I think we, we, we've already seen you can be pulled from the marble to be put into something else yeah uh, also, the uh, the marble pull, the frame you get is the looks pretty much the same as the mural where Kratos was on before. Yeah. And now there's Odin in this place. It's pretty pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Fate it, has uh, been uh, changed. Sorry, to clarify, his soul wasn't destroyed. It's it's likely going to the rivers of uh, the the Alfheim Light now. That's where Odin right. will, will go next. But it's not like anyone's going to be fucking pulling him out of there. No. The fact, like, that still would be what we would call a kill. Uh, that's that's actually presuming that is where he goes. Obviously, he made lots of reference to how he doesn't know what happens to yeah, him. Yeah, he doesn't know what he... He maybe goes to the light, but he definitely doesn't go to Valhalla next. That's what he said, so... Yeah, we don't, we don't know where he goes. Well, someone said, yeah, he goes to Valhalla. Well, to be fair, if you don't actually see any light come from the, the ball, then that could imply that what Sindri has done is annihilate him, basically. Uh, maybe, actually, yeah. We give it another look hey guys, even, even if we went to Valhalla, like... You can't tell, because the well, light... Yeah. Is, yeah. Like, that could be the soul escaping, that could also just be an effect. It, it's not like four distinct lights come out of the ball and go somewhere else peacefully, but there is an explosion of light, so... Yeah. Yeah, well, in that case, I guess we can't know for sure, um... But I, th the point is, I don't think Odin's coming back. No. Um. That's what comes next. <clears throat> it's Ragnarok. He's here. Ingrid with the Pro Star save again. Time to yeah, go. baby. Where exactly? You need an exit? How? It's giant stuff. Okay, follow me quickly. Is your own. Follow it. 
and you'll end up right where you're supposed to be. Huh? There he is. Wake up, Atreus. Wake up. Glad you've come back to us. Uh, hi. Where, where is my father? Somewhere here in the Holt. He'll be glad to see you. Thanks, Hare. I suppose there's some things to say about that end. Um, obviously, Ragnarok came even though at that point it wasn't even needed, uh, which is just, yeah. again, in line with the whole, like, it doesn't really matter what your intentions are once you've set something in motion. Um... Uh, Angerboda obviously was already in the big fight, so the mm. the assumption is obviously she'll just command Benria to open the the portal up. Or you know, it makes enough sense. Uh, I th there's there's questions about um, could uh, Rayer have been saved? Um, yeah, I I wasn't crazy about that death. I mean, it uh, it happens really fast, but I don't know that it doesn't line up in terms of like what he's doing with that sword i i presume is actually making a difference yeah yeah uh, I, i'm not i'm not saying that it it was totally pointless it just kind of felt like it, I, as the heroes are making their desperate escape i i didn't necessarily need there to be another major character death and i think uh Freyr in particular it seems like he could be a cool character to play as in spin-offs and stuff especially with ingrid like, because I, I, I don't know that we can talk about it more later about what it seems like they're doing after this. But I think it's pretty clear that they tried to make it seem like there's a few possible player characters for future projects. Um, Potentially. Obviously, what I think they're going for with Freya, though, was that he'd always felt like he uh, never quite made the uh, sort of leadership decisions or whatever that... that require a lot of sacrifice he was always sort of just floating through and having good times and then on the other end you've got freya who uh tries to stop the one she loves from being able to make decisions like that right she needs to be the one that uh. can allow it or disallow it this, this is that's why it's it acts as a big moment for her as well i i think it's satisfying as an ending to his story on both his end and her end um so like i don't know, and like I, I felt like I knew him for long enough that I cared for what he did. So oh, yeah. I don't know that I have very likable. Uh, like I can't really complain. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, like people are saying he dies as part of Ragnarok in the myths. Like that's not really an argument I would use. Um, for the sake of yeah, you know, like wouldn't... just that. I mean, because uh, just be a fun fact. Yeah, yeah no, it, I, it's, I, it's not totally invalid at the same time. I just I wouldn't use that as my like, well. Like, didn't Fenrir? Kind of Fenrir was supposed to kill Odin, so like, I imagine that if I was to use accuracy as a boon to the story, then we're gonna have to deal with all the. I'd have mm -hmm. to highlight all the inaccuracies. So I'd probably rather talk about it aside from adaptation. But, um, yeah, and I I, I assume the sword's done as well. Yeah, I, I would guess so. With all the fire stuff, that's probably happening there uh yeah i don't think there's any sword left unfortunately because the sword is really cool yeah we don't know what's become of asgard like when they say destroyed what does that mean yeah so. well yeah whatever it meant is asgard is no longer accessible question mark i guess it should be right is everything just floating in space now i don't know do they mean yeah it depends yeah. on what they mean by it, it could just mean a, a great like a, a great bomb went off yeah. It could be the whole realm is a wasteland. It could be that it's been undone and remade. There, you could do pretty much anything with that, especially with such, you know, the 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 interpretation of prophecies and how no one really sees what happens. Who knows? Well, we do get like after we're done with the whole story, 
there's like pieces of Asgard in the realms everywhere. Yeah. So I guess the, the idea is it's actually like completely wrecked somehow. Like the re but, access to the what we would consider realm is actually just gone. It is yeah. Like the realm itself, however that function is, has been damaged beyond repair. Yeah, some pieces have been flung into other realms, but then I guess it just got destroyed. So there might be something there, but doesn't seem to be any way to get there at the moment. Mom, stop it. I'm fine. Hush. It's rude. Loki! I'm so glad you're both alive. You have no idea, and... I'm sorry. Thor. He was... He tried, you know? I'm sorry I couldn't do more. Nothing will fix what you're feeling. But I hope there's some comfort in knowing Odin's gone. There absolutely is. Loki... It was an honor to fight alongside a giant. Know that. Will you stay here in Midgard? For a bit? Then I've got something I need to find. I'm working with Hildesvini to get the rest of the Asgardians to Vanaheim. To help rebuild. Then I hope it can be a fresh start for them. And you. Oh. And through. I hope you find what you're looking for. Good luck. See ya, Loki. Take care. Were either of your weapons damaged in the battle? I think they're fine. Maybe a couple nicks here and there. Well, we can have them looked at later. Eh, we might not need to. Nonsense. A shield maiden needs all her tools in working order. That Seagrin would probably chew you out if they were dull. Oh, she would, would she? <laughs> I know I certainly would. I also know you would. Huh. Lugan made it out. Good for him. Oh, and if you So are we supposed to assume that the when he threw the ravens at them, he threw the first one, I think Atreya shot it with an arrow, and the second one Freya grabbed and broke its neck. Yeah. But which one didn't die. I assume the one that was shot by the arrow. Yeah, I don't think... It... Did it get hit? I could have sworn away. he threw one and Atreya shot it. He threw the second and Atreya, uh, Freya grabbed it and broke its neck. I thought one just got away. Hmm. I mean, I, I would need to double check. I could be wrong, but that's what I the thought. The reason why I bring this up is because if that is the one that survived, the one that was shot by Atreus, it's just funny. Like, you're like, oh, you survived. It's like, you shot me. But yes. Well, how did you <laughs> yeah. how did you survive twice? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just I'm curious. If there were Raven subtitles, it would be saying, "I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made it. I did. You see this? This arrow that's I, still in I me. Survived, <laughs> vowing I survived revenge. the arrow and Ragnarok. Punished Hugin. I'm a very determined bird. <laughs> see, you shot me, and then yeah, killed killed my killed my owner. Well, well, well maybe the power cool. of the ravens is the teleportation, so it teleported out. Well, yeah, yeah I'm just curious about the arrow. It was all. like, I'm free, I'm free. I'm curious about the arrow. Yeah. Teleported directly to a veterinarian, got some sutures. Yeah. Get this wood over to Brock. Loki, hey, glad to see the head injury didn't make you forget me. Did you have a head injury? Everything was a blur. Maybe that was someone else. Anyway, man, I I'm just, I'm really glad to see oh, you. Sindri. I'm glad to see you too. Looks like you're keeping busy. Ah, I'm just happy to help folks. We're on track to have bedrolls for everyone, and your friend's wolves have been helping out with hunting. We should have plenty to feed everyone. No shit. No shit? And hey, thank you for everything. We wouldn't even be here without you and your friends. Yeah, of course. I... I just wish we could have gotten more people out. Loki, you did good. Thanks, Skilder. Take care, okay? Hey, you know me. Has anyone seen any extra blankets lying around? That snow might be melting, but it's still gonna be pretty cold in this place. Oh, there he is. And one for the kid, too. Skull! Here, here. Skull, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And Friar's sacrifice. It's true. Well, we 
were just swapping our own Freyer fables. Right, right. So where was I? Oh. When we met, I was expecting this warrior, this master planner, a born leader. The legend came before the man. But the man himself was very different. He won me over, though. He was just so damn kind. I think it helped that he was handsome. This is true. And incredibly charming. All right, stop. Y'all go back to start crying all over again. Sorry. Gotta go find my father. Be safe, you. Y'all remember that time old Keith walked near caught on fire? <laughs> if I remember correctly, it was you who lit it on fire in the first place. Well, uh, but not, not on purpose. How was I supposed to know it was so easily flammable? It wasn't. You were showing off that enchanted bellows of yours and sparks flew everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha, that is what happened, isn't it? I'm pleased to see you awake. Freya, it was his choice. I couldn't take that from him. He saved us all. I'll never forget that. The family I thought I had was taken from me piece by piece. But there's comfort in the family I've chosen. Your mother was right, you know. You grew into that bow after all. You are a formidable warrior, but even more than that, you have a good heart. Nothing you've endured has changed that. I'm so proud of the man you've become, Atreus. Thank you. For everything. I should find my father. You should. Atreus! I feel like that deserves a little bit of commentary in and of itself. Like, Freya uh, having made the complete opposite choice of what drove her to some of the lowest lows in the mm -hmm. uh, prior game, as well as the idea that she like lost everything, her realm and her family and all that, and that through all these crazy adventures she's uh, appreciating the new one, probably relating to her relationship with Kratos, Atreus, and the remaining Vanaheimians? Vanir, as you might say? Vanaheimers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yes. You gave us quite a scare there. Glad to see you too, Mimir. Listen. On my barrel. I want to thank you. Oh, what else did you expect from the smartest man alive? It's not just because you're smart. You listened to me, mentored me, and, well, you're basically another dad to me. What? No, I need you to hear it. I appreciate you so much. Huh. I love you too, little brother. See you, Mimir. It's good to see you about, Atreus. You too, Hildes Vini. I hear you're headed to Vanaheim with the Aesir. That's correct. Oh, never thought I'd see the day Vanir and Aesir existed in peace. How optimistically presumptuous of you. I suppose so. We offered to take them in. But I don't expect things to be easy right away. Well, something to work towards. Civility is certainly a start. Yeah, it reminds me of... Um... Mamiya finally getting to say to Freya, thanks for saving my life, sort of thing. The same way of Mamiya's only going to have been providing advice and just general sort of support for Atreus and all these years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, it's just it's just appreciated as like, you, you know, you're an incredibly important aspect of my whole life, essentially. It's just like, ah, don't worry about it. I'm fine. Just I'm making yeah. jokes in the corner. Don't worry about me. It's nice down here, huh? No loud noises. We're okay. You did so good today, boy. I'm so proud of you. <clears throat> Maybe later, we can find some treats. Okay. My turn. Who's that, huh? Yeah, we know him. <laughs> Maybe one of these days I'll surprise you. Oh, you already have. You were in good hands. 
Thank you for saving us. I decided it would be better if I wrote the ending myself. You haven't told your father yet, have you? Told him about what? Come on. Giant visions? I already saw it. I get it. Every part of me is telling me this is what I have to do. I... I just... don't know how to say it. Come with me. I've got something I want to show you. Both of you. I... I do not wish to intrude. This is for you, too. Mm. Atreus, I am glad you are well. I'm glad you are, too. So, what was the end of the story? What? Before Ragnarok. You promised to finish it if I fell asleep. Hmm. When death arrived, he asked why the old man had called for him. Seeing death before him caused the old man to reconsider his request. After a moment, he asked that death help him lift the logs onto his back so that he may continue on his journey. He wasn't ready to die. He wished to keep living. There's a lot of smoke out there. So, uh, that is the second half, and of course, uh, Atreus there gunning for the, um, what I would call, like, the, the, the conclusion of what a, what a good old Kratos tell it a story of the, a desire to die, but then a conclusion of actually no. But I think mm -hmm. there's something little more going on, and I actually think it's probably deliberate on Kratos' part as well, right? Like, the, we already talked about how... Atreus is one of the big things that changed his whole perspective on whether or not he even would consider it. It's, we got that in the third flashback with Faye. But I think as part of the story, like, I want to die, death shows up, and like, acknowledging the existence, seeing it there, knowing that that's a pathway that's like imminent or even possible, it's motivation to stay alive. He, to say death helped him move those logs. It's like the implication is uh, his experiences with understanding it and seeing it coming and knowing it was going to happen made him have a new lease on life, so to speak, alongside everything else. He's not quite done Yeah, I mean, yet. That's, that's basically the reading of that story. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, <clears> uh, I think Critus has, uh, has gotten better at telling stories. A little yeah, certainly that's, better that's, at getting that's, subtext that's good, in him, eh? Get some arcs, you know? Some peaks and dips. Hmm. Seems when Asgard fell, pieces of it landed all over the realms. There might still be some Ainherjar near them, but that's not what I brought you here to see. Mother?
my shrine in Jotunheim. She destroyed it. She didn't want us to know our fate. We forged our own path because of her. She went against her own people, our people, to protect you. They don't all open. I'm sorry. Father, I... I need to talk to you about something. There are other giants out there. And I've got to find them. I think I know where to look, but... They're my responsibility. I need to do this alone. I, I don't want to do it alone, but... I need to. It's hard to explain. Does it frighten you? Yeah. That is why you must do it. We can just go tell Brock. Yeah, there it I don't is. need to fight it, right? No, we will fight it. But why? Because you are frightened of it. Like you taught me. Yeah. Good we survived point. today because of your choices. It is a deep yeah. fuck cut. I'm so surprised they managed to draw that. That's uh, the kind of thing you could easily miss. Excellent. Yeah, that's Trust. shit. Who to call friend? Son. You are ready. Remember our promise. Loki will go. Atreus. Atreus remains. There it is. Mm -hmm. Too many things to talk about, so we're gonna take it piece by piece, all right? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's that's basically this. Their relationships pay off both games. Yes, for like a hundred hours, ridiculous. And uh, they, they, yeah, the the obviously starting out one of the first things he tells Atreus is you're not ready. The consistent element of having to raise him and prepare him, and then realize himself when it's time for. Atreus to be able to approach this world on his own, um, or at least with his own decisions. Kratos has given him the sign off. The tr the trust that he has in him. You know, earlier, like when it, uh, during Ragnarok. Yeah, um, and that whole like a part of someone remains with you even when they're gone or whatever. Just just using Loki and Atreus to signal it is. Uh, Ah, oh, it's pretty beautiful, and and the performance, man, did he nail the emotion there? Uh, oh yeah, he often gets um, double takes and stuttering to feel so genuine too. I guess that's what yeah, it is to be a good actor. <laughs> Christopher uh... Judge is an absolute MVP in these games. He's so good. Um, yeah, and and of course the. If something frightens you, then tackle it head on, sort of thing. Like his encouragement to overcome obstacles, being accurate. 
You did a good job, Kratos. Well, yeah. I think the scene also kind of functions as a, a way to solve for the um the uh, it was kind of the the MCU phase two problem, like post Avengers. It's like why isn't Captain America calling Iron Man right now? Whereas if they want to do a an Atreus game or like one of those kind of standalone DLC things they do, like the Miles Morales Spider Man game, they could have it make sense as to why Kratos isn't there like already it's not like okay well why is atreus off on his own it's like well because he said he was going to go off on his own adventure yeah they have plenty of options obviously You see in there, brother. Well, one I had never imagined. And what now? to it.
Yay. Best scene in the game. So good. It's the best scene. What's my favorite best, scene? Best endings ever. Yeah. 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 Um, the mural. That moment is incredible. Yeah. Oh, I adore it. It's, it's really, really so good. Great. <laughs> Him referring the path to it that he had never envisioned, never imagined it. but the path yeah. that he was on, nonetheless. It's um, it's 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 powerful because of the fact that it's it's drawing up basically his entire history. Yes. Yeah. It, it's just packed into that one moment. Uh, if if uh if twenty eighteen was, I'm a monster, but I'm not your monster anymore. Then Ragnarok is, I'm not a monster anymore. Yeah. So yeah. everything he's been trying to escape is is now like seen as a possibility. Yeah, a real possibility. Yeah, he's not just a yeah. some guy who survives. Some guy who survives and looks after himself and some other people he loves, and some guy who looks after a decent bunch of people or a whole realm. Or he's like to be known as a person that is worth. Worshipping and praying to because of his virtue. Like, what kind of example are you gonna set? Never, ever, ever, ever thought that was a possibility, and spent most of his life believing that he could never be forgiven. Yeah. Let alone be praised for the actions he's taken. But that's the thing; he's done so much work. But it's something that it's it's kind of why the payoffs work so well because it doesn't necessarily hit you as a as a possibility, in a sense. Like, no one's gonna make a statue for him. But you're like, well, think about everything he's done. Like, yeah, you've By this stage. been working... And what makes it... Oh, sorry. Just that he's been working his ass off this, this for years, and it's like, and he's got this heavy investment of making the world a better place. Of course, that line, we have much to do, much to rebuild, it's supposed to be a, a parallel to God of War 3's ending. This whole game's ending is supposed to be an echo of God of War 3. It's it's like a mm -hmm. an alternative. And yeah, uh, Zeus right. makes reference to how he's going to rebuild and then of course he dies and everything goes to yeah. absolute shit. Meanwhile, here he like genuinely means that he is going to try and rebuild. Yeah, and in keeping with um cuz of course that was part of prophecy, but him seeing it there at that moment, that's when he needed to see it. If it had been earlier, he would have thought it was, like, just a farce. Yeah, like, this is, good. this is ridiculous. But now, where he's at, just like with a lot of the lessons that he learned, a lot of these values that were instilled or reinforced by Faye, and then were consistently reinforced by the journey that he went over the, over the course of these two games, has led him to a place where he can actually be that person on that mural and like an agent for good a really powerful agent for good to just go out there and do good things like he's always been doing but with the sort of more resolute the understanding that that's a path that's available to him and yeah uh, be as people are talking about it's like this is a big old payoff to the scene where odin chastises him for not yep. even understanding yeah that exactly i was about to say that yeah um, what did what do you know about being a god? Has anyone ever worshipped you? Do you know that adoration? And I was like, no. Well, I had those kind of war love. people that liked me, I guess, when there was war. Uh, yeah, because uh, kind of the beginning of God of yeah, War Two yeah. is possibly him at his worst as as a, as a person. Like he's yeah, he's just going tomorrow. around doing war stuff, basically destroying everything um, just because he's mad. Yeah, well, the only people who like him are Spartans because he he happens right. to be fighting for them. It's, there's nothing yeah, more exactly. to it than that. Basically, he's, turns Sparta into the most powerful. Like, yeah, he's and he's yeah. he's the equivalent of Godzilla to like other factions, and it just it comes across as though it's just like. I grew up as a Spartan. Spartans, Sparta's the best. I've got this new power as a god of war. I'm putting Sparta on the map. We're going to dominate. Because mm -hmm. that's... What else is there? This is part of what informs his sort of directionless depression in, in the 2018 and Ragnarok games of, like, all he ever knew growing up was war. He was trained for war to fight to win. And it's through his actions that all of Greece is fucking destroyed. So mm -hmm. now what? It's like, well, I'll just sail away. And you know, and and what what did Faye say when she met up with him? They nearly killed each other. Yeah, 
this uh the lot that that is informed by it and yeah he's he may have been worshipped as a as a god of war that makes a place stronger and better and wins wars and stuff but like what he's looking for and i assume how odin got to him is that he's never been worshipped for who he is and mm -hmm. certainly not for the man he is now compared to the man he never wants to be again which is basically original trilogy kratos excluding the end of god of war 3 i guess mm -hmm. which uh a lot of people forget but that you know credit to god of war 3 despite its cringe like that's where the arc starts they, um, I think they wanted when they were reaching the third one to to make more of a point than just he kills everything. Mm -hmm. And that then leads into 2018 and then concludes with Ragnarok with these so many very, very complicated and detailed messaging uh, messages about how you can approach all kinds of like uh, control over your own sort of emotional outbursts and what it can say about you as a person while simultaneously the choices you make not only define what kind of person you are, but it it, it it is the entire essence of the difference between engaging in fate or subverting it. Like, you're a, you are you. That, that's the important part. Make your choices and make them meaningfully. Don't adhere to some, like, controlling force outside of what you believe you should do. And that all gets uh, variables through all of these different pieces of advice, different arguments, realizations, and then all of that is cycled through all of these different characters that are going through very similar journeys but all have different results different uh, variables surrounding them so much to be said about parenthood and mm -hmm. it just existence beating like uh this game hits a lot of fundamentals and then it, and then some of the specific relationships hit people particularly hard because of um how much they can line up it's um what we would likely consider a very meaningful game and for it to culminate Absolutely. on that scene a man who sees redemption which is so important for so many people across the world with the some of the mistakes we all make we all want to know there's a way to come back basically yep uh kratos says he, he sees a path who would have thought uh, Freya and Mimir are gonna join him in doing that too because now freya's got a path available to her for the rest of her life exactly I, I mean, know, I, I guess she's right been... now the de, fa de facto leader of the realms, I guess, you could say. I, Does that make sense? I guess it, yeah. yeah. Um, if the monarch of Asgard is the one who leads all the realms, then I suppose so. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, lots, of, lots of good stuff in this. It's, uh, man. And it's not even the end. No. no is that... <laughs> The music! Yeah. Listen to it! <laughs> I am, I can't not do it. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Ah, uh, Flair. We should probably talk about Gnar. Gnar. We don't need to talk about her. We just need to find her. But Odin chose her as his new Valkyrie queen. A Vanir goddess. Your friend. Gnar pledged loyalty to Asgard long ago, and our friendship ended soon after. What happened? I made a choice. One she couldn't accept. Kratos. She hates me. She will be a problem for us. Better we find her than she finds us. And another one for the big boy himself. For the big boy Skull. himself. Skull. Skull. Is there a Gnaw fight in the endgame yet? Or are they out yeah. of that? Yeah. That's oh. in there. She's in in, oh, it is in there. I I, I was there for oh, a bit. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I fought her. Uh, I fought her and killed her. It was a, a fun five minutes. Mel, how uh, how are you doing with it? <laughs> Shut up. You took way longer with the berserker fight. Berserker but not that King. long. <laughs> you guys like, fight the, the, the thing is, I like the berserker king fight. I don't think you like the Gnar fight. 
Thank you. I don't know, I was just frustrated. It was a cool fight, I think. I appreciate but man, that. I got fucked we'll up. We'll bring all the supplies we can, although it won't be much. Don't worry about it. Anyone who's able can head out for extra supplies. Aesir and Vanir. Together. Lunda also mentioned there's going to be a get-together to honor Brock's memory at Rab's tavern and Svartal <laughs> I'd like to go. What is wrong? Uh, no, no, nothing. It's just... Yeah. Don't know if you've heard, but... We're gonna say goodbye to Brock and Svartal A funeral? Yeah. Remain at Rab's tavern in neither Valir. We will be there. Profane alternate lyrics to my ballads. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> uh, but now I wish I could remember some of them. Oh, the paperwork that man created for me. I had to build a chest <laughs> just for his violations. Hmm. A big one. I taught him 20 different ways to cold forge a bolster. <laughs> one. He taught me a slightly easier method of wire pulling, and from that day on, called me his apprentice. <laughs> a true asshole he was. God, I'm gonna miss him. Hi, y'all made it. Just about to send him off. I have met many on my travels. You are one of the few I would call friend. I always thought you were one of the dumbest creatures I'd ever met. Didn't expect you to be the bravest, too. This world is a darker place for your leaving it. We're taking him to the Sphered Sands. It's, uh, in the wetlands near the ferry. We'll wait for you there. Damn it. What is wrong? I should have... changed. Sown some mourning garb. We're not dressed properly. We're fine. The dwarves don't typically require formal wear at funerals. Brock certainly would not. Perhaps. Phil, now you've got me thinking of what I might look like with some jewelry around my neck stump. Maybe some gold woven into my beard. That'd be quite fetching, eh? <laughs> Thanks for trying. There they are, brother. Oh, come on, surely he'll be along. It's his brother. Let's hope so. Loss can do things to a man. You made it. We can begin.
Sentry. Black Puss. It's bigger the more you take away. Ah, boom. Was up with happy ending who said that that was I the first know. time i saw that and that was awesome i'm sad i missed that oh you, you didn't missed catch that it. damn oh nope. my dude i thought i'd finished the game already <laughs> that's the hard credits wouldn't it be kind of yeah. neat if movies had after credit scenes that added that amount of narrative weight <laughs> well it wasn't be technically neat. it was a before credit scene like this is the oh i guess yeah i mean that's true although the credits did come up as you're walking down the mountain yeah like what a fantastic so scene. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Fantastic. It's mad. And paid off the riddle. Yeah. Uh, incredibly well, in a, in a way that it, it sets you in a position of laughing with it and at it, and then it yeah. hits you like a ton of bricks. And it fucking destroys you. I can understand why we had... It, it was actually really useful for them to have two endings, so to speak, because... One of them makes a point about the protagonist and how far he's come. This one, I think, makes a point about how did this all start? Why? Mm -hmm. it's, it's all down to a, a, a man and what he lost. And pretty much everyone else in the storyline that we meet has a significant role, has also just had shit taken away. Yeah. And there is no cap on that. The more you take, no. the bigger the hole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we might never find out what happens to Sindri. This might be the last time we ever see him. Big old tragedy. Maybe. Uh, yeah, we might never know. That's uh. You ever told me when I started this game, those fucking goofball dwarfs make me cry at the end? Yeah. <laughs> I would have told you to fuck right off. No, no, you can of see it on the, my channel. <laughs> of all the hanging narrative threads at the end of the story, the one that's most interesting and will probably never be explored is what happened to the germaphobe dwarf. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm comfortable with uh, yeah, the story ending here. There's more than enough. It's just that uh, it would never uh, end reasonably in terms of like uh, the, the, the franchise, as far as I yeah, know. Yeah, like how would they do that? It would make... No real, I don't know, business sense to make a Sindri game. Yeah, which is, you know, we'll end up with another Pantheon. Or several. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, yeah. God of War will probably return, and it will make shit tons of money again. Yeah. Mm. Um, As I'm telling you, I, my bet is the next thing they do is one of those half sequels that Sony's done for, like, a whole bunch of their franchises, where it's it's not quite DLC, like it's a little bigger than that, but it's also not like a full sequel at the same time. Definitely a who knows sort of situation, but the fact that everyone's like sort of divided on exactly where to go, or what to do, or all the different options, it goes to show you people aren't done yet. They want more God no. of War. Mm -hmm. Or at least... And the like, reality is... I'm just going to say at least what this is, they want more of it. Yeah. It's like, I want more, like, if it stays like this. But if you would tell me this is the last thing we get, I was like, you know what? That's a pretty fucking good spot to stop it on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's that yeah. Be it's, it's Some people are saying that I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about expansions exactly. Just Sony in particular does this thing where they'll release, like, 
DLC that is basically DLC, but you can buy it on its own. So they did one for Infamous called First Light. They did one mm. for um, Uncharted called, um, I think, Lost Legacy. Yeah, the one with like Chloe and Naomi. And then um, Miles Morales is probably the most recent example. Like, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, since we're at the odd credits, um, yeah, con we are. conclusions while there's a couple things left after the I had let two songs play and then I skip. So, oh, OK, OK. Just have that okay. in the background. Yeah. Do you guys think it was all right? Well, I, I guess mean... it's OK. Um, yes, it's excellent. Yeah. It's very, very, very good. good. I'm extremely glad yeah. that I watched through it and I'm very glad that, like I said, I'm glad that this is something in a video game. Yeah. Even as far as we've come, video games aren't often uh, what people think about a lot of the times when it comes to... Um, strong Taurus storytelling. Uh, yeah, strong storytelling. So, you know, it's good that it's here, that all this effort got put into it. I'm glad the game's doing well. It's just really encouraging Belch. to see that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Noobshit, I think you asked me like halfway through. So is 2018 still your favorite one? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, it might be a bit of Jeopardy. And then I finished the game, it's like, yeah, no, this is my favorite game now. I mean, it's, I guess it's the package deal, right? 2018 and this one together. Like, you can't have this one with the with the 28 without, actually without any of the other games. Uh, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Like, as I said already, just, Putting in the effort and respecting the games that came before it, taking the baggage with you and actually make it into something meaningful all the way at the end. It's just fantastic. It's, yeah, it's absolutely great. It's uh, incredibly intricate and complex, all the different things they weaved into this to make significant points, like several of them. I've, despite the fact that the story, as we've displayed it at around eight hours uh you know it's like four times the size of the average movie uh oh, yeah. still the absolute level of content shoved in here for, for storytellers is insane and uh what a job they did trying to turn something that is known for being a goofy power fantasy of running around ending things lives because why not mm -hmm. into like something that can make you think about the why behind all of it and where you could go next with a character that's that consumed by it. Not to imply there's nothing to think when it comes to uh, the original trilogy in terms of what's going on for the character, especially including the, the two PSP games and Ascension and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead, it is to say they took ideas for where they were going to try and push Kratos or commentary on him as a character and embraced it hardcore, really ironed it out and made something that... Uh, I think is really worth celebrating. It's rare that we get to talk about a story that has this level of variables in it that manage to stay this coherent. Yeah. It's maddening to think about the amount of work they must have put in this whole fucking package. It's... I don't, I don't even know how to begin untangling uh, all these threads that go through this, all these games. Crazy. The song was playing right now. It got... The known choir, sort of the Kratos' side, the Fey theme mm -hmm. coming in, and then yeah. they both sync up oh, as the song mm -hmm. continues, as though Delicious. she's become a part of him, sort of thing. Mm. Like, even in the music, which I've, we've tried to make clear, like, this soundtrack is phenomenal, and there's loads of storytelling details in the soundtrack. He gave a shit, and it's kind of neat when they give a shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Shows it really shows when everyone is on board and everyone cares. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I can't help myself, but I, 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 I love get this. it. I get I it. I love the song, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I love this uh... game. I, I, man, it's too. It's really impressive. Very impressive. It's like you said, Metal. The amount of material that they had and how coherent it is. And how focused it is while being this incredibly expansive story in terms of the number of characters, the scope of the plot, as well as uh, the breadth of themes that they were exploring. It's very impressive.
<sighs> the tunes. It's, uh, it's the, 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 uh, the, I just want to say something, but it just went away. So never mind. Oh well. <laughs> we might never know. We may never know. Still think it's kind of a miracle we managed to cover eight hours in the time that we did. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I don't know if there's anything beyond the light. Afterlives, after afterlives, or whever you. But if there is, well, I imagine he's causing one crazy ruckus there. Shizzle. He's fuckling all over the place. Forgive Sindri. He's just, uh, I mean, you know. I wrote that dirge for him. What's it called? Something profane. He wouldn't <laughs> have it any other way. Yes. <laughs> that was good. Hello, Master Kratos. What you've accomplished for these realms is truly something I never thought possible. Uh, rest assured, good Master Brock would be proud beyond measure, even if only to express it in his love language of profane non sequiturs. Ah, but he is terribly missed. Yes, he is. Now, there is one rather interesting development to apprise you of. The detonation of Asgard shook the world tree to its very roots, dislodging a great number of realm seeds. I thought you might wish to have them. My little way of saying thank you for preventing my death by immolation. You are welcome. I wonder if Sindri will ever come back. Can this place ever feel like a home after what happened here? I never thought I'd miss their bickering. But it's really not the same place without those two, is it? We will maintain it until his return. That was fucking depressing at oh, the yeah. end. Did I do enough to prepare the traitors? The lad survived bloody Ragnarok. Ah. I think he's as prepared as anyone could be. To survive, yes. But to love. Brother? Angry oh. <laughs> Does he? Oh. Mm. Well, there were certain topics on which I suppose I may have been a touch more approachable. I did my level best to teach him the ropes. Then you taught the boy to woo. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, brother, I taught him how I wish I'd wooed. <laughs> <laughs> did you tap him? Did teach him to tap triangle until they explode with health orbs? Dude, when Ooh, I got that, that blood when orbs. I got that, when I got that, I fucking laughed my ass off the first time. <laughs> I couldn't. Forbes. Dude, there's a um, there's woo. plenty more dialogue to find. Obviously, oh, there's, there's just, uh... so much more. I still haven't heard all of it because I didn't really do the full second playthrough by changing around to the characters, of course, because mm -hmm. uh, it was a bit tight on time. Yeah, um, the, that that line just sets you up to obviously think. Kratos is referring to just being on his own in the world, fighting, blah, blah, blah. But he's just like, no, 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 I meant, like, that other thing. Cause the other things. <laughs> all the, all really the other likes. being a person stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, that's God of War Ragnarok's story. Includes our adventure yeah. through that massive game. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Which, um, in, in part, is, you know, just the second half of another really huge story, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is the second half huh. of a, two sides of a of a franchise, right? Of a, of a giant, yeah, mm -hmm. a much bigger story. Oh, it's just man. so impressive. I don't know. There's only so many ways that you can. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I can't. It's I can't stop. Re really have a hard time st to stop praising this game. It's like it's my it's my little holy grail at the moment. This kind of, is one of the best characters. Like, oh, ever. absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, 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 there's like you can go. The, I wasn't. I I I was already short on time getting this done, so I couldn't sort out Tier and Niflheim and stuff. But uh, yeah, you can mm -hmm. find the real Tier and uh, yeah. release him. And you go to Niflheim. There's like a new path, and there's like a big old prison. You it's can weird, go in there. Dig. Now I guess because we kind of signposted it, but uh, all the way back when you first meet Derlin. And the little squid right. guy gives you something, and then Radatoska tells you it's actually a, a seed, and the seed leads to Niflheim. 
Yeah. And then at the end game, you go to Niflheim. There's an entrance to the prison. In the prison is Tyr. You kind of start to put it all together. Dylan mm. on the surface, was saying, I'm fining you. His trick in conjunction, 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 I'm getting tired, with Odin, probably with Odin's approval, was to trick them into going to get Tyr in the Svartalfheim mines, right? There's only so much uh, Durling can do. He was building yeah. those machines as well. But the the clue as to where Tyr is was given by the squid. Yeah. It was handed <laughs> out. It's just, uh, it's... Like, that's, they didn't have to do that, but they did. They really didn't. <laughs> And there's a lot of moments like that throughout the game of you didn't have to, but you did. <laughs> just and it all yeah. adds up. Care when you want to have something you can look back on and be proud of. Yeah, care and dedication, dedication to the craft. Like what's up with you too? <laughs> Especially if you're making something that's primarily a kind of story-driven experience, a good way to get people incentive to go through it again is to throw in details like that. Wait, people are saying. The prison was in Asgard and it fell. I think the, the, the bridge to it gave access to it. If the prison was originally in Asgard, then that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I think the, just the path got, got opened up by that. As far as I knew, it was... Because I, I remember, isn't there other references to there being a prison in Niflheim? Uh, maybe. I don't recall. I could have sworn there was. But um, <laughs> I would argue that's much worse if... The prison happened to explode and survive and Tia was inside it like that. Yeah. That's much worse. So um I hope it isn't that, but if it is, then that well, you have that. because mm. uh, uh, I feel like that just disconnects a whole bunch of connecting pieces. Yeah. Um Ugh. I'm getting tired too. I'm pretty sure it was a new path. No, it falls from Asgard. Right, you chat, fight over it. And then let me know once we figure out which oh, one it yeah. was, and I'll be here. Yeah. Well, maybe Give I won't be. I think I might be asleep. <laughs> I'll be here in spirit. The prison was in Niflheim. The chunk of Asgard created a path. This is the thing. I, I, you guys decide, all right? Because I think we're a little pooped out, and one of us is going to need yeah. to go soon. So um, I'm trying to think. What else should we say in closing? Um, of course, we're going to do like a, a catch up for the for the super chats. It's just that we've these streams and the saturday one i don't <laughs> even know if we'll have time as well with what's planned you guys oh god christmas oh nightmares um mm. we've recorded we've been recording catch-ups as well we're just desperately trying to um get on top of all of it but of course we'll we'll be labeling as appropriate we recently finished all of the rings of power ones i'm gonna try and release that as one big thing funny oh, wow. enough guys there's two completed efap episodes that aren't even out and we just did a double what? this week it's uh so, you know, it's something. <laughs> Try Things to, uh, to talk about. Things are happening. This year, you're not gonna get a Christmas Eve fat movies. There's just no time. I can't. I can't get that sorted out in time. Um, but yeah, be all right. Just looked it up. Characters do mention seeing a chunk of Asgard, not referring to the prison, but the. I assume that's what it was. It'd be weird with the squid, otherwise, right? That doesn't really match up. Um, maybe I'll have a look on the. Uh, uh, the, the 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 wiki as well. I don't know. Either way, the plan, like I said, is Saturday. We're gonna check out some Ragnarok criticism with the same gang. It'll be great. Whoa, It'll be fun and great. Um, is it, was there anything else anyone wanted to say about Ragnarok? Fucking love it. Pretty cool. Um, pretty... I wish the PC version came out at the same time as the PS5 version, but I'm okay getting it. PS5 version days. runs at 60, so it's okay. Yeah, I know. I'm That's happy. Pretty good. That, That's so. pretty good. Hmm. <sighs> good times. Well, all right. Um, and how about uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it, I, I we kind of did it on the last stream, but and you'll be able to do it again on Saturday. But if you guys want to talk about you know, the things you're up to, the reasons why people should check you out, uh, then, yeah. you know what, go right ahead. Fine. Uh, well, I'm doing streams and stuff. No, it's Metal's, For Metal's Forge on Friday. I, I snatched myself the smart person over there. Yeah. Um, we're just going to talk about some, some random sh stuff, like the trailers that came out, a bit of Callisto, a bit of everything. Just going to be chill chatteroonies. So yeah, come 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 check that out. It's gonna be Friday night. It's gonna be fun stuff. 
I'm sure there's a link down below. I'm sure. Wow, you forgot my link, Mewplay. How dare you? you that's evil. You know, it's starting to get weird. I keep putting <laughs> yours in, and it keeps not staying in. YouTube like, hates me. <laughs> really odd. Um, it'll definitely be on the re-upload because I. Yeah, that's, that's where I often find that they. It's like, oh, it's there. But... Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'll say. Yeah, uh, just saying it again. I'm not doing Twitch streams anymore. I'm. I'm full. Full on the YouTube side now. Mm. So you won't find me on the Twitch. It's all on the Metal Commander channel. So there you go. It's gonna be Gorming. I played some Dwarf Fortress uh, yesterday on stream. That was pretty fun. Okay. Uh, probably do more of that tomorrow. Uh, yeah, then Forge, EFAP, all kinds of stuff. It's content galore. Come check oh, it out. All right. Um, what about you, Mark? What are you up to? Hi, I'm, I'm Mark the Cyborg. Um, I sometimes make videos on YouTube, but I, I kind of do the, the thing you guys do where you, you spend a lot of time writing, redrafting, and editing one high effort video instead of like uploading things three times a day. That uh, is much more lucrative, but also. Um, I don't know, I have not really my style. But um, I also stream on Rumble really frequently. It's rumble.com slash Mark the Cyborg. I played all of Callisto Protocol. It's terrible, but uh, lately oh. I've been playing Dead Space 2, and it's much, much better. And, uh, man, playing Dead Space 2 with a mouse and keyboard versus playing Callisto Protocol with a controller, hmm. can't even tell you. It's night and day. That's the thing, man. This 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 sort of uh, chunk of a year, it was like Scorn, Callisto Protocol, and Ragnarok. Uh, well, we didn't we didn't roll a bad on all of them. So <laughs> I like after after we played Scorn, we just went on this month long God of War binge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could say the two games had different effects. You know? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. That, that's what I did a couple years ago, though. Uh, one of the um, videos on my homepage on YouTube is one I made for Geeks and Gamers that's like a history of the whole God of War franchise. So about two years ago, I played every single one, and it was quite the ride. Well, uh, what about you guys, Rags and Frongo? Nothing to really report yet. Um, I'm, I, I got some things in the works, but I'm not decided on what I'm going to put my effort into at the moment for the most part. So just uh, stand by, I suppose. Yeah, I'm just working. <laughs> and that's exactly yeah. what I'm doing. Well, you guys are about to see something I'm working on. Don't you worry. You'll see something. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, so I guess it could be, considering everything that's happened, that we'll do the EFAP on the the tenth, yep, and then the seventeenth, you'll get uh, a pre-recorded one, and then hopefully by the time we hit Christmas, um, we will have recorded a Christmas special in some way, shape, or form. As in, it'll be mm. something of a topic. I'm not 100 percent sure yet, and that'll come well, out then. There's a couple of candidates. Yeah, yeah there's a couple of uh, could be Andor, could be Avatar. Who knows? And then, uh, I guess that'll be. The next one will be New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I'm there. Oh yeah, you'll you'll be. Here. Oh, it's, that might not be live either. Uh, it may be, maybe oh, not. Nice. No idea. You may not be getting a live EFAP for a while after Saturday. But look, all right. You've just received how many hours? Like nearly twenty hours of dedicated God of War and Ragnarok coverage. Very likely have another eight on Saturday. Yeah, wow, hey, yeah, it's probably hey, going to be I'm, long. When I'm over, there's probably going to be a lot of gaming streams, I reckon, so. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Mel got some Much... gamer stuff to do. Yeah, gamers. Um, but yes, all right. Well, in that case, there you go. Thank you all very much for joining us and for the mm -hmm. very kind donations yeah. and for uh, the back and forth, the insights. I'll be curious to check out what everyone thinks of the game's story in the old comment section. Uh, like I said, the Ragnarok is almost over. We've got Saturday. Right, still got a little bit There's more. To go. more? Oh my goodness. There Wait, is more. Kind of like, wow, yeah, that's incredible. There's more. there's more. Also, I saw <laughs> as well, but it should be mentioned, plushies have made their way out into the world. I've seen the pictures of little Fringo sit and little, the new little Mugely sitting around on desks yeah. and bookshelves and everything. It's great. I'm, I'm, I hope everybody is happy with them who's got them. It's really cool to see those having made their way out into the world. And again, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. They, uh, I've been trying to see if I can... Oh, look look, look, look at pictures. them. Oh, my God. 
There's oh. all all of them. Well enough, the wow. fringies Yay. have delivered for me, but the uh the maulers haven't. Oh, I haven't gotten mine yet, uh, so I got still, mine. Uh, yeah, I got them. My fringy arrived during an episode of Real BBC and I, I gave it to X ah. and Mauler saw. And you, you can see all of them <laughs> yeah, sitting yeah, I, on top he of actually the display saved, behind me. He saved the goo because he, he warned me about the goo and I went and went to the box and found it in there. Right, there's the goo right there sitting in, in this Don't lose hand. your goo, kids. You need Don't it. Don't lose, lose the goo, all right? You got to hold on to it. But um, yeah, thank you. It's, there you it's go. It's very cool to see them out there in the world. But yes, uh, thank you all very much. We are now going to do some human things, I'd imagine. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, toodly pip, chia hero, biobo, bilobo, bo. Bye bye bye, everybody. Yeah, all right, everybody. We will see you later. Oogly, oogly. Oh, God. <laughs>